This episode of Your Mom's House is brought to you by Sattva Luxury Mattress, the only online mattress company that provides free delivery, setup, and mattress removal. Welcome. Welcome to Your Mom's House with Tom Segura. Tom Segura. And Christina Pajitsin. Welcome to Your Mom's House. McDonald's. Cheeseburgers. McDonald's. Lay of fish. McDonald's. Chicken nuggets. McDonald's. Fries. Fries. Free McDonald's all the time. Free McDonald's all the time. Free McDonald's all the time. You got a McDonald's, nigga? Burgers. 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 Lay of fish. Burgers. 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 Chicken nuggets. McDonald's. Cheeseburgers. McDonald's. Lay of fish. It's so good. It's so good. Thanks, McDonald's. Thank you, McDonald's. Is a happy meal for a boy or a girl. Yeah, what's up with that? Why don't you pick your own pronoun? And the nuggets. I love the nuggets. When's the last time you had a big one? Many, many French fries. Many, many French fries. Many, many French fries. You got a McDonald's, nigga. Burgers. 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 Play it, bitch. Burgers. 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 Play it, bitch. McDonald's. Go hardcore. If you're drunk, it's even better. How does $2.3 million sound? Burgers. 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 Play it, bitch. Burgers. 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 I like these fries. McDonald's. Cheeseburgers. McDonald's. Play it, bitch. Thanks, McDonald's. It's delicious. Hey, I, I can't remember the last time I had a filet of fish, but it's fantastic. Oh, fuck yeah. And <laughs> that's the uh, McJean's anthem. We're going we're gonna to get into it, believe me. kind of hurts to listen to that it, song. It does hurt to listen to. We'll, we'll get into it in a moment, all right? We've got to take care of some stuff first, but good Lord. <laughs> Mastermind. Um, I didn't really like the filet of fish. I'm just gonna say it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I know. This weekend, um, I'm uh, doing it real big. I'm going to uh, Oklahoma City, San Antonio, Houston, and Dallas. Um, I believe everything is sold out except for the Sunday show in Dallas. The 27th has about I don't know. It's like a hundred tickets or so left. But if you want to try to get those, fantastic. The next time I go on the road. I will be in uh, Long Beach at the Terrace Theater, then the Chumash Casino, and then finally uh, Reno at the Grand Theater, and that is uh, February 7th through 9. I also, thanks to you guys, added some shows recently. If you don't know, I added shows in New Haven, Connecticut, a second show March 30th. I added a second show in Portland, Oregon at the Keller Auditorium. It's May 1st. And then I added a fourth show at the Moore Theater in Seattle, Washington, May 4th. And I added a third show at the Chicago Theater. And that'll happen on June 2nd. All available at tomsegura.com slash tour. Gene? Wow, talk about perfect timing. Perfect timing. January 31st through February 2nd, I'm in Momver, Colorado at the Denver Comedy Works. Tickets are moving very quickly on that one. We already have a couple shows sold out, so get them now. February 23rd, I do West Siloam Springs, Oklahoma at the Cherokee makeup Casino. Day. That's a makeup day from when our uh, neighborhood was on fire. February 28th through March 2nd, Madison, Wisconsin. Wisconsin? How do you say that, Jesus. please? What that, is that it? That just sounds nasty. You do nasty. Ma- nasty Madison. Well. Comedy Club on State, April 4 through 6. Minneapolis Tits, Many, uh, Minnesota. Acme Come On Your Club, May 10th and 11th. Tempe at the Tempe Improv in Arizona, May 31st through June 1st. And here in Sperm Bank, Flep Hairs Comedy Club. And then June 20th through 22nd, Washington Dick Come at the Dick Come Improv. All tickets at Christina P. Online. Also, follow me on Instagram at the Christina P. I'm so popular. All right. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna, my God. I'm going to use them again. It's been a while. Yeah. They're uh, great. It's a great service. I've used them before. Um, well, this is going to be quite the episode. There's yeah. so much to get into. Um, I'll tell you this. Obviously, we're going to discuss, you know, if you're, if you're a viewer, what you're seeing, the set. If you're a listener, you're probably going to want to check out uh, YouTube for a moment because the, everything's changed. We're going to discuss it in a moment. We got to open the show real proper like, so we'll discuss the set, but let's get this show kicked off, Gene. 
Oh, see, I every heard that's what you said. Every time I eat, it bubble, and I gotta go shit. <laughs> I'm tired of shit. I will shit ever. She is a very respectful girl. She's yeah. never cursed I'm, in front of me like I'm this. I'm tired of shitting this. Let me tell you. I, I, nausea. Zip it. It's coming out nausea. like water. Nausea. <laughs> this shit is big time. Who is Randy? Don't bring anyone mother into this. Your mom in the fucking stand. Well, welcome. Welcome to your mom's house with Tom Segura, Tom Segura. and Christina Pajitsi. Christina Pajitsi. Welcome to your mom's house. like when you pretend to do guitar bruce springsteen yeah no the guy in the, his band that ended up playing a mobster in the sopranos oh, stevie little steven yeah steve Van Zandt. yeah yeah they're horrible people horrible. um i hate uh bruce springsteen i hate the whole east street band i hate bruce springsteen music too i hate bob worst. dylan yeah. as well which i know you garbage hate. garbage right. music and we have stupid listeners who uh <laughs> who like them and they've told me before and they're like oh he's the best and it's yeah. like you're a garbage person and i also don't like billy joel's music I know that's like sacrilege too. It, he is if you're from fucking Long Island. Right. And he just sings about his hometown and stuff. All those hometown idiots. <laughs> fucking sick of all of them. God. Anyways. We're kind uh, of in a bad mood. If you can't tell, we're a little sour today. Yeah. Yeah. And I, by the way, even if I was in a great mood with a big smile on my face, I would tell you Springsteen's shit, Dylan's garbage. And uh, <laughs> what's his last one? Billy Joel. Can go fuck his mother. Sure. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, if you're if you're watching right now, you're like, what happened to the set? Well, you know, we were riding high. We this is just how life goes. Okay, yeah. we we were pretty excited. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, here we have one of the biggest corporations in the world gives us this huge check. All we have to do is paint the set their colors. Right. And um, well, that's what they said. That's what they said. All and you do. I want to be clear about something. Well, there was a lot of conversations ahead of time before we were working with McDonald's about our content. Mm -hmm. And they were like, yeah, like let, let it, let it go wherever you want to go. And then, uh, I called and I said to the, our agent, I said, well, you know, have they, like, they're familiar with what we do? Well, we asked them, like, did they do their due diligence? Yeah, but did what they I, go through our social media? Did they go here's through what the I was show told. and I was it. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then later on, I feel like, well, what was, they were like, Oh, they're familiar with your guys' stand up. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, and your stand up, they have no problem with. I'm like, yeah, but you know that this isn't stand up, right? Yeah. Like, we're doing a different type of show. And he goes, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's fine. And they, they, they clear. Basically, they didn't want, the agents didn't want to press and, and like find a reason to upset sure. them. Sure. So here's a, here's a deal, man. Uh, <laughs> It's a deal, man. God, it's such a bummer. We got uh, we got fired from McDonald's over last week's episode uh, in a phone call, like almost like within hours of the show coming out. So they came out on video on Wednesday, yeah, and it was like Wednesday afternoon, and they were like, "Oh, you're done," and then it was a whole shit show. I mean, it was so fast. It's like the. Uh... I got a Everything voicemail. Everything happens so fast. I know, but can I just process with yeah. you a little bit? Sure. I mean, today is Mon what is it? Mondays we're recording and I mean, it just fucking ruined my whole weekend mm. getting this. Well, you have call. to imagine. I mean, the they gave us 2.3 million dollars and for people who are like, "Oh, you just get to pocket that." Well, no. The it was going to basically finance the studio probably for a few years. Yeah, and we have that employees. That would pay for sets. Yeah, employees, insurance, utilities. Yeah like everyone's salaries, all the equipment, it was like set up to do all of that. Well, plus we had already, you know, picked up some fun items too. Yeah. Yeah. I want a new car. Yeah. I, I thought we were going to get a Lamborghini finally. I know. Hmm. Blue band was looking at a house. Yeah. He was like, Oh, like I remember right before the episode last week, he goes, uh, Hey man, this is really cool. I'll, I'll finally have my own house. Yeah. And like, maybe I could settle down. And I was like, Oh, that's great. Yeah. And I'm thinking like, 
Well, yeah, I mean, McDonald's is going to pay for it, you know? Yeah, it's always hard getting fired. I'm not even sure I can hear this voicemail again. I'm, you know, it's still. It hurts, but here it is for everybody to know. This is what happened. This is, this is what I get Wednesday afternoon, okay? Tom, this is Darren Deering, West Coast Second in Command, Entertainment Division of the McDonald's Corporation. I'm calling to inform you that McDonald's is canceling our sponsorship of your show, Your Mom's House Podcast. We are, we are dismayed, to say the least, at your so-called entertainment content. When we said that you could do whatever you wanted, we didn't imagine in our wildest dreams that you would include a man reviewing a butt plug and having a, quote, ruined orgasm as you laughed like a lunatic. And the other guys that you featured, the cool guys, they're not cool to us. They're very not cool. We're demanding the return of the $2.3 million we gave you, and we request that you change the colors of the set. Tom, legal action may be taken if you refuse. Additionally, neither you nor Christina are welcome in any Southern California McDonald's location. <sighs> Good day, sir. That's it. And there they it goes. They just fucking fire you like that in a voicemail. And then I, I called. Know. I tried to call him back. You know, I had to call through the agents, and they were just like, it's over, it's over. So, and, and I, I said a wire transfer. No, I mean, I kind of do. Remember how Terry broke me? Mm -hmm. Like Terry's the straw. That video was a straw that broke your mom's house. Back. Here's the, the great irony. That of it. motherfucker, this is Terry. The, the great irony of it. Okay. In this is our 483rd episode of your mom's house. Mm -hmm. In the previous 482, maybe four times I've done this where I so enjoyed a moment on the podcast mm -hmm. that, that I actually went back and had to watch or listen to again and, mm -hmm. and again because I was laugh. I was enjoying it's, it sounds gross, but I was enjoying so much what I went through that I wanted to see myself go through it again. You mean my suffering? Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and also like uncle Terry just doing his uncle thing. Terry. So I, I gotta tell you that I was if, so uncomfortable with that video and I can see why McDonald's was uncomfortable as wait, well. If, just so people know, if you haven't seen it, if you want to see, what I'm talking about. Why we got fired from yeah. McDonald's. Well, go to episode 482. It's the previous episode. Uh, and if you go on YouTube, go to the 49 minute mark. Okay. Go to the 49 minute mark and just watch for a few minutes. And that is essentially a $2.3 million bit of, of laughter. Yeah. That's right. That's two million that dollars of laughter. Two million dollars <laughs> to play that stupid to stay fucking that, clip. That dumb fucking video. I hated. I hate Terry, and I, I hate him, and it's well, not now even worth it. We really hate him. No, I know. But yeah, it was. It's uh, so depressing, and I can't even step foot in a McDonald's anymore. That's no, we're the done. worst part. I mean, I don't even know. He's like, you're not welcome. Is he gonna have our pictures up there? And I don't know how that works. Can we? Southern California's got to have a thousand of them. I you know. know. What about the drive-through? Yeah, they can't. They can't kick us out of a drive. -thru. No, right? No. Oh, it's so depressing. I had God so many it. things I was gonna buy. Fucking Terry, man. Fucking Terry. Mm. Uh, well, oh, anyway. Bo also, before we yeah further examine this, um, we have now created our own uh, separate uh, highlight channel. It's clips of your mom's house. So there's uh, if you just like to watch the highlights, or you want to send them around to friends, or just see like the big moments it's youtube.com slash what your mom's house clips okay. so youtube.com slash your mom's house clips and you can subscribe to that please if you want to get those separate um highlights from the episodes right. so we've had to change the set per the request of corporate and people are like oh it kind of looks like a steakhouse now yeah but that's yeah. because i had to go with my head down into morton's uh the one in the area and i yeah. said like you know, yeah. is there anything you can do? They gave us a, a couple grand, which is nice. And Morton's is great. I don't want to act like I'm not. I love Morton's. I love. But they their, basically paid to paint it. They paid to, so Morton's. Yeah. Thank you, Morton Steakhouse. Thank you, Morton Steakhouse, for sponsoring your mom's house. Yeah. Uh, they have a great um, iceberg wedge salad. Yeah. I enjoy there. And they have you know uh, USDA uh, wet and dry aged beef. <laughs> it's good stuff. <laughs> it is. It's good. It's good. I, I don't want to act like I'm not appreciative of Morton's right. and them painting the set and stuff. What you said. 
true. What is the difference between a wet and a dry Well, age? I mean, most people, you know, they'll go for the dry age. The secret is that the wet is really better. Is that right? Yeah. Why is that? Well, I don't want to get into it right okay. now, but well, I'll have one of the Morton's reps kind of stop by. Hey, that's the thing they can do next week. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And well, then they'll anyways. be like, here's a hundred bucks. Is that what McDonald's gave you? No, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to act like a dick. But anyways, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah. So Terry, let's talk about it. No. The, Terry, the, the man joy, who cost us millions. Yeah. The, the hardest I've ever laughed in a clip and at the same time, the I most costly him. clip. It is really good. But we have gone back and watched it We've got, No, I haven't gone back and yeah. watched it. You've been watching it. But the way he upsets you is what makes no, me so No, here's what I, because I thought about it, and I was like, why does Terry upset me like no other? Yeah. And I think what bothers me about him is his lack of shame. A Zero. Complete, I he mean, has no shame. This motherfucker is talking about putting stuff in his butt. Talking and about it and then doing and it. Doing it. <laughs> Like he's Bobby Flay, like doing like a chicken cutlet recipe. So what we're going to do is we're going to yeah. take a, uh, hey. a boneless and skinless <laughs> chicken breast. There it is. And we're going to pound it out. <laughs> I wanted to use this butt flackery toy yeah. that I bought. Super casual. And just, I thought hey, I'd try that in. And then I also wanted that? to try this double-ended yeah. um, fuck oh. sleeve. Now, Puck I don't want to make them too thin. I don't want it to be like <laughs> a chicken paillard or like a chicken right. steak. Sure. I want it to have some just explaining uh, some what I'm doing. Yeah. Maybe about going through what I'm going to yeah. do. Half an inch. Um, I'm not going to be able to use the vibrating part, but the butt toy vibrates. I mean, casual so Friday, sure just whatever. Now, what you want to do is yeah. when you're making chicken parmesan, you want to set up sort of a station for yourself. It's almost like an assembly line. Yeah. And what do you want to do? You want to start with some uh, flour and some all purpose What about flour. you, Terry? But first, I'm going to try and get this in the bucket <laughs> and then um, turn it on. And it's even got this cool little oh, that's cool. remote it's a cool control. Little thing. That's cool. All right. So we're going to take a little yeah, oil. Just like yep, you used to put chicken, chicken parmesan. There you go. Into the oil. Very casual. What we're trying to accomplish here, <laughs> we just want to get the, the, the chicken and the breadcrumbs to be sort of nice and golden brown. So, I've said this before. We don't play. If you're new to it, you gotta go slow. Don't try and rush it. Don't, don't try, try and, and rush too it. Fast. You wanna cook the chicken too hurt. fast. You won't wanna try it again. Yeah, say, Let's take a peek. Take a peek. Take a look. The, take your time How's with the chicken recipe, yeah. Is it brown? Is it brown? Is it? Let's it give it a now. flip. Let's see. Take it oh, out, Terry. Nice. Let's see the brown. Oh, I'm gonna throw <laughs> up. Pretty comfortable in there. God! <laughs> oh, oh, oh Jesus it. Christ, okay. this guy. Just gonna cook the other side just till the breadcrumbs cook yeah. a little bit. Yep. Yeah. And then we're casual, gonna put it on a sheet pan and we're gonna sure. assemble the chicken parmesan and finish it in the oven. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. No, 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 I don't want to. Oh, yeah. fuck it. Oh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. Ah! Oh. Oh. So gross. <laughs> He's so mad. Let's grab our chicken parmesan out of the oven. Oh, okay. All right, that's enough. Thank you. By the way, if you want to see what was, if you could pull up the first Terry clip in this batch. The very first one that you um that that you played, yeah, like that one. So if you Ugh, see, um, he's so disgusting. Can you scrub? Can you scroll to like Ugh. go a little further? There, okay. See, see his because can you see that hand, that left hand movement he's got? <laughs> yeah, I McDonald's, <see. laughs> McDonald's cited this. Oh, that they were like that. They're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> and I go, I think he's got. I told him, I go, I think he's got an itch. And uh, that guy Darren was like, he's not fucking. It doesn't have an itch. He's holding a Big Mac. Yeah, and so <laughs> because he kept doing that, they were like, that was like the the, the straw. The there. gesture of Terry uh, yeah. making himself. Hard. Yeah, I was like, look, my leg itches uh, right now. Uh, you know? I got an itchy uh, leg. I'm just scratching my leg. And yeah, then they I, got really I, mad. Yeah, I can understand why McDonald's is mad. Yeah. Um, I want to. I want Dr. Drew to see this just because. You and I, it sparked a debate yeah. of like, is this, is this extreme confidence and comfortable with one sexuality? Which is my, my vote. I don't think so. I, I think, think it's a lack of awareness. A as lack mad of as I am at Terry. Boundaries. For ruining our business. Yeah. You think lack of awareness, lack of boundaries. A serious shameless. shamelessness. And I, and I, and I do get that in today's social media culture mm -hmm. that there's less shame when it comes to reporting See, your personal life. I feel differently. I why, feel do you, like, why do you like this? I, I don't like, like this, this at all. Liberated. Okay. That the fact that he has no shame is something that should be celebrated and encouraged. And not I don't only think that, so. I find him to be the chairman of the Cool Guy Club. <laughs> That's a cool guy. <laughs> He's a cool guy. That is a cool guy. <laughs> 
I like his electric guitar riff. <laughs> that's, what, <laughs> that's what cool guys cool guys do. Do. Um, but why do I feel yucky watching Terry? If it's, it's a cool guy, he makes me feel yucky inside. I don't know. I mean, I feel pretty cool right now. I don't feel cool. I feel like, where, when's Terry going to do another video? <laughs> that's the best part. He's totally like, hey guys, what's up? It's yeah. Terry. I'm just here to review this like butt plug. Like a fucking car Pepsi. reviewer yeah. who's like the brand new BMW. <laughs> yeah. He's like, so uh, I'm unboxing this dildo. Uh-huh. It's like, uh, it's so, it's too casual. Last week I was talking about the Toyota Supra and with today's competition. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's uh he's very comfortable. I don't, I would actually I like, like to like hear it. what Dr. Drew says. About I would that. too. I think it's, I think he needs to have, I think a little bit of shame is healthy. A little yep. awareness of like what's proper to put on the, that's, you just shouldn't put yourself on the internet doing that yes. kind of stuff. Um, I don't think it's right. I know. By the way, if you are feeling generous, maybe uh, it's a good week to get some merch. (laughs) Um, We kind of lost a lot of money. So (laughs) two point three million dollars. Yeah, we restocked some of the hot sellers and uh, got my mug. Yeah, there's mugs, socks, shirts, Mm. hats, everything. There's some new stuff coming too. (sighs) But stop um, brown talk. You know, I mean, obviously, I don't want to. You know, whatever you can. do. We don't want to push it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just what. Just what happens when your show features cool, cool, cool guy club. <laughs> cool guy. So we have been going in the cool guy lane. <laughs> it's, it this is, show is a celebration of the coolest guys. If you're it's alarming. About it. yeah. yeah, I don't like them at all. Um, but we talked about Terry as we went away on our. We redid our um, ten year anniversary night. Yes, and we went. Uh, we stayed somewhere lovely, and we had uh, marital loves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then we took a shower together yeah yeah it was nice and uh this place we stayed at they had his and her showers which was really int- was was cool we've never done that before yeah and just as i'm pouring this lovely lavender shampoo into my hand <laughs> that was when we made that? it up that's, that, that's, that's the originator of the cool guys we were club. making love you know oh oh <laughs> I feel like this guy started the cool guy club. Oh, he's yeah, yeah, he's the or the try it out guy. The, 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 one of the no, I think this guy is uh, pretty. He's pretty also good. the founder. Rop, rop, yeah, that yeah. guy started cool guy club. He's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's the OG. Cool. Rap, rap, rap. But then we did take a dual okay, shower. So I was just saying, as I I poured out some lavender shampoo to put on my hair, I was smelling the shampoo and I thought. It's funny, this lavender doesn't smell good. It smells off. Yeah, I know. And I looked at you and I go, did you fart? Yeah. Yes. I know. You farted so badly in the shower. And it was so sad because I was like, oh, babe, we should get one of these with our McDonald's money. We should put this this kind of shower in our house. It's so romantic. We can been, talk been the show awesome. together and yeah. shower. It was bad. Yeah. F-A-R-T. You yeah. farted so bad. It was bad. so bad. It was so bad. It was much worse than I had anticipated. But can couldn't you tell it was going to be stinky before it came no, out? No, I, di- I didn't. I didn't sense that was coming. If I knew what came out was in the chamber, I wouldn't have done it. It was so horrific. But, I don't know. I don't know what it was. What that was the was that the morning one or the evening one? No, it was the morning. I thought. No, no, shit. That was evenings. No. No morning because I was morning. washing my hair. Yeah. 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 Uh, I had fish the night before. Filet of fish, maybe. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that was cool. And then um, it was a bad, bad. It fight. was a bad fart. Yeah. So thanks. And then uh, we haven't been close to each other shitting in a long time since yeah. the Silver Lake days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it yeah. was really neat because right next to the bedroom there was a toilet, and <laughs> you went, made brown. And I thought to myself, gosh, I can hear everything. It was bad. Why isn't he closing the door? I didn't realize this was such a night. So what happened was we went to this hotel and in the hotel, um, there was, they gave us an upgrade. So, you know, I paid for a, a room and we got there. And I think because we were, we were doing like this makeup date, right. Of like our celebration anniversary yeah. that the people who arranged it knew that. And they, when we got there, they were like, Basically, a room is available that no one is buying that day. So they go, we're going to upgrade you. So it was a much better room. Sure. And it had, um, you know, from the bedroom to the shower, like in the, in, or to the bathroom, in the bathroom, you could shut a door in the bathroom. But there was also doors that separate the bathroom itself from the bedroom. And I didn't shut that door. 
Right. And it was it was cool because I got to hear like you know when you yeah. um you know someone's on the toilet like the yeah. toilet farts different fart, eh. than yeah. like a regular fart because it's this the acoustics are different oh yeah and it comes out yeah. fast no yours are like like sputtering like you know in soft serve ice cream when it runs out mm-hmm. at the end mm-hmm. <laughs> like um like a carburetor yeah. trying to turn over yeah yeah yeah, yeah I got I, you yeah I was like. That's <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And I was like, close the door. And I yelled it to you, close the door. I want to hear you. But I forgot how sick your, your doot doot sound. They don't sound healthy at all. It was fine. Everything was really? fine. Really? That's normal for totally you? Totally fine. Yeah. Well, you went to the doctor and you had your prostate I exam. Did. Um, I did. Um, uh, I will uh, tell you all about it here okay. in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know if you know this or not, but um, we have first, new bills to pay. Y M H will be right back. <laughs> yeah, so back to I went, business. Go back ahead. to business. I went to get a physical yeah. first time in a year and a half, so yeah. I went a little longer than I should have. And <clears throat> first of all, I uh, I'm not going to give you the number because I'm uh, very ashamed of my body, but um, <laughs> I only weigh. Five pounds more than I did when I first saw my doctor uh, 12 years ago. Are you kidding me? Yep. Congratulations. He started to go. We went through the weights and he was like, oh my God. Because it's great. He was like, let's see, 2008, you weighed in, 2009, 2010, 2000, and he started, and he's like, 2014, he was like, oh my God. Wow. He was like, that was, that was a tough way year. Way up there. Well, and then well, I, did, <laughs> I didn't even see him the next year. The yeah, because we had our waited. baby in 2015. No, because I was so out of shape. Oh. I was, like he was, I remember they called and like, do you want to do a physical? I was like, ah, I'm on the road. And then I, <laughs> I wouldn't go see him. I didn't want to, I, I knew if I went to see him, he'd be like, you You're need so to, bad. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we gained a lot of weight with our, my first pregnancy. You and I would go eat breakfast and then get dessert with breakfast. Every time. Every time. Every day. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. It was fun. I it really like being fun. really fat. I <laughs> yeah. am still fat, yeah, yeah. but I like the just throwing it all away <laughs> yeah. of being really fat. Like when you just go like, fuck it, we're going to go full fuck throttle. It. I don't yeah. care. I'm not a model. Yeah. 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 That's the best part about being a comedian. You it's don't great. have to be good yeah. looking. And then everyone, everyone's such a piece of shit that they're like, yeah. I love when you're fat. And yeah. like they, they still tell me <laughs> Get now. Get mad at you. Yeah. And shit. they're like, I liked you more fat. And I'm like, God damn, what a I know. cool thing to say to it's somebody. It's not good for you to be. No. I know, they're like, terrible. could you stay fat so that we find you funny? Yeah, I know. So they took all this blood, of course, pee, text, check all your sperm. You know, yeah, they ran an EKG. And then he's like, all right, it's time to do the uh, old uh, prostate exam. Check your oil. Check his finger all the way into my <laughs> asshole. <laughs> and man, this was different. Really? This is my second time. The first time he did it, he did what I actually ended up saying in my special. Which is, he was like, now, um, this is my cock. I mean, my finger. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, honestly, kind of gentle and it really wasn't, I mean, it was quick and uncomfortable, you know, yeah. this time he's like, I'm getting lube. And I was like, okay. And I'm facing the wall. And then he went immediately all the way without a warning, just all the way in <laughs> and dug around. And I was like, ah, ah, ah. And he, and he kept, and I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he's like, come on. <laughs> Dug it around, like really fingered me really yeah. hard. Yeah. Then he scooped it out. Yeah. He goes, let me see if there's any blood in your shit. And I was <laughs> like, okay. And I'm sitting there looking at the wall like, what the fuck just happened? And I'm like, dude, you're really not chill with fingering. Like if you finger girls the way you finger my ass. Right. And he's like, that's not how I finger girls. And then <laughs> he just, he just goes, there's tissues next to you. Clean your ass. And he walked out. Are you serious? Yeah. Fucking. There's tissues. And then did you wipe brown? Then I had to wipe. Yeah. And there was jelly there and was brown. jelly and brown all Ugh. over. Oh, it was horrible. Horrible. And I felt like really sore. Yeah, of course. And I just kept thinking about Terry. I yeah. kept thinking about Terry talking about, you know, how that toy had a big head on it. You he felt like, bad easy, for him. Easy. Yeah. And I was also like, man, how do people put dicks in their butts? Dude, can I tell you something? It kind of gives me joy that you suffered in a doctor Thank exam. You. Thank you so because much. Because women, like, uh, uh, you know, not to, but we do that shit every year. You get a fucking finger in your butt, you get stuff up your cooch, I've had two yeah. babies, and you all you do is stand there and watch. It's true. And I've uh, had my stuff yeah. messed with. 
It was. It's just nice to know that you're finally getting something in your butt. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. No, it, it was very uncomfortable. And then he called me today and he was like, oh, guess what? Um, everything came back great. And uh, I never, I've never been on cholesterol medication. Good. And he's like, your cholesterol's down just it's from great. lifestyle. So that's great. Just um, eating all the McDonald's for that week. Yeah. He's like, I hope you're not eating McDonald's. And I was like, no, not anymore. So yeah, that was great. Cool. So, uh, well, good. So you're healthy. Yeah. I mean, healthy uh, somewhat. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'm healthy enough to probably get through the year. Jesus, Tom. <laughs> I don't know. You got to live. Uh, we got two kids, man. No, I know. I'm going to try to live. Two kids, two dogs, big life. Speaking of dogs. Yes. Um, I should get we a physical this, too. You far. should get a physical. We were having this conversation because we, um, you know, we've had these dogs now for years and and we love our dogs but we there's have this thing fifo and bitsy for yeah. those because uh, i post pictures of them on the gram and people are like they they mistaken bitsy for fifo so and i'm different. like you stupid this, this fifo that's this guy he's the original oh yeah you're wearing an og fifo shirt i don't know if you guys can see yeah uh mm. theo was his original right. name and then 24 yeah. yeah he's the best Ten and then we got bitsy it's on the aim it's it's on black. black yeah well, Bitsy is a is the pure breed, purebred dog. Brussels the, Griffon. And uh, Fief is the rescue from the hood. And anyway, there's this thing that happens. People start telling you this when you're about to have a kid. If you have a dog, they're like, oh, that poor dog. <laughs> you, you know, he doesn't know that he's about to get a lot less attention. And you're like, that's inconceivable. Yes. Because the dog is your world. If you're like, if you're a couple and that's your dog, you know? Yeah. And man, And it was right. our world. But they're right, right? Like, I mean. They're totally. They're totally right. Like he something was our, happens. He was 24 seven. Cause what happens is you, you have all that love and attention. You're putting it on this, this animal that you, you legitimately adore. But when you have children, yeah. it's not that you go like, fuck this dog. It's that you then not only do you want to, but you have to put so much energy into the human baby. Yes. That you just have like a, you start to have a little less time. Right. Yeah. And you can't like, manage every moment no and poor fief like i i try to make time for fief and bits throughout the day yeah and uh they sleep with us at night and we give them nighttime that's yeah what, that's kind of what it's we like do. the end of the day they come on yeah. the bed we watch our shows they they lay on us they it's snore. cute it's fun but it does feel like less and i feel guilty and fief is also now you know with dogs he's he's now like kind of an older guy right yeah he's, he's a little bit of an older he's on man. meds and stuff and one of the great thrills <laughs> of that dog is seen like when you open the backyard door to let him out yeah and he sees a squirrel yeah a bunny now yeah. or sometimes a mouse or something a rat right like you'll oh see yeah the, and because our dogs are ratters they're bred to they were bred to be rats. they're from belgium and they're yeah. meant to to find rats inside of barns and, and stuff. you see the dna you see the yeah. instincts take over and it's so cool his eyes kill 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 bug out and hair stands up and he's like yeah. ah. and then he's just charged up for yeah. a while he's like walking around like ah. you know he's yeah. just fired up so and, fired up and, and he's and an old course, guy he's so an older guy it's now good of course he's never actually gotten any of those animals no. right but it's just there's a thrill thing so we're thinking that it'd be pretty cool um just to get like just to get him a win you know sometimes you're like this this guy needs a win yeah that we would go and get uh a rabbit mm -hmm. maybe from a, a a breeder or like i don't know if they do rescue rabbits or something mm -hmm. and uh basically make it slow like break one of its sure. legs <laughs> and then let thief catch him <laughs> you know right so just I, so you can fucking get the thing for yeah, once exactly so you know, you go and you're like, I want to rescue a bunny. And they're like, oh, it's no, so great. That's my, that's my fantasy is I go, yeah, we go to a rescue. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, you guys are such good people. You're rescuing this rabbit. Nobody yeah. wants him. And you're uh -huh. like. And we go, yeah. And they're like, just so you know, uh, for its diet. And we're like, yeah, no, I got it. And they're like, well, it's pretty specific. You're like, man, did you? Yeah. And then like in the car, we take it out to the car and I take a hammer and I break both of its legs. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go to the backyard <laughs> and we just put it in the backyard and it's like ah, i don't know what it <laughs> and then we're like thief go and then he's like i got this motherfucker got he just gets it. It. and yeah. then he just i don't know strangles it or like something. a rag doll he just yeah. fucking kills it like shark week dude yeah you take a bunny you know you throw it against the wall yeah um kind of just shock it and yeah. then you're like thief go 
And yeah, then, yeah. But my favorite part is when the the person at the shelter is like, "You guys are the best people. Nobody wants these rabbits." Yeah, yeah. And and we're, we're like, like oh, we yeah, do. I know." And then they do the follow up <laughs> visit, like they're like, "Where they we go? See how Nibbles is doing." We're like, "Well, we had a problem." What'd you do? What happened? Um, I accidentally stomped on both of its legs. What? Well, you wouldn't have to do that to the rescue bunny. Because no. in my mind, these are two different scenarios. Like okay. the rescue rabbit's probably going to be fucked up already. Is it? Like it might be like bred over bread or in bread, you know what I mean? Yeah. It might have, it might be like a rescue from like the cosmetics industry. So its yeah. eyes are blind and stuff. Sure. We should rescue blind ones. A blind rabbit that yeah. doesn't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. What we need is we need a rabbit in a <laughs> confined space. Yeah. That's the thing. They're so fast. I watch so them chase. Fast. They're so fucking fast. But we need to, we need to capture a rabbit, put it yeah. into a, like a, a little room and then put Fief in that room. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Or a squirrel. <laughs> How do we slow the squirrel down? Oh, uh, we could shoot a squirrel with yeah. like a BB gun so that it's just slowed down. It's slowed down. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Are you a good shot? I'm decent. Yeah. Maybe that's what we do is just shoot squirrels. I want to make it clear. I am not in favor of hurting any animals unless it leads to my dog getting that animal. <laughs> okay. Don't send me this shit about don't hurt animals. I know that. I love my dog. <laughs> but it's for our dog's entertainment. We love our dog. Yeah, and it's to give him a boost. He's a, con you know what it is? Yeah. It's like an old guy getting some Viagra. Uh huh. I you know when an old guy pops a Viagra, yes. he's like, this thing gets hard again? Yeah. And he's got a little swag? Yeah. That's all I want for my dog. It's like when um, old George Bush was like grabbing asses and yeah. he was in the wheelchair and kind of like old and David fucked up. Copperfield. Yeah. <laughs> that was his joke. That was it? It's not a bad his joke. His joke was, uh, you know who joke. my favorite magician is? And they're like, no, wahoo! He's like David Copperfield. Are you being serious? Out. Yeah, I believe you. This is. Are the you truth. being serious? A hundred percent truth. Oh, I like that. Yeah, so he I would like do photo like ops. It was during photo ops, and he would be like, <laughs> he's like, come here, <laughs> lean down, and then <laughs> they would <laughs> lean down. Yeah, and then like it'd be like it's a cute lady, you yeah. know, in a dress, and he's like, do you know who my favorite <laughs> magician is? Who? Who? David Copperfield. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I like that. You know, I, I we talked about it back then. I got so I I thought it was such bullshit that the uh people would be like, I was so uh, hurt and affected. The Me Too people? Yeah. Whoa, well, he's old as shit. A ninety year old I guy know. grabs your ass and you're like, I, eh, I didn't know. <laughs> But he's fucking old. Yeah, like he doesn't just, even know what's he happening. He doesn't know what's going on. Just let him. He had four teeth left in his mouth. I know. He just, just fucking, I don't know. Why don't you just put your titties in his face for a second? I don't Can know if I'd do all that, but if like an old ass guy like that. Just squeeze the tip of his dick. Just squeeze the tip no. a little bit. And just go like. You squeeze his tip. When it come in my hand. Oh, babe. And just look like fucking babe. dust comes out of Can, it. Can I tell you, have you ever worked in an old folks home? Uh, yeah, I, I six, six, seven years I worked in an old. No, of course not. Oh, I question did. Is that? Well, in high school, I had to do Christian service hours and we Ugh. had to deal with old people. Let me tell you, if they've got the energy and the moxie to do what you just said, that whole setup punch thing. Yeah. You know, and a magician. And I'd be like, dude, good for you. Like, at least you have the energy and the will to live enough to do yeah. that. Yeah. I'd give it to him. Yeah. You let them have it. Because most bit. of them are just laying in their own piss at that stage. They're no, pretty old. It's true. They fuck a lot when they when they can get around. That's what I hear that the, the men old get folks' away. homes have a lot of STDs. That's right. <laughs> you said that like your dad. You Buddy, know. No, the <laughs> old folks' homes they have a lot of sexually transmitted diseases. Yeah, this and the um, what's the word? I can't say the R word anymore. The mentally challenge people. What are they called? You now? can't say that. I can't say the R word. Do you know what are you supposed to fucking call them now, Blue Band? You're a millennial. Mentally challenged? Yeah, the mentally challenged. The mentally community. challenged. They get around too. Sure. Yeah. I've heard they like to fuck. <laughs> okay. That's true. Do you know speaking of that word, we have um <laughs> No, don't don't dismiss it. It's true. They're very uh, randy. I know, but we have but this is pretty amazing. <laughs> we have somebody, I think she's a she's teaching English as a second language. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you've seen this. This lady is teaching this, and there's is is it on YouTube? Like she puts this out. How does that work? Yeah, this is a popular YouTube channel that's trying to teach English as a second language. Okay, and uh, just a heads up, all the comments on this are like, "Oh, 
they're not really great at English, like oh, the inner workings of the language. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, and this is one of the main, I guess, teachers of it here. This lady, I think she's one of them. She's main. one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's hear what she says about English. Pretty good. Have you spoken to someone over the phone and thought that, oh my God, this person is so unprofessional or so uninterested. So I'm going to help you with a couple of ways that would help you to talk right over the phone. So the first trick that I have for you is mention your name when you answer the call. And also make sure you have a nice, happy, friendly tone when you answer the call. Okay. Uh, That's pretty good tip. So far That's so good. good. Yeah. The second trick that I have for you is speak clearly. Yeah. Now it is important for you to pronounce your words well. Yeah. Of course, please do avoid mumbling or uh, talking too fast mm. or gushing. So far, this, this would is... not help the caller gushing? to understand what you are saying. Yeah, but that's that's what so far. What do you mean gushing? Is... Gushing? Like, I don't know. Yeah, you can see they're misusing. Oh, yeah. okay. Some, gushing some is when you're like overly complimentary. That's right. right. But I mean, you know. Gushing. She's, She's still on point with what she heard no, I, so far. I, I, the so third one that I have for you is use your words right. Now, it doesn't make sense if you are talking to your boss or if you are talking to your grandmother and you use the teen language or you use slangs. Like, you would go, hey, what's up? So are you having fun or hardcore fun? Your Hard boss fun. or your grandma would think you are completely retarded. <laughs> so use your words right. My that fits the listener. God, that's <laughs> Is crazy. Are you? Having you use the R one. <laughs> so. Are you having hardcore fun? Hardcore fun. <laughs> hardcore fun. I cannot believe she said that. She said the R word. She did. That's terrible. Yeah. That's not hardcore fun at all. You're yeah. not supposed to. You say are that. completely retarded. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you use the R one. <laughs> yeah, that is not okay. That is not okay. That is not okay. Mm -mm. I'm offended. Are you upset? <laughs> I'm very upset. You can't tell that I'm upset right now? I'm very, very, I'm very upset right you now. You are completely retarded. Are you <laughs> retarded? Um, are you having fun? I cannot believe fun? that somebody produces <laughs> a learn language video and like put that out there. It's I'm amazing. a little. Look, look. Is that old or is it like recent? Uh, that I'm not sure. You don't know? I'm more concerned about hardcore You are fun. completely retarded. Is, you want to have hardcore fun? Yeah. No, I mean, like, that's a phrase, at least, the R word. But yeah. hardcore fun's not even a, hey, what's up? Are you having hardcore fun? <laughs> I was going to knock her in the head one day out here beside the garage because she called me young retarded. I was going to knock her in the head with a claw hammer. Well, well, knock her on the head with a claw hammer. Yeah, that's that's pretty intense. That's a heated debate in the your mom's house history. Yeah, it is. Is it R worded or just R word? Yeah, yeah. I you don't want to say the word. I'll get in trouble. Can't. Yeah, you should never say it. Don't. But ever, you can ever say, say R word, but you can't say the real word. That's right. You can't. You can't say it. You use the R word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, man. Um, that's all right. <laughs> let's um. Let's get our buddy in here. Right. Let's get. Are we gonna do that? Oh, we gonna do it between them. Right. We're going to do him between? Yeah. Between. Oh, the dark website? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll do him between. Okay, okay. Unless you want to do it now. No, I don't know. What do you think? We can right. we can choose. We can pick and choose. It's up to you, Gene. Let's just get him in here now. Let's get him okay. in here. Are Let's you ready? Yeah, Potter, why don't you get in there? Okay. Let's go. You're do the R word. Yeah. Are you, hello, how are you? Are you having hardcore fun? I'm having hardcore fun. <laughs> hardcore. Hard fucking core fun. Let's do it. There's Josh Potter coming in. All right, it is that time again. One of our dear friends, great comedian, uh, excellent producer, is joining us for another segment of his. It is Josh <laughs> Potter, everybody. All right, Josh. Yeah, Josh Potter's here. Hey. See, I did that right then. It just spooled. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it doesn't play. Oh, no. Yeah, it just happens, but it's supposed, <laughs> it's There's supposed to play. There's intro music. It's supposed to play. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> That's the that's how you know I'm coming. The women start crying. The yeah, they see you, dude. Um, Outside of Cobb's, yeah, in yeah. San Francisco when we were there, there was a woman crying like that. Very really? sounded just like that. Just sound. from seeing you, I guess she was outside the show after my set. You were on stage <laughs> and she was just outside, <laughs> and I was like, gonna approach her to see what was going on, but then yeah. some other 
dipshit came up and was like, we gotta go. And like, and they were in the show, you think? Yeah, they were wasted. Uh, yeah. Maybe she got kicked out. I think that's what happened. That's probably. the best. Yeah. I love when a drunk person gets kicked out. Me For too. Sure. So well deserved. It always is. And then they write to you and they're like, I'm sorry, I got, I got oh, kicked yeah. out. Can I get tickets to the next thing? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I'd love for you to come back and do that again. That's so great. Um, I'll mention it again, but before I forget, I'm very excited to announce uh, a lot of people listen to this show, watch the show, love you, Josh Potter. Oh, thank you. And you are going to be doing a show, I believe that's Friday, Friday, is that correct? Yes, sir. Friday, March 22nd at the Improv Lab. Okay. Tickets are on sale now. Uh, we'll post that link everywhere. You'll post it on your yeah, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, post it yeah. on mine. You post it on yours. But listen to me. There's a reason I brought this guy all over the country so he's hilarious. Go to the show if you're LA based. It's a Friday night. It'll be a fun time. You're gonna do a long set. You're yeah, I'm do. pumped for it, dude. Awesome. I'm excited. Come out, get faded. Yeah, what's up? Go. What's up, <laughs> man? Party. Um, you always have good stuff for us, Josh. Mm -hmm. What? What's your? What's your? What are you gonna show us today? Well, uh, we all know scumbags in comedy. Yes, mm -hmm. we've brought mm -hmm. them up plenty of times. Yeah, uh, I spent my early life living. In the lowest rung of show business, <laughs> which is broadcast radio, which is unbelievably radio. Uh, comedy can look down on radio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the only like p p like segment of entertainment that we can be like, oh, fucking radio guys. Yeah, and here in Hollywood, we know of scumbags in every realm of entertainment. Yes. Yeah. But I don't think enough people realize the scumbaggery that occurs in broadcast radio. Now, why yeah. do you think that is, Josh? Because it's the lowest rung of show business. Yeah. It takes an animal to, to thrive in that environment. Yeah. An animal to thrive, meaning like what, the moving around, the... Oh, the, the uh, you know, not knowing your future, the yeah. moving around, uh, just the nature of doing a morning zoo show. Yeah. It's got to be tough. Ultimate yeah. scumbaggery occurs there. Now, I want to preface this by saying the guys I worked with primarily in my career, mm -hmm. super cool, super nice. Right. Everybody was uh, talented. They evolved with time, not like so many others. And people should world. know <laughs> before you get into this, how just how experienced you are in radio. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you worked in radio for a dozen years? Since I was 16 oh, until wow. until last year, basically. Okay. Until uh -huh. I was 30. Yeah. And I worked primarily with Shren Reagan and Buffalo. Who were great. Super great. Yeah. But there was a moment where I thought I was going to elevate my career, and I moved to Cleveland, mm -hmm. and uh, hmm. I worked on a morning show there with some psychopaths. Yeah. <laughs> really? In fact, the first gentleman that I bring up in my scumbags of radio <laughs> uh -huh. uh, is actually the guy that I chose to replace me. Whoa. What? And this is his mugshot up on the screen if this you want guy, to take wait, a look. This guy, wait, you Whoa. chose to replace you? Yes. I resigned from my position because I couldn't work with these psychopaths and uh, went back to Buffalo and they were like, who do you think should replace you? And I was like, this guy looks good. And uh, <laughs> Oh my <laughs> who God. Who is this? <laughs> his name is J.G. Spooner. Uh -huh. Wait, why is he shirtless in his mugshot? Is that a Well, load? there's a few theories on that. Uh, there's some people that speculate that he was just arrested that way. That's a pretty good speculation. Yeah, I would say so. But others have then noted that uh, the municipality in which he was apprehended requires you to take your shirt off for the mugshot. I don't know why they oh, would do that. Maybe to get added a, humiliation. No. To get a peek at I that think, sweet Superman tattoo <laughs> on his uh, I think it's for right tattoos, yeah, right? Maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe. yeah. Or just to judge your slobby, it shitty be, body. Ugh. It could be added humiliation, too, the way that that uh, Sheriff Arapo guy. Yeah. Yes. Remember how he used to put people in pink jumpsuits? I love Sheriff that guy. Yeah. yeah. So I think they're like, you got to take your shirt off. It's required by law. And then they yeah. make you make you look like an idiot like this. But this scumbag. Bert would do real well I getting know. arrested. Well, he wouldn't have even had a shirt. You got it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he requests yeah. to take his shirt off at the mugshot. Do you mind? <laughs> but what this gentleman did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He please. used his profile on the radio uh, to help a friend from elementary school who has cystic fibrosis raised money for a GoFundMe. He thought, you know what, I'm going to bring attention to this GoFundMe page. We'll raise a bunch of money. They did. And then he funneled it all into his bank account. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. A wow. Special Real guy. special move. Yeah. How do you figure you're going to get away with that? And I you said know. what type no. of school was it? A what? What type of school? You said it starts with an E? I uh, L... Uh... Oh, and ele that he knew her since elementary school. Uh, Elemen. Uh, Elemen. Oh, yes. Okay. So is am I saying it differently than you guys? No, that sounds <laughs> right. Say no, it again. How do you say elementary? it? Elementary. Hmm. Hmm. 
No. Hmm. That's a that's a different way of saying yeah, it. Sure you, you both don't is say that. Is that the uh, Buffalo way of saying it? No. I don't believe so. I think elementary? that's the Queen's, the Queen's English. Elementary. No. <laughs> Nobody says elementary. You're literally the first guy. I've <laughs> yeah, ever I've met never heard that one. Who, who was able to huh. uh, complete sentences and pay for things huh. that says elementary? Where, where did you know. hear it that way? Yeah. Who said that? To I don't you? know. I don't know. I never knew I said it weird until yeah. just now. <laughs> and your parents aren't foreigners. Yeah, they are. My oh, they dad are. is a complete foreigner. It's, oh, that's a foreigner. It's thing, elementary. Then. Elementary. Elementary. Yeah, Josh. Not elementary. <laughs> <laughs> so well this, this is a real special dude though. yeah so i mean and then there's actual you can go on youtube and find videos of him lying to people like he also scammed the guy who made his website for this charity uh he scammed some people out of uh he posted on craigslist a rental home that he did not own Whoa. and then accepted payments for it up what? to eight thousand dollars Wow. Jeez. What's he, wild is, shit. You know what he, is he in jail right now? Uh he is as a matter of fact. Have he was really? sentenced to 30 months in jail wow. because he also during the investigations for the first couple of scams, yeah. he uh obviously got fired from the radio station and then a family friend brought him in and said, "You know what? Work at my bar while you're trying to get back on your feet." And while he was there, he stole blank checks and then wrote <laughs> out uh checks for $6,000. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I man. mean, you got to think in this day and age you're gonna get caught like this stuff is so traceable and trackable but it is like this fascinating thing you were saying though about the radio business because you do get to go like i am officially in show business Mm -hmm. um you know what i mean like you're you you stepped into and you have you can work in pretty low radio and still like you run in celebrities come into your studio right so it's like this but you make no money that's crazy to me no money which you make pot poverty level money so i can like i can understand maybe this guy he had a kid you know maybe he was just uh really up against it but also these radio folk have a lot of demons yeah. a lot of them have gambling issues yeah. a lot of them have uh Drugs. drinking and drug yeah. issues so uh he i didn't know anything about those types of things with him when i met him right you get but. everything but the money in most oh my cases. god that's yeah. terrible you get, you get access yep. right? terrible. yeah terrible you're like you oh, get tons of access yeah you i'm get backstage free. at the fucking beyonce yeah. concert and you're just meeting you know you're yeah just, but celebrity without money that's terrible. is the fucking it's and speaking the worst. as somebody who yeah. was on a reality show in the 90s it's the the worst thing ever because people will yell at you on the streets and stuff like hey christine are we stupid bitch road yeah, rules yeah, yeah and then you have no way to insulate yourself from people right no way and like, and, and no it's resources. also you're supposed to like glad hanged clients and people who are like advertisers and you can't even compete with them in terms of social yeah interaction because you have no money to like you spend on me, drinks i think it was you oh, who told man. me of a radio guy i don't think he's one of the people featured here who was like uh he had he was a in let's say he had played sports mm-hmm. and he was like i'm not paying for anything at this oh yeah bar. yeah and like <laughs> like it was just that thing he was like i'm not like they they should just comp it yeah and, and then they did and a lot of people operate on that level wow yeah. especially think, former athletes in yeah. the broadcast realm yeah, because they're yeah. so used to being uh you know taken care of all the yeah. way along and then they start working in radio and people kind of slight them a little bit because now they're in radio. Right. But then they're like, I'm still the shit. And yeah, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, wow. they, and they get their way a lot of times. Yeah. And the, and a lot of times, not just um, athletes, but radio guys. I remember talking to a few that all drove free vehicles because mm-hmm. they, you know. An endorsement. You, yeah, yeah. You, you try and supplement your income with endorsements sort of, and appearances yeah. and things like that. Well, you yeah. kind of think it's so unnatural to set your alarm to wake up. At, what time did you wake up? 3.30 in the morning? Four or five. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. In Cleveland, I woke up at three. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And so it's three in the morning. Everybody's Horrible. still dark. And then you're expected to be like, hey, everybody. Let's fucking do it. It's just not normal. It's, no. And, the whole thing is so unnatural. And like some of those those morning shows, too. It's just, oh, my fuck. I don't know. I don't know how you can deal with it. I don't. Uh, I, I, I worked for a very good one. So I understand. I've seen the others. And yeah. I understand the laziness. I understand as a comic, not going in there and not being excited about it. That's for sure. Well, you know the other thing that 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 changed with, with like, even though the truth is, there, there's this narrative among some podcasters that they're like, radio's dead and podcasting is, dead. and it's cool that podcasting has grown so much. Mm-hmm. Radio's still definitely something that more Americans listen to, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. I've seen the statistics on it. 
But there's like, just no money being there's no money being for content. And the truth is, in some markets, it is a total waste of time mm-hmm. to do as promotion for your show. But like the club will have a history with them. You know what I mean? So they'll be like, come do this show. And you can go on the show for two fucking hours and yeah. kill. And you're like, so what happened to the phone lines? Did they blow up? <laughs> like, did no. I sell a bunch of tickets? No, nothing happened. <laughs> Why? Well, no. because no one listens to that fucking show here. <laughs> I've know? literally, I've wanted to go on those radio shows where the, no one's listening and be like, I, if anybody shows up to my show tonight at this club, I will personally, I'll give you a blow job if you tell me you okay. heard me on this show. Nice. Wow. Jeez. Yeah, it's never happened though. Yeah. Oh man, Fargo, North Dakota is missing out. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, really cool. this next gentleman. Okay. Maybe you did his show down back in the day. Although, I mean. I just really like to suck cock, especially big black cock. That's Christina. Sorry. Mm, okay. <laughs> sorry. Well, it kind of transitions well into this next gentleman, the grease man. This guy was in where? What he was in Washington, D.C. That's where he was most notable. Stern okay. used to rip uh, on right, this guy. Right. Really? Back in the day. He still works, believe it or not. We'll get into that in a little bit. But um, I'm going to let. First, I want you to hear what this type of show this guy does. Let's listen to some of his humor. Okay, let's yeah. check it out. Let's let's try this out. Try it out, Mr. Grease Man. Let's hear what you say. You're listening to the Grease Man on DC 101. Uh-oh, you know what I'm getting the urge for? I uh, know, we're getting complaints. I'm sorry, I'm going to stop talking about it any time now, but I can't help it. I got the urge for an ugly woman. I mean, ugly woman. Yeah, get me. Get me. Oh, you don't, you don't like this stuff? Better bring me a big jar, of big vapor rub too. I like to lather them up in big vapor rub. All right, you can you can oh, yeah, end yeah, it. Yeah, no, I got Wait, it. Wait, this yeah. is like the guy that's like, I want a woman to drive me to the pain clinic. Yeah, it's similar, right? Oh, it's very similar. He's making a yeah. he's making a plea to all the ugly women in his listening audience that he is a <laughs> dumpster diver and he is ready to just get down with it. Oh, okay. Ugh. That's the type of humor you get with That's the, the kind of guy you get. Man. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> grease man. Yeah, and he had that, he'd make a lot of weird noises. He'd be like, the grease man, a waddle doodle, and he'd make things like that. <laughs> uh, but let's listen to some of his uh, humor that he got in trouble for. Uh-oh. Okay. A talk show host, Joe Madison, and his listeners Isn't spent the evening amazing? talking about the Grease Man and the comment the country is now talking about. Wednesday, after playing a song by Grammy Award winner Lauren Hill, the Grease Man said, no wonder people drag them behind trucks, a reference to the killing of a black man in Jasper, Whoa. Texas. The Grease Man, for years an equal opportunity offender, later offered this apology. I'm truly sorry for the pain and hurt I've caused with my unfeeling comment. If I could take it back, I would. This remark was a grave error in my judgment. That okay. sounded genuine. Yeah, wow. yeah, he's doing it in his yeah. wacky uh, voice. Yeah, <laughs> his lawyer had Red nothing to do with that. Oh, waddle doodle! I'm, yeah. a, I'm sorry for saying racist shit. Uh, uh, that's really cool. <laughs> oh, oh, these days. Yeah. Now you might think, you know, maybe he slipped up once. You know, you're dancing that line for four yeah. hours a day. You know, you might make a mistake here and there. It's not the first time the grease man got in trouble. <laughs> really? Oh, no. no. It wasn't the first time the Grease Man made a racially offensive remark. Back in 1986, the Grease Man was talking about the Martin Luther King holiday and said, kill four more and we can take a whole week off. His old station, WWDC, was picketed and the Grease Man defended his comments. Anybody that listens to my show regularly and knows me personally knows that I'm not a bigot. I despise racism. <laughs> he said, I despise racism. <laughs> and I think it's a good time, by the way, to wish everyone a happy Martin Luther King That's day. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Today, yeah, yeah today as we record the show. Yes. yes, that's true. Yes, uh, but we can celebrate the whole week, as the Grease Man says. Uh, but yeah, he didn't get fired for that first comment. Wow. Stayed on the air. Yeah, there they was outrage. There was outrage for him in '86. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's how racist this shit was. <laughs> yeah, like, in 1986, they were like, "That's 86. racist." They're like, "You yeah. really shouldn't be talking." Yeah, and the living. second uh, instance where he actually got fired was '99. So Which even then, Jesus, yeah. even then you could be a complete a hole. Right. Really push it. But wow. like every cockroach in this business, <laughs> he resurfaced <laughs> uh-huh. in Jacksonville, Florida. Of course. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Jacksonville. And he stayed on the air there until twenty ten. And uh, then they just the station went in a different direction. He didn't even unceremoniously get fired from that job, believe it or not. He just and now he does an internet radio show, so you can check the Grease Man out. <laughs> God, see if he still slips up. Now he can say whatever the fuck he wants. Well, no, sure. Thanks. So I bet he's saying and all kinds the, of crazy the shit. Grease Ball. Um, what, what kind of money do you think he was making at the end there? Oh, at the end? Yeah, Jacksonville mm, stuff. Jacksonville stuff. 
Yeah. Probably not much. I'm yeah, gonna give say, me I'm a gonna say like I'm gonna say generously sixty grand. Really? Yeah. Really? It had to have been low. I mean he and also he was doing is a the legacy. morning show. He was doing afternoon drive. Okay. So that's like the second. That's the second tier. Yeah. Second best. So the first is morning. Morning, yeah. That's morning the prime that's slot. The top, that's the top paying And then gigs. drive time is the, the Then afternoon line. drive, then maybe middays, then nights. Wow. Yeah. Or you can be like me and get a million jobs and do mornings, nights, all of them, and just get paid the same. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That is cool. Yeah. You know, the grease man, like, it's not even really an attempt at humor. That's the thing. It's just blatant, like, I, shittery. I think he would disagree yeah it's pretty crazy <laughs> like who it's wild but you know what would be funny is not not even to talk to him mm -hmm. it's like to find the person who goes you know who really makes me laugh <laughs> right the grease man yeah, yeah. Like, that's who i would yeah. talk to it was like what what's your favorite part you know he's like what's not fucking hilarious yeah. about this shit? somebody does think he's the that's best. what i'm saying well he had a whole audience for a long ass time yeah 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 Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, ugly woman. Uh, blah, blah, yeah. Blah, go blah. give me an ugly woman. <laughs> Grease Why? man. How did that start? Hey. That talking. That wacky. I don't know. Is it, that it, just to keep people's attention? Hey guys and gals, listen in. Oh, they you guys sound, sound like you got some great pipes over there. <laughs> is <laughs> this uh, is this last man the a real piece man. of garbage? This last man is actually my spirit animal. He's oh. so he's my favorite. He's oh. like a scumbag that I revere. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's like a special sort. So looks, here's he what looks, he looks like. Yeah, he looks really well. Yeah, put real. Uh, yeah, he's a straight laced newsman. Actually, from Buffalo. Looks like he an worked accountant. in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, he was totally straight laced. We can listen to a little bit of him. He didn't have the voice or anything. He uh -huh. was totally buttoned up. Uh, if you want to bring that clip up. But yeah, he worked in news radio, WGR. Well, 72 is the high. We're at 66 degrees now. The weather brought to you by Sattlers and the 509 and a half at GR55. Surprise! I want to try for somebody right now. See if I can get a hold of a contestant. You get or the two. idea. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah, basically, he's a straight up news dude. What's his name? His name is Frank Benny. Okay. And he was on in the 60s, 70s, 80s. He went all the way through the decades. But... Uh, he had demons, like mm -hmm. so many do. He had a big drinking problem. Mm -hmm. He also was a bit of a gambler, mm -hmm. spent a lot of money on gambling. <laughs> and what he did was one day in the 70s, uh, he finished his broadcast at 10 a.m., left the studio, went back to a suburb of Buffalo Snyder, and robbed a bank. What? what? Yeah, in right after he got off the said? air. Yep, in the 70s. So you could still kind of get away with it back then. Well, he did not. Uh, <laughs> moments later after the robbery, he went in with a, a stocking over his face and a toy gun, by the way. It was later found out it was to be a toy gun. But after the robbery, he, he left with about $503. Aww. What? And went home to his home in Williamsville and was greeted by Amherst police uh, with guns drawn in his Damn. driveway. And then had to do a real prison sentence? No. He pled temporary insanity. Wow. And got away with it? And the judge uh, sentenced him to two months in <gasps> a hospital. Ah. So he, he went to the hospital for two months. Within six months of the robbery, he was back on the air at WGI. No. No. Yes. Because he uh, was found guilty through temporary insanity, there was public outcry and public sympathy and management recognized that and said, due to public sympathy, we are going to give him his job back. Oh, my God. Holy shit. So Isn't he was fired. Wild? for He was fired. Yeah, of course. And then they were like, uh, get the bank robber back in here. Yeah, yeah, but this was the 70s. You yeah. know, people were way less. Dude, uh, how much of a thrill would it be to rob a bank? Oh, you think I so? I think about it a oh lot. Oh, my God. Really? <laughs> that's your crime. Like, if you could do, besides murder, we know that's your number one favorite crime that you could do. I, I mean... I think robbing a bank, I can only imagine what the adrenaline rush. Is it the terror in people's eyes that you no, like? No, it's, it's like. Oh, that it's, part would be fun though. Come on. I mean, that's fun to see, a, <laughs> of course, people crying and like wondering if they're going to make Children, it. Children, like, women. I think, you know, the planning, what you, you would get like this, you'd have moments where you're like calm and then, you know, you do your, you're casing the joint, right? Like your drive, how's your, how are you going to drive out of here? What's the response time? All your planning but like the day you're like, I'm going to do it. I mean, your heart rate must just be oh, yeah. through the roof. And when you walk in to do it, you got to go disguise, right? The mask thing is too crazy. You got to do something kind of cool, I yeah. think, too. Like a cool mask, you know? Yeah. Do like a purge mask or... I would like to do... Do that dog mask that you got back the there? The dog mask <laughs> is yeah. The dog band. What if they put out like an APB for the dog, you know? Yeah. You hear them? That'd like, be cool. Then you yeah. get a cool name. 
Yeah. Like an outlaw name. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The bark robber. The yeah. Bark robber. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, thought about this a lot when you're in a mm. bank. Do you ever think about a robber coming in and like All if you the time. take action? Mm-hmm. No. I always think about, about that, that this is the time. I always no think like, what if it's right now? What am now? I going to take action for a fucking bank no, robber? Fuck no way. They're well, here's sure, where I would, I would uh, take action if the bank teller was a babe. Oh, you would? <laughs> yeah, that's the only circumstance. Dude, and that guy, <laughs> the bank robber, just takes the butt of his shotgun and just smacks it against <laughs> your face. Everything in your face just Oh, snaps. God. Oh. My orbital's busted wide open. And then you hear that babe telling the cops, she's like, this uh, fucking idiot tried to stop him. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I was trying to help. She's like, you fucking idiot. Is the pretty lady okay? <laughs> you know what I want to do is uh, I'd want to steal a car. I feel like that would be mm, yeah, the be ultimate thrill. thrill. Yeah. And that seems attainable thrill. as a goal. I feel like I could learn how to do that now. Do you want to know why I think Frank Benny is a genius, by the way? Why? Because it was a win-win situation for him. He thought, he. by the way, he was an, a crazy gambler. He was in debt to the mafia. Oh, that's why he robbed yes. the bank. So he wow. robbed the bank. If he got away with it and got money, he could then pay the people back. If he right. didn't get away with it, it was high profile enough where the mafia couldn't fuck with him. Right. Wow. Oh, that is smart. So there are smart. there are theories that, that say that he was thinking that going in then he is a fucking real genius yeah dude who borrows money from the mob like you really got to be in your addiction gambling in the 70s it was probably a common thing when you have a bookie That's right so fucking crazy and uh yeah and they're the guys that i used to work for they have tapes of him cassette tapes from when they were working on the same station late in this man's career where he is just blasted on the air. I love it. It's so fucking mm. hilarious. Who, this guy? Yes, because he would drink on the air after <laughs> once after a while, you know, and he'd just be on the air like, oh, we got 75 degrees and oh, <laughs> shit, you know, like he'd shit his pants. Um, ah, it's great. Don't forget the, uh, we, yes, we, my we love. so when we watched the other day, we took our, our like, kind of our redo of our anniversary. Yeah. We, uh, we watched one of the rocks movies which one it was called sky yes yeah, sky skyscraper he has one that? leg right yeah yeah, yeah. He's missing a leg and it's which has one of nothing the, to do with the story though right not, like it doesn't I mean, really matter not, that he no, has one leg. not really it's one of the dumbest fucking things i've ever seen in my life um and you can tell that like it's got it has to have hundred plus million dollar yeah. budget wait and it's one of those movies where you can get up and go to the bathroom and i'll get up and go to the bathroom and tom's like do you want me to pause it i'm like no i can no. figure it out yeah <laughs> i have a feeling i know what's and gonna you come happen. back and you're like oh there's more screaming and like <laughs> things are blowing up and yeah i got it's it it's just so dumb uh but it's entertaining you know yeah. it was like it's like a it's a good one to waste time to popcorn flick yeah, yeah. it's a real waste time but then we got to talking about it right mm -hmm. what did we get to talking about well we were looking at him and he's so big and he's so handsome mm -hmm. and thinking we were thinking like how big is the rock's dick yeah mm. and, that's right the dick detectives <laughs> what do you think well here's the deal man is yeah. that we've been talking about the dick detectives for years and we've always what we've learned is that penis size is not proportionate necessarily to one's stature. What this is think. true. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. So it could be deceiving. He's a big guy, but he could have a tiny peener. Could, it could. And you have no evidence to support or nothing. It's just all. What's it's in all your theory, head. speculation. Yeah. See, I think the man works so hard, and he is constantly overcompensating. It's oh. either for that small dick, mm -hmm. or it's because he can't shake his first failure as a as a wrestler back in the day. Do you think he he was a failure as a wrestler? There was a moment where he when he debuted as Rocky Maivia, he came out to silence. Not booze cuz booze in wrestling is like you you win. Yeah. Sure. It's the extremes, the cheers and the booze. Hmm. He came out to just lukewarm reception. This is wait, mm -hmm. this is a debut on the big stage? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh. His like debut is like the blue chipper Rocky Maivia and he came out and no one gave a shit. Well, I will say that I enjoy watching him. I'll, I, I've watched a few of his dumb movies. There was another one, like Hurricane. They're always like one yeah, word. Like, I mean, tornado, it's entertainment. You know, it's, it's waterfall. Like, so it's you like, think he overcompensates like for it. his small dick or what? I don't think so. I, I'll I tell find you what him I to be deeply confident, actually. I think he's, he's grounded. Got a, I think he's got a healthy hog on. Him. I, I think. I don't so think too. he has a donkey dick where people are like, "Get out of here with that thing." Mm -hmm. But I think it's kind of appropriate for being. Six five and two fifty or whatever he is, like I think it it probably 
looks like it fits. You I think I mean? he probably has hmm. a decent piece. Yeah. But on the rock, you're expecting this fucking right. baby arm. If you see the traps right. and the, and the yeah. shoulders, you're just like, whoa. And I don't think it lives up to that. So the mediocre dick on such a frame is we, disappointing. But if, no, no, but even, here's, here's the thing. Even a regular sized penis exactly. on such a frame, I, I mean... <sighs> It's gonna look really small. Oh, definitely. Yeah, one hundred percent. He's got to have Actually, a gargantuan penis. Even if it's normal. like, like, even if he had like six and a half, like, let's say seven and a half inches, which is above the average size by a bit. Right. On him, you'd be like, "What's that little fucking like night switch you got for you?" Exactly. Right. Night switch. <laughs> yeah. Because he's essentially built like the Incredible Hulk. Totally. So how what so was you Hulk's want it to like? be you you. To line up with what your expectations, it should be 12 inches long, right. nine inches in circumference. I see what you're saying. It should have the same veins that pop out of his neck and his arms. And you'd be like, yeah, that, that'll That's kill somebody. That's the rock Because yeah. he's such a specimen, you expect yeah. his dick yes. to also be. Yes. So basically. Yes, that's the problem. Is that yeah. Our expectations are so high for his dog. Yeah, like if you looked at me, yeah. low expectations. Low expectations. I'm going to blow you out of the water. Oh, yeah. If yours yeah. is four you know and a I mean? half. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, I don't know if it still works. You put the rock stick on me. <laughs> yes. Now, can that's I tell right. you my big thing about you that I didn't realize? Mm -hmm. I thought when you were talking about your delayed ejaculation. Yeah. And how it's you can't come with women. Mm -hmm. I thought you meant like every once in a while, that's what happens. Like no, in other words, inverse of that actually. Yeah, I didn't understand. <laughs> I thought you meant like, oh, I can't come all the time mm -hmm. with women. But no, what you I meant can't is, come all the time. <laughs> I Sorry, don't so understand. You're saying even when you're alone, you no, I can do it alone. Uh -huh. When I'm with a, when another person is aiding me in that task, I can't. It's like a, it feels like stage fright when you're at a urinal. You can't uh, piss. Uh, so it's like, eventually I have to like take over and be like, I'll take care of it. But like your dong's <laughs> never like, oh, I'm like, I'm ready to, let's get it out. Like, you I mean, have that? It, it is and it isn't. I mean, it is and it can't f do it. It just, it's like, it stays hard. It's there. It's acting appropriately, except for the fact that it just has no punctuation moments. But when you're alone, everything's yeah. fine. I make Does myself it... rock out. Yeah. Easy. So really? do yeah. most of your, your sexual uh, endeavors end with like, you know, nothing happens with the girl. Mm -hmm. And then when she leaves, you're like, okay, now I'll finish myself. I usually finish while she's there. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I can do it myself. Oh, you're like, I'll take care of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she participates, like she watches. If she or... wants, that depends how involved she wants to get. Some of them just kind of like roll over But you over inside and don't do of her, and... nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Wow. I mean, not, not nothing. I'm... I know, but I mean, you don't finish. Right. God. And what did Dr. Drew Crazy. say to you about that he, when he was didn't here? Say much. He basically said what you're <laughs> just, he's like, yeah. you got to find a way to have her get involved with you. Yeah, like, yeah. I got to basically get myself to that point and then like hope. And then be like, like hey, finish it off. Open your mouth and your eyes. But that's yeah. not going <laughs> to. Yeah. Or yeah. have her take over. Yeah. That's no, no, no. You yeah. finish it, but she's involved. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's I don't too know. That's crazy. Yeah. It is wild that you don't, you can't, you don't even. <laughs> You can't even like uh, <laughs> fathom it. Now, is it weird that I'm getting hard right now? Is that weird or not? This is sometimes how it ends. Like, am I not right. pretty enough for you? <laughs> oh, I've got to imagine that women feel yeah. very insecure when this happens. Mm -hmm. I would probably, I've got to admit, I would probably be like, what? Why can't I do this? It's We're fucked up I relationships. It's, oh, it has? Oh, yeah. Oh, I bet. And if you're for like, sure. you're just not hot. Yeah, Anyways, that's um, You tell them that? Oh, my God. We got to get The Rock to comment on uh, our... You think he'll uh, make a post for us? I would uh, like to know what kind of piece he's, come he's on, handling Rock. back there. Come know? on, Dwayne. Let us know what's up, man. Let us know. The Dick Detectives. raises his eyebrow for sure yeah he's, he's like, like you're gonna take the people's come <laughs> <laughs> um, don't forget guys uh josh potter you're gonna see him march 22nd 10 p.m show at the improv lab tickets are on sale now we'll post the link everywhere and um get get tickets to see him he's absolutely hilarious yes i'm pumped thanks dude absolutely um your mom's house will be right back all right this is long overdue and we finally got him here he is a comedian <laughs> a director and one of the highest ranking 
white people in the black culture world. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I like, I'm a lieutenant. You're like a lieutenant. Yeah. yeah. Amongst black culture. <laughs> It is Neil Brennan. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Welcome. Yes. Now I want to explain why I want to be here, which is I I don't listen to the podcast, but I watch the fuck out of the clips, right? Oh, okay, yeah. good. You know, I watch the fuck out of yeah. uh, out of a out of an Instagram, right? Yeah. I want to know. Anytime I've posted anything mm-hmm. related to you, my comments will be flooded. With a language that's like fucking orc language. Yes. yes. It's like, like to, mom jeans. What's with the jeans? <laughs> yeah. Jeans. Yes. So I just, okay. What's I, with so the what, can we go through just a glossary? Sure. Sure. For the uninitiated. Sure. sure. What's with the jeans? <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 So you probably explained it before. The yeah, yeah. 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 No, but it's, it's, it, it makes sense. We get asked a lot, especially people who go like, hey, I just got into the podcast uh, two weeks ago what the fuck is going on uh-huh. they, they, then, and there's a lot to cover you know yeah. there's a lot to, there's a lot though but to be, so we should start with the basics jeans is probably a basic jeans is what the show is based on jeans is like the premise of star wars it's the force it's yeah. it's what we're inside it's that doesn't make any one. sense at all <laughs> so that doesn't mean anything the, this is okay it comes from it comes from, the whole thing uh, is based on lingo that the jeans thing is based on lingo from our relationship meaning it was like um we started to uh call each other as a joke when we're living in an apartment, it's like you're leaving for the day. I'd be like, I'm leaving. I'll be back later, mommy. Right? Like, say uh-huh. mommy. Yeah. And then that evolved into mommy jeans. And then that evolved into dropping mommy and just saying jeans. Okay. And then, you know what I mean? It's just like <laughs> yeah, a yeah, pet yeah, name. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then a pet name. it started yeah. to, you, do, you used to, you know how you see somebody who wears like jeans that are too high and too tight and you're like, yeah. what the fuck is it? So we started to say basically that that person's, got it going on like that that guy is living life the right way uh-huh. so like where i'm high and tight and that when you fuck up when you do something mm-hmm. stupid or embarrassing yeah. is because your jeans are low and loose okay so great it, it was we flipped that on its head <laughs> okay great so like if we do something and people are like that wasn't cool somebody should set loose. up a wikipedia page with all this on that's, it. that's really probably good a good idea, idea. like yeah. for real because it's yeah. there's it's 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 lore somebody created yeah. a page of the sound drops and like over a thousand sound drops are on it. Wow. So like they, they put, is there stuff that you guys go like, let's not do this on the show. This is just for us still. This is just for the house. I don't know. It's not really. I mean, much. nothing. Not why, would, why would you throw it away like that? Yeah, no. Throw it away on your relationship. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, so, there's stuff that just can't translate to the show. Like yeah. right now, Tom and I are hooked on this Martin Lawrence joke from like a decade ago. And we mm-hmm. just like, we do it to each other. Yeah. Right but, and then like, sometimes we'll play the clip, but it's, uh, it's when he was talking about <laughs> that dance, the, the cha-cha, the cha-cha. slide. You're and just, it, we just get hooked on a phrase yeah you know? of course so he was making fun of dances <laughs> and like he's like that shit <laughs> he goes I, just, I can't even say it he's like <laughs> you know he's like dances used to be like real kind he's like now it's like dude move your hips like this one time <laughs> now keep moving your hips like this <laughs> that's it and he's like yeah. that shit is easy and like he just, yeah. we just keep fucking yeah that's saying fair that. now yeah. think about it yeah, now think, yeah stop it. think about it <laughs> you but that's what i i'm always impressed in your act how many other people's just you do you've made a a, you'll take other people's phrases yeah and make you'll build a fucking castle around them Mm -hmm. and it's like bikes is like bikes being the best example (laughs) yeah where I, i have a million of those and i would never think to explain to where put it, it in your ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have a fucking million of those like just yeah. dumb things, like that dumb be, hooks in your head. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. This, this show is dumb hooks in your head yeah. Yeah. and sharing them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then it and then it naturally evolves into your stand-up, right? Yes. Like so the bikes thing was like the bikes came came from the podcast. It was not stand-up. It was we were playing uh Scared Straight ninety nine. Right. Which of is course. the one off. Yep. So it wasn't the show, it was a special. A one-time special. It was MTV? It was MTV, yep. and they aired it uncensored, which was bananas. Uh-huh. And that guy was just, I mean, he stole the show, and he was fucking verbally abusive to these kids, but in a really, it was, he reminded me of like Robin Harris. Yeah. And he was, he was like, you big, slat, fat, sloppy motherfucker, get over, like <laughs> saying shit like that. And I was like, oh, just... Wait, wasn't Scare Straight? There was an original one from like the eighties. There's one right? before that. Yeah, it was even way crazier. It wasn't was, it? It was. Well, it was that. Those guys. 
It was the seventies. It was the seventies. Yeah, people were different. Then. People were different. Oh yeah. Yes. So like this the one, dudes were different, and they didn't, they didn't have hooks. They didn't have hooks. <laughs> this guy, honestly, right. no, you're right. <laughs> yeah, this right. guy, he. The other thing that's hilarious is you watch that thing, man. One of the kids doesn't want to do, and you know, you know that the kids ultimately are not going to get hurt. But these guys really toe the line, and he. That guy who screams bikes is telling this kid that he's like apologized. <laughs> and as he's saying apologize, he gets this far. Yeah. I mean, he gets this far. And as he's saying it, spit is uh -huh. flying off of his lips. And he's like, I know you don't like no motherfuckers spitting in your face. And he like spit is flying in his face. And they call him a faggot. And they're just saying really crazy shit. But you know, because you're like on the show, you're like, it's not going to. Like, he's not going to hit him. Yeah, because he's also going to get another 10 years if he hits him. Absolutely. Starts saying all this shit. And he, he, he is saying shit like, I'll, like the things I said in my act about it, like how he's like, I'm going to make you suck my dick every day. And he, he says that shit to him. And it's all so heightened. Like, he, the yeah. whole time he screams and yells the entire time, says motherfucker like a thousand times. And then if you look up, they didn't air it on that, but if you look up like the follow-up piece MTV did, they cut to that prisoner, this guy right here. And they're like, uh, like, tell us about the experience. He's like, well, you know, it's great to be able to help these kids. <laughs> <laughs> he just completely yeah, flipped. Yeah. He's, like, he's like, you know, we, we do that so that they learn. So yeah. they don't come back. <laughs> and you're like, dude, like nothing about your message was ever like seemed yeah. controlled. Does that it ever that work? Idea? I wonder if that ever works. Well, they kids. can't prove, you know, they can't prove like, well, I was yeah. going to do crime. Well, and you I... know that they got one of the guys on that. I mean, first of all, multiple people who have been part of the scared straight stuff have violated again. The of bikes course. kid, the kid that got yelled at, uh, it was going back to jail when I was doing, like after I did the special, <laughs> right. I met somebody who was in class with him in middle school <laughs> and they're like, he's going back to jail. And they're like, he caught hell for that when it aired. But there's a guy who's on the scared straight special where they do the follow up on MTV and they're like, how did it help you know you? And he's like, I totally straighten my life away like you can look this up he was found later guilty of like murder and burying a body and really like, yeah 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 Jesus, and he's yeah. on the special and he's one of the kids who you think is kind of like has it together like and he, he didn't wow he murdered somebody later yeah 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 and he was like a, he's like i have kids now and i i live my life this way total psycho murder someone mm. um okay Great. bikes mm -hmm. uh all right so let let's just go with the Mm -hmm. Who's Randy? Who's Randy? That <laughs> is really, really deep in the vault. Um, All right, so, uh, what is the order in the in the bump? It yeah. goes like, don't even put no love into this. <laughs> okay. Mr. Your mom was a fucking sham. Yeah, yeah. Don't bring anyone's mom into this. That's Mr. T. Don't That's bring from, anyone's mom into this. Don't yeah. bring anyone's mother so into this. When we, okay. were, when we were building the show in the universe, it was yeah. it was exactly what you said, where it was like head hooks right yeah like just drops in your head the earliest one. and it was also like mom themed because your mom's house was supposed to be yeah. something silly to say to someone like listen to your, you know yeah like when you say it people are like what do you mean your mom's yeah like they get kind of like they <laughs> yeah, pull like, back um because we literally sat down at our dinner table and we were like what's the dumbest thing you could name a podcast yeah yeah stupidest thing your mom's house yeah yeah so all right so it goes uh this shit is big time right that's what the first this, thing yeah this is, who is that that's a coach uh, Ice Tim Ice Harris. This shit is big time. So he's giving. <laughs> <laughs> this shit should be easy. This is so funny because yeah. it's like meeting my heroes. Like, wait, <laughs> yeah. what? Oh my god. Have you never seen Year of the Bull? <laughs> no. Okay, so one of the first things that we profile. I don't know the, who's Julie. We'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh maybe. no, yeah. So the first thing that we did is we we one of the first things we we profiled the documentary Stevie. Stevie, right? Yeah, Stevie. it's about yeah, a guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's real fun. That's the guy who did the uh, Hoop Dreams made Stevie. Yes, yes. exactly yeah. right. Okay. So we, we, we played that and we dissected it for, I don't know, you know. He's the only dad I've ever known. And like all his <laughs> fun drops. Yeah. And then next was a documentary called Year of the Bull, which features uh, the Miami Northwestern Bulls uh, in Liberty City, Miami. Okay. Uh, which has produced, at the time of the documentary, which is now more than 10 years old, it had already produced 19 NFL players. Yeah. So a bonkers program. And uh, there's just like some crazy, just phrases and things yeah. screamed in there. So it was like, it was a perfect way to open the, the show is like the guy saying this shit is big time. The show is starting. This shit yeah. is big time. 
Um, then your mom's house. Don't bring anyone's mother into this, which is Mr. T. Mr. T. It was a, a PSA from the 80s about kids insulting each other and bullying each other. And yeah. they were doing your mama jokes or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, don't bring anyone's mother into this. <laughs> and he like separates the kids. So that's Mr. Great. T. Um, and then your mama's, a fucking your mama's in the fucking stands. Well, that's wait, that's coach. Who was Randy too. before that? Who is Randy? Now yeah. that's a dark, now, that one. is a random oh, one. Jesus that is Christ. really dark. Neil, you had to ask. It's really dark. Please. All right. So real sports on HBO. Please. I've seen so, them all. Okay. So there's <laughs> one, they've done a number. We almost did a sketch on Chappelle show based around a hook from real sports. Really? VJ Singh, the golfer who's like, uh, Indonesian. Uh, had beef with his caddy. Uh huh. And this was the pitch, or this is reality? no. This was in. This is oh. on real. Okay. Already funny. Okay. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Had beef with his caddy. The caddy said he was an asshole, and uh, and VJ Singh said like talking about the caddy is like, well, there's his name. The caddy's name was Dave, and he goes, "There's things you don't know about Dave. Um, uh, he drinks, and then he goes, he comes to work." smelling of drink <laughs> so me and Javel would just say smelling of drink smelling constant. of drink Con- smelling of drink that sounds smelling. like hardcore fun yeah smelling of- <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> smelling of drink uh, smelling okay. of drink yeah so so wait just this is a sidetrack but like <laughs> did um Hard. did you know you for people who don't know you co-created wrote and uh directed um uh, Chappelle show and obviously one of the most famous celebrated successful sketch shows of all time did you did you guys like riff to come up with sketches? Is that, yeah, that mostly. That was a yeah, big part like of it. that was. Uh, we would. It was more like, like the real world. I'm trying to think of like specific. The blind white supremacist thing. Oh my Christ! Was Chappelle's grandfather was blind and super light skinned uh-huh. So the day Martin Luther King got shot, he was on a bus, and he heard these black dudes like like menacing a white dude like and then he realized it was him <gasps> like what the oh. fuck are you doing on this bus cracking did it and he was like oh this dude's in trouble he's like oh it's me oh, oh they're yelling at me they're yelling at him because wow. he was light-skinned and he thought uh so they thought he was white uh so that was based that was the basis of that and then we just built out from there yeah that has to be one of the in my opinion best comedy sketches of all time so fucking yeah it's funny. fucking awesome like Brilliant. it's a great sketch like yeah. there's yeah. just a bunch of really good jokes in it uh, and and you like used to be, idea. by the way, um, it was one of my, th- I obviously didn't know you. Yeah. You were like an Easter egg in so many sketches. Yeah, but yeah, now yeah. thinking back, <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen those my sketches. Head in all. My, my, my head exploded. Your head explodes in that. My One of my favorites was um, Black Gallagher. Oh, uh-huh, yeah. And, me and, and the, the crowd. But the volume is down. And you go, <laughs> pee on me, you black son of a bitch. Chappelle <laughs> <laughs> no, says pee on me. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, smash some fruit, you black son of a bitch. Oh, that's what you said. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Pee on me. I think it was, and Chappelle said, pee on me. Yeah, P.I. Um, you, you black <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> I laughed Smash so fruit. hard at that. I remember I was watching that with Sickler because that was that was back when it was something's gonna air and you gotta watch yeah. it. And we would we would like go back and like I feel like he caught that. He's like, did you hear what this guy said? And we would like TiVo rewind. Yeah, you do. yeah, you had to work for it. Yeah, it was that was yeah. great. Um, yeah, that was like under like it was like yeah, mixed it low. Yeah, I mixed it nice and low. That was great. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like uh, the real world was a thing. Oh like my God, that was great. We, too. That we hit Chappelle's friend had been on the second season, Dave Edwards, who was a comic. He was the one who yep. like pulled the blanket and then got in trouble. Oh, yeah. And I know like Dave. Chappelle was on the phone with him when it happened. So, like, we'd always sort of thought about the real world as like the, they just make black dudes look bad. And then we figured, like, so we'll did you first reverse. draft most of this stuff? Like, would you like here? Like, here's a version, and then you guys would. Uh, we no, we would like literally sit in a room together and we, type it up. Yeah, yeah. Like type, 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 type. Jesus you go. Christ. Type, 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 type. You go. Type. Wow. Like it wasn't like. Uh, I think people see it as like, either Dave's the genius and I'm his typist, uh-huh. or I'm the like, or I'm like tell Dave what to do, and it's like, oh, or yeah. we're both funny. Yeah, I don't know. Could that yeah. be possible? No, yeah. not possible. One of you has to. Okay. Um, how did so, you guys? And at that point, are you guys like you guys were friends? And we, you, I work. I work. I met him when I worked at the door of the comedy club in, in New York, the Boston Comedy Club, like in the early '90s. I was going to school, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then 
I my brother's a comic, so I was working. I like got a job working the door. Did he show you the ropes, your brother? Like how? Not he basically like he would bring me around, but like in the eighties, yeah. in the late eighties, like so. The cool thing was like. I knew a tell when he was an open micer. I knew. That's crazy. Oh my god! I mean, for real. I, How old are you? Sixty five? Yeah. I, basically, no. I was sixteen when I was like. That's crazy. When um. I was, I was in high school and like knew a tell and Romano and all these guys that like were barely, if making a living, barely making a living. Like really, I remember Romano got fired from uh, news radio. Joe replaced him. Yeah. Romano got fired, and I remember thinking, all of us were like how is Ray going to make a living? Right. Like he's got kids like, and then, but we were all like, he's really fucking funny. Yeah. So he like, pulled it together. He figured it out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but so I knew like me and Jamel were the only young guys and Jay Moore. Um, and like these guys, red Johnny, the round guy, they were like, they were a comedy team. John DiMaggio does, uh, he's the voice of, uh, like a bunch of cartoons. Like he does oh. like, he does like uh, he was on uh, Futurama. He's like the robot, I think. Yeah. Um, so we were the only like young dudes, <clears throat> and like me and Dave got along really well. And then I moved out here to write for like singled out on MTV and all that on Nickelodeon, mm -hmm. and and then me and Chappelle were still always friends. We wrote Half Baked, uh, and then we sort of like drifted it for a second, and then because Half Baked was sort of a tanked and then so what, was that a tank because isn't it, it funny it, to be a part I, of something that i know now that has now like, a, like yeah and it was like oh no that fucked my career up for yeah years. it's so weird right like i love that you guys all think it's this <laughs> fucking the, huge uh, the other one that's i mean like he's super successful but like it, box office didn't do well was uh it, idiocracy the Mike oh, oh my fuck that's a brilliant shit. movie Eight shit but like you talk to people about yeah, idiocracy, idiocracy. Like, that that's, might be the funny it's my favorite movie yeah and they so like stopped funny. funding the movie yeah. Like he was fucked up. Like he wasn't going well. Like that was a disaster for him. So but yeah, half fake is like now oh, people love a, it. Yeah. yeah, they love it. Man. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, like they so horrible it box office. Horrible. Opened against Titanic. <gasps> oh shit. Uh, Goldeneye, Goodwill Hunting. Oh my god. Whoa. And something, and maybe Big Lebowski. <clears throat> oh my god. And what I love about um the movie business too is like people are really you know hopeful for box office and talk to you a certain way and like if your movie doesn't do well they'll be like you're a piece of shit you they, know, like, <laughs> like they literally look at you like your your garbage yeah. i i because i remember i went to the, again i'm i'm gonna tell stories that make me sound like i'm a million years old <laughs> i went to the bowfinger premiere yeah and uh and it was a universal movie it was later it was like the same year as happening and the head of Universal looked at me like, you're a fucking retarded piece of garbage. <laughs> oh. And it was like, I literally was like, all right, I'm never going to a premiere again. I really haven't gone since. And, uh, and it's just, they, it's this, they act like they didn't have anything to do with it. They act like, right. It's your they, fault. It's, totally. I would say it's like mission impossible where like, if this fails, there's no record. They, they yeah. act like they had, they're just divorced themselves completely. Wow. And uh, and they and then the thing of like, have, do you guys ever have the thing where people act like they haven't met you? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and you're totally. like, I met. I'm a fucking. <laughs> all human beings are good at is remembering faces. Like yeah. the fact that you're acting like, did we meet? Yeah. That's, like that's... Sh shut it. Yeah. Um, and if I always like if someone, I feel like they're gonna act like we didn't meet. Yeah. I'll be like, hey man, we met. Oh, that's smart. Call you do that. Yeah. It's like, uh, have you ever had now, like somebody you're like, oh, I'm doing uh, whatever gig in uh, San Diego. And they're like, yeah. oh, who you, uh, who you working with? Who you opening for? And you're like, yeah, yeah. really? Yeah. No, I'm not open for anybody. Yeah. Okay. Um, some, uh, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> the, um, yeah, so that's how I knew Dave. So he was, his career was fucked up after half baked. I felt bad. Uh, like they literally said on CNN, his career is over. What? From from that movie? From the movie, yeah. The review said his career is over, and like his mom saw it. But I don't. Oh. I, I fucking don't bring anyone's mom. I don't know the de don't <laughs> I don't know the mother. details of it, but I feel like I saw some doc or something that said, I think before your guys show that he'd had like nine pilots or yeah, something. Yeah, oh yeah, he'd done like, well that was the thing, he kept doing like these fucking sitcoms. Because that was his production company, yeah, it was Pilot, Pilot Boy. Boy. Yeah, like, yeah. It, but it was called that from the beginning, which I think he knew, that uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of these fucking pilots. Yeah. And yeah. he did pilots, again, how old I am. He was doing a pilot, I remember him 
doing a pilot and me talking and during the LA riots. What? Really? Yes. I almost got run over by a car during the LA riot. I was in New York, Dude. but he was here. He did a pilot 25 years ago? Yeah, he did a pilot in 1992 or three. Jesus. 1992, yeah. How old is Chappelle? 45. Oh my yeah. God. But he started when but he was I'm, 14. Yeah, I was like, I was in high school during the riots. Yeah. So I was like 10th grade or something. Yeah, he was, we were 9, 18. Jesus Christ. Uh, First of all, hold on. Just out of you high You use the R word. <laughs> but also, <laughs> I just wanted to say um, huh. that one of the most amazing, you know, I, I really don't get that um, wowed by like celebrity stories or someone someone's met. I'm like, that's cool. You know, oh, really? You know, it's like. Yeah, I'm the I'm, same I'm way. trying to think like. But you've hung out with Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And I Aww. think that's that's pretty much the coolest. That's, it He's really the best, is right? the, like, when I met Obama, I wasn't nervous because I'd met Eddie Murphy. Mm. Do you know right. what I mean? Like, yeah. Obama. So Dude. me and Jamel were at Eddie's house like three years ago or something. and uh, Shitty house? Oh, what a <laughs> piece of shit. Well, the, the first time I went to his house was like 12 years ago. And, uh, well, we went to the, we went to Bubble Hill. We went to the Jersey one. Uh, I mean, I literally, I could just spend 20 minutes just talking about it. Sometimes me and Rock will just talk about how famous and great Eddie Murphy was. Dude. For like chunks, like where we'll just stop and be like. Anybody in our age range. Yeah. He is. Like, like you can't. You. So we were at Eddie, Eddie's house and Eddie, he just smokes weed all the time. Eddie does? Yeah. What he's are also, you? I mean, what do you? He's got so much money. Right? He's so rich. Yeah. And he's so fucking funny and successful. Yeah. Yeah. So. And he's also one of the, like, there's, it's very hard to legit pull off very funny and cool. Like yeah. mystique yes. cool. It doesn't fucking exist. Fucking leather and like but he oh, girls so. actually want to fuck him. Right. And not because maybe yeah. he's funny. It's not because no. he's funny. It's because I want to fuck his his essence. I don't yeah. even care if he makes a joke. Oh, and yeah. he started early too, right? He Wasn't started he? when he was like 16 yeah. or 15 or something. God the, damn it. Uh, He's a bit of a natural. The greatest, this is how much of a natural he is. Yeah. Charlie told me one time when they were like five, they were watching TV and Eddie said, I'm going to be famous. And Charlie <laughs> said, what's famous? <laughs> That's how fucking like yeah. destined it was. Now the other greatest destiny Murphy story is so a psychic uh one of the Murphy family went to a psychic Tom oh, oh, oh sorry 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 that was the mistake one of the um do, you, do I need to wait for no, no 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 I was okay just... one of the uh one of the Murphy family in like the 60s went to a psychic and the psychic said someone in your bloodline is going to be world famous wow so that generation of Murphys all started taking tap dancing lessons nah. and Hilarious. singing lessons and like f like acting class and all this shit. And then one of their kids was Eddie. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then the E was like, and then it was like, oh no 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 no. Like, so he came out like, like, re like he said watching TV. He's like, I'm gonna be on there. I'm gonna be famous. Does he? Does he still? Does he want to do movies still? I don't feel like he really. He does. did. Uh, he did Dolomite. That's coming out. Oh, that's coming out. And still. he's did, gonna do Coming to America too. That's right. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Again, that's definitely a perfect comedy film. Every time Coming that's to America 100%. is on, I yeah. have to watch it, no matter it, what I'm doing. I they stop. filmed it in 21 days. Are you is fucking that kidding me? Yeah, yeah, I saw a, that like, a film is so it. well written and so funny. Everything he, is a setup or a punch. It's like, so good. You know. Oh, he, the thing about Eddie is he's like, he, the story, as the story goes, like he may have written, I'm going to get you sucker. And was like, I'm, I don't want to do it. I'll throw it away. And Keenum was like, I'll do this shit. Yeah. Like that. I don't know if that's true or not, but, um, but, so the story I was going to tell about Eddie yeah, yeah, was yeah. we're at Eddie's house. And, uh, by the way, he's such a germaphobe. Everyone gets their own really? joint. Oh, so like, I don't smoke weed, but like Dave had his own joint. It, like you just get your own joint. Um, and uh, Eddie was like, yeah, man, Obama was real cool to me. And uh, and there's a picture of Obama meeting Eddie and Obama is like. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, yeah, Obama's his age. Yeah, that's yeah. So true. Like, oh, like Eddie, Mur Eddie Murphy. You yeah. can't even can you can't contextualize how big and important he was. Yeah. You just can't. No. Like he's a he's a he's a 
he's a titan like you know what too and he was so relaxed what i loved about eddie he's so yes it's so like relaxed. and you can so see it on and it, 20 years old or whenever he did 21 delirious, he did delirious at 20 years old yeah you like see, now like, that you've done stand up that long right oh yeah. my god he's so relaxed and he's so calm and centered and he's having fun all the time like he's it's and just he owns Eddie's that world. and make like yeah. you just god you realize like this you know when you're really in your groove in stand-up you like you own it you know yeah. like you're on stage and you're like oh man like this set is tight like people realize yeah. like you know this stuff and you're and to even think that somebody at could do it at 21 at that level oh my god yeah i was the the night at his house we were like me and dave were just like fucking bug we were literally bugging him mm -hmm. like come on eddie do stand up dave <laughs> yeah. was literally like might as well have gone like come on mister yeah. like yeah. come on do stand and uh and i was asking questions he's like you know, how long have you been doing stand-up? And I was like, ah, like this is like, I guess four years ago. I was like, yeah, it's seven years. And he goes, oh, that's why you asked me all these fucking questions. <laughs> and he's like, seven years I had done uh, Delirious. And I was like, yeah, but that's, come on, man. Like, that's not even. What? That's not even. Seven like years thing. in. I that's did. not even a real. It's that crazy. can't judge. No. He might have done Raw by at seven. I don't even know. Because he was young. Yeah, I think he did Raw when he was like 24, 25. Yeah, so right? that would be seven That's cool. Years. That's cool. Every seven years. And he is um, just one of those um, prodigies. Very, yeah, and he also, here's the thing, he, he's so affected um, other stand-ups that you can see somebody, you could see Eddie now and be like, oh, I feel like I've seen a bunch of these jokes. Yeah, you saw hundreds of you people saw all do the, their version. Yeah, of yeah. all jokes. the offspring. Yes. And that's, well, and also prior. I mean, he's doing prior. Yeah. Uh, the, the, Eddie, Eddie's, he's so fucking good that I was talking when, when, uh, Cosby got sentenced, um, uh, Chappelle and Rock called me back to back. Like both of them s fucking legitimately sad, like sad, sad. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, yeah. like I was sad, like I felt bad for them. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, uh, Rock like to was, see a hero. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I met Bill Cosby again. That's how old I am at Arsenio. And um, Damn, John. yeah, you look yeah, good, yeah, man. Jesus you look Christ. real good. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're twelve. Um, and uh, at Arsenio, and uh, he was an asshole. And I knew he, I could <laughs> really. Cosby was a fucking, everybody has really? asshole. Oh, he was a fucking asshole. I never knew this shit. Nobody fucking told me. I knew he, was an he asshole. literally was like. And then the white man, he goes the Dutch man, and I was like, I'm not Dutch. And he's like, and he like stood by. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, he was racist. Against yeah, but like the one he's, guy again, I, so he's talking. Cos, to, he was to, talking to me, and he said the Dutch man, and like in like, the green room or something, in his dressing room. Yeah, and you're um, in there. Uh, with, I was in there with Dave Edwards, and the, we were friends with this woman Joy who booked the show. We knew her through Dave. He's like Mr. Dutch man, and the Aww. Dutch man came. Yeah, <laughs> um, the history. The, so whatever. So uh, so so those guys both call me both sad and. Um, yeah, wait. What do you think of this? Pretty good. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I feel bad for the people only listening. Yeah. Um, I, know. I thought you were going to go fart. online. Uh, Check that one out. Enter promo code uh, to see Tom's yeah. face. Puddin' Pops. Oh. <laughs> no. Um, Rudy with the Theo and the Puddin' Rock. Um, so, so those guys were both sad, and uh, and me and Rock were talking about about how good Cosby was, and he's like, he goes, uh, Cosby was so fucking good. He goes, everyone is doing a prior impression. I'm doing it. Dave's doing it. Eddie did it. Keenan, Damon, fucking and Kevin Hart. Everyone is doing a prior impression. And no one even bothered doing a Cosby impression yeah. because they knew how good he was. Right. And then I was like, and also uh, nobody thought there was any pussy in it. Boy, were we wrong. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. How, first of all, this new you? blog that I'm writing about know, this episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I throw you and that's bus. how comedians... You know what I'm starting to realize? Like, people can't take the way comedians talk. No, no. no. They literally cannot. Like, we make that joke, and then at someone, a dummy goes, are you advocating <laughs> that Bill Cos... There was... Yeah, yeah. Y no, you but fucking dumbass. Do you even... think <laughs> surgeons talk fucking medical the whole time? Or do you no. think they go like, throw me the fucking mi whatever they call hearts? Or whatever? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. No, he. Uh, here's the thing too: is like comics. First of all, people don't realize that if you're hanging out with comics, we try to push it 
So, like, we're trying to make another comic laugh. Yeah. And people who you think would be upset, like a woman about a misogynistic joke, if she's a comic, she'll be like, that's a pretty funny joke. Well, hello. We're still, the thing I said on Charlemagne's show last week was like, uh, because I'm a uh, lieutenant of black culture. You are. Yes, I saw Uh, that on Instagram. Thank you very much. You and see the guy, Lennard. (laughs) Lennard, uh, Charlemagne. There was a new one. There was a new one. Oh, there's a new one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, But, uh, but yeah, like people think that it, it, the thing I was saying, and tell me if you agree with this, you're where I'm a comic before I'm a man or white man. Of course. And comic. that's yeah. yeah like I'm a, you're a comic before you're a woman. A thousand times because you well, as a com the comic brain is above society yeah. norms. It's above gender. It's above race. It's above all yeah. this because it, it hovers up here to unite all that stuff. And that's the me. thing that people don't understand. It's like, so if Louis says the N word. He doesn't. It's not even fucking. I like that that thing about Louis saying that in that HBO thing. People are like, uh, "This thing uh, was unsurfaced." I'm like, what? Well, it's it was been on, it was on yeah. HBO. Yeah, it was and, on HBO, and it was on YouTube for a decade. Yeah, it's, yeah, no, but that's regular people talking. And about. that's the thing they don't understand. It's like, like they, it's not even, and it's just a thing. Like, like Chris is a black. I don't. He's not. Chris and Dave aren't fucking. I don't go hello black. I go like it's a comedian. Yeah, sure. Calling it's me. Yeah, it's not course. a fucking black man. Put on Neil. Put on your black man hat. Right. Like it's just a fucking funny motherfucker. You know, like, um, my uh, my first or one of the first times I heard somebody talk about Cosby being an asshole uh, was a driver, a cab, uh, the or the the car driver, whatever, the car service guy in Indy years ago, my first time doing crackers. Yeah. This uh, driver picked an older black guy. He's like, turns around, he's like, what's up, man? And I was <laughs> like, hey. And then we're driving and he's like, so what are you doing? And I go, um, I'm doing, uh, doing stand up. He goes, stand up? I go, yeah. And he goes, uh, he goes, man, fuck Steve Harvey. <laughs> and I go, what? <laughs> off the top? Yeah, right off the top. And he's like, man, he's an asshole. And he goes, and fuck Bill Cosby too. <laughs> and I go, really? He goes, he's a piece of shit. He was a fucking asshole. When I, he went on this whole story. No idea. And I'm like, Phew. and I go, wow, all right. Well, uh, hey man, what's uh, what's Indy like? And he goes, oh, you know, murder here, murder there. <laughs> and I was like, that's your summary of this city? Mm. And that was like. That was all he gave me. The black guys, happened. black guys talking hooks. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. The average black. Did you hear Snoop announcing that hockey? Snoop no. announced a hockey game for for thirty seconds last week, Mm-mm. and there's four hooks in it. Mm. Really? It's fucking amazing. Like I've said this on uh, that the average black dude on the street is funnier than the average white middle. Uh, yeah, true. <laughs> pretty true. Like I'd put black ladies true. in that too. Of course, yeah, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, yes, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, like yeah. So the guys thought I've had cab drivers say shit. Oh yeah, like uh, I had a cab driver, black cab driver in New York one time trying to say that someone passed out, and he goes, and they get in the back, they lock up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? And the funny, I was like, oh god, I think I know what he's saying. I think too. I, I wrote I this thing it. one time Fantastic. about how who if you if you had to hear a summary of what just happened, something notable happened, and and you missed it, who would you rather hear? If you have a choice, uh, like an older white guy, mm-hmm. a older uh, or a, an older black lady, or a black guy, or something like you know. Like 100% of the time. There should be a news channel with just black <laughs> yeah. correspondent. I yeah. know. That would be such like, a good man, way. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Open every second. Man. Shit. And then Pumpkinhead right. came all in. Right. Yeah, I want to hear yeah, that. Yeah, all right. Shit. So um, how much time we got? Uh, yeah. All right. Let me see if I can get this in. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. So uh, so so Eddie fucking is is like an amazing dude. and, and uh, It's crazy got, that you've hung out with him. I know. Like, so jelly. I, I it's hug him. God damn. The first time I, the the second, all right. So the first time we went to his house, I think the first time we showed him, maybe we showed him Rick James. I think that that would be true only because I feel like I've heard a story. Dave about, talked about, yeah, about showing, him, it, showing to him. it to him. And I know, but I don't know if that was the first time, but whatever. So um, we, the second, then, then we went again, like during a snowstorm and me, Dave and Charlie went and, Dave went to smoke outside. I think Charlie went to use the bathroom. So I'm just in Eddie's kitchen in Jersey by myself eating soup. <laughs> like the, the, the chef had like left some soup. 
you know how rich people are. Yeah. Mm, and um, and uh, I'm eating soup and Eddie like comes in. You know when you like enter a room like you don't think anyone's going to be in there? Like, yeah. Like so he comes like kind of does one of those things like it, with a, wearing a robe and his wife Nicole at the time is with him. And uh, and I'm in I'm just eating soup and he's like, hey, what's up? And he goes, hey, Nicole, did you meet Neil? And I was just like, how the fuck do you know mine? Like, <laughs> It's fucking mind blowing that he even knows, and now he'll like make a point of like, oh Neil, like yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Even to hear so, him say my name in Eddie Murphy voice, yeah, of course, is insane. Just that he gets it right, <laughs> that he's not like, you yeah. guys know Philip, yeah, like, like you know uh, Neil Brenner, <laughs> yeah, like there's he knows who I am, and like yeah. he knows. Uh, I must, I introduced. Did Tom tell you where I uh, introduced him to Chris Rock? No, oh, at the store, right? Yeah, that was that was a big deal for me, honestly. Yeah, I'm sure, and I, yeah. I've had like. You know, I would say like 99% of comics, I'd be like, what's up, man? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, like, I'm not a dick. I'm just saying like, yeah. I would be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But I definitely was thrown by that. Yeah. 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 And I was like, yeah, this is Tom. Tom He's man. very nice. And Chris he was very nice. But yeah, I still, to me, because that, you know, your age has a lot to do with like, who has an impact on you. How you know old I mean? you were when, when you they did, were. Yeah. 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 So like for me, I'm a, a junior in high school when Bring the Pain comes out. So, you know, it's before, it's before stand, but it's also in the, that, you know, I'm 17 or something. Yeah. It kind of sets you up for, for life, you know, it's yeah. like, like one of those big impact. You can't hmm. get out. That's you true. will, that will, he will never break that hold over you. Never. Ever. Mm -hmm. Like no. you just can't. No, I couldn't say, I didn't say anything uh, intelligent or funny to him. I was like, you, you do good stuff. <laughs> like of course. And but it was like, he'd seen your, I mean, that's the thing. That where was like, crazy. Where, I didn't even know he'd watch because I, yeah, he's I like, you tell got a him couple. watch this shit. He goes, you got a couple on yeah. I was like, I, I was like, yeah, I, I got I got a few. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah. And yeah. then I was like, Good. You have you have a new one. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. You're funny too. Yeah. And then Thanks. Tom, you know the like the cliff on the back of the car? Yes, Tom yes. ran up the cliff. Yes. Yeah, he, was, he was so fucking jacked out. Isn't that crazy though that those people influence how you do and stand up and how you think? In yeah, comedy, totally. Like it, it the fucking funny. Especially as a thing. child, watching Eddie Murphy as a child. Which I have is when I did video of me. It's fucking I, nuts. I gotta fucking put it up. I I, I gotta find it, but I've I've seen it semi recently, so I know I have it. Of me doing stand up in at the Improv in o four o five. I weigh like sixty pounds less than I weigh now, so I look like a skinny guy, and I'm literally on stage. And I'm going like this. And I'm like gesturing and, you, and pacing. And you're just like, oh, this is like a bad Chris Rock impression. You should put that out. That's so fucking it. Did you ever yeah. see Sebastian's first spot at the store? No. It's on one of his DVDs. It is? Yeah. It's, Dude, I, I don't know if it's this. on. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if he put it on YouTube. But the funny thing is, not that different than really? what he's like right. now. It's kind of the same Dude. ideas of like. What's being with bothered the, with, yeah. the, with roof car? Roof. Well, I don't even know what the bits were about, but like, dude, uh, mine's not even hidden. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty yeah I remember too. people came up to me. Mm -hmm. uh, like, um, I remember a woman came up to me after a show and was like, I didn't know you were so urban. I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> she's like, yep, they're like, ah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> doing a Chris Rock impression. Yeah, you know, it's hard. That's hard. That's hard not to do. Yeah, who are your people that you Roseanne? Can't Yes. I mean, the thing is, once but you that'll, tell that'll, me. That'll never leave your head. Once you tell no. me that, of course, we're all doing, kind of doing somebody. It's the blue, because you're drawn to a lane, right? I forget who told you to pick me? a lane. Yeah. <laughs> you're drawn to somebody, right? It's that unconscious thing. Yeah. Where you're like, that's the archetype. And yeah. I get yeah, that person. Yeah, yeah. I get what they're saying. I, I see how they think. Yeah. I love Roseanne. I loved Eddie Murphy. I loved Richard Pryor. Yeah. Bill Hicks. Hicks, I can't, I literally can't even watch him because I will just do him for yeah. a week. Oh, like so I can't, I, I can't watch it because I will start. Because once you see it, then you can imagine them, what it was like from their point of view. Yeah. And then you, when you're on stage and then you have that point of view. Oh yeah. Then you start thinking like them and it's like. I think it's good that I never moved to New York because I 100% would have dove even deeper than I did into doing a tell for a couple oh, of Everyone did it. I mean, yeah. everyone did a tell. God. I mean, like the, the... I just... But I mean, I have best. photos from like 06, 07 where I'm wearing a black jacket and a black hat with my beard <laughs> and I'm smoking and I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, it's <laughs> the really fucking, obvious. The crazy thing is I was... this is I've known a tell since my puberty. 
my voice was changing and I modeled it after my brother in a tell. Yeah. Like my, like kind of like, well, it's, you know, how when you're like, uh, and you're kind of like, you can kind of adjust it a little bit. Sure. I modeled it after a tell of my brother. Like that's how fucking deep his, his claws are. <laughs> Like I just did it before. He's but. still so funny. He's fucking so good. Oh my funny. god, bumping mics. Yeah, so ridiculous. Great. I and you know you know how hard it is to watch stand up when yeah. you're, it's your job. No, and you're like oh man, he, um, just he turns me into a silly person. I, he turns me into that person that just discovered discovered stand up and loves it. Like when I watch yeah, him, I'm like, this yeah. I love this guy. I made my yeah. girlfriend watch it when we were in Hong Kong. I made him. I made her watch this. Half you hour. met a girl there. And made. I was gonna girlfriend. say girlfriend. Yeah, I was like, you. Got, if exciting. you're gonna make, if we're gonna make it in America, you got to know what I'm about. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, she came in, but I made her watch a tell special from, oh, the half hour from like '99 or whatever. Yeah, like it's got the fucking sixty fucking great jokes in a row skanks for the memories yes it's the audio amazing. that's the audio oh. of it. yeah um, god damn it yeah and i think like people don't even realize like how how influential he was Ugh. like it's you can't it's crazy puppies puppies pee you uppies <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, elf come on. that's my favorite one oh, yeah. you don't know as an eggnog you're not gonna like it <laughs> Elf come. <laughs> he, uh, uh, yeah. No, uh, my so father, I hate traveling. Maybe it's because when I was a kid, my father used to beat me yeah. with a globe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a fucking perfect joke. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned this girlfriend. Let's talk mm, about it. Mm. What's up with that tit situation? Yeah. <laughs> she's, uh, she's a Russian gal. What? Nice. She's in the fashion industry. Ask me what she does. She's a model. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, day fiance. Uh, uh, by the way, I have a, f- a fart joke text me those that pics, i bro. don't i don't like fart jokes but i feel uh, like <laughs> i want to write it down uh-huh. hand it to you uh-huh. you fa- i saw a clip of you farting on the air yeah yeah i regret it but yeah. why Mike. no no, no just, just. he's being a fart supremacist he I was just that his saying fart that was wasn't such, good enough it was such a meat it was fine it was it's like a, a good, good fart. intro fart it was just like yeah if you're yeah, gonna but i would christen it i would have loved to christen it with like a major fart like Do you know jordan fart. rubin yeah. Yeah. He used I don't know if he still does it. He used to record all of his farts. All of them? And he would name them before he would and then send them to you. So it would be like hush puppies. And then and they would have nothing to do with the fart. All right. Sometimes it would be like loosely tangentially, but he made a great observation about farts. It's the ultimate improv. That's true. That's you don't so know true. what's gonna come out. Yeah. You know something's coming out. He's a funny guy. I haven't he seen him in years. He is really funny, yeah. Is he um, writing? Uh, he's like, I don't know, he's doing kind of weird horror movies, I think. Okay. Wait, we got off track with his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. is she Sorry. like a 90 Day Fiance situation? <laughs> no, she... she lives in, she's lived in. I need like you love <laughs> you. I've been with pleasings. <laughs> she learned how to speak English watching South Park. Oh, so good. She's, like, she's got it. Schumer was like, oh, so she was made in the lab to please you. Uh, <laughs> model, like cool, interesting, funny. I'm Leads, so excited. Like better read than me. Really? Yeah. See, How long have you guys been together? Like four months. All right. See, yeah. that's the thing with you, Neil, is that you're very interesting. You're highly intelligent. I imagine that it's got to be hard for you to find a woman. It's now. more. Because those bitches it's, are dumb, right, Tom? Women are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's more that uh, it's not. It, it's more my guy. They have to keep up with my guy friends. Uh-huh. Do you know what I mean? Like they have to keep up with uh like the and my girl like they my all of my friends are fucking hilarious and interesting smart guys funny guys yeah they're yeah. all and the women are all yeah. smart, women are so. stupid yeah <laughs> yeah and then like you know and then the women that i'm friends with are like whitney schumer michelle wolf like Brilliant. fucking ellen yeah. like fucking funny mother funny interesting i'm not like friend friends with ellen but like yeah like like people that i talk to pretty so that's the bigger issue is like i'm and and now i'm um i just i i was i was compromising a lot and now i'm like i if you want to come into my life here's what it is Mm -hmm. it's great it's successful I, I like what I like. I know why I don't like the things I don't like. This is great. So if you want in, here's how it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And if you are not, then 
I have I'm not compromising because I'd rather be alone. The rewards of a partner are not worth the cost a lot of the time. Yeah. That's a, that's very insightful. I think that only comes for most people with time, with age. Yes. Like you sometimes you meet that rare person who has that perspective young, you're like, what the how did yeah, you Yeah, how do, the fuck did how you the do fuck that? Fuck are yeah. you like this? Yeah. But the truth is that, you know, if you are in your late thirties, early forties, you really become you you know who you are. And yeah, like to, well, the, the, I feel like a lot of life is like, am I this? Yeah. Am I that? And then finally you're just like, this, I'm this. Yeah. yeah. And then here's the thing. You are being honest about it. Yeah. Which is the best thing. And so I don't cheat. I'm not up. a piece of shit. Like, I'm not, I just don't like, and I say to my girlfriend, I'm like, so you're not mad at me? And she's like, no, why would I be mad at you? And I'm like, every girlfriend I've ever had is just mad at me all the time. But she's Russian. So cold. Did she grow up from Siberia? Oh, oh, Jesus Christ. And imagine the animals that like, that ask like, are you mad at me? <laughs> <In Siberia. laughs> no, no, I, she's like, like, I've never had a boyfriend even ask me if I if they feel course. anything. And she did one thing that was like, uh, fucked up. And I was like, all right, well, we're going to break up. And she just started crying. and was like, I'm sorry. I will never do that again. Yeah. Like, and it wasn't like even that fight. It was just like she made a scene about some dumb shit. Uh-huh. And then was like, oh, I need. She had told me she had like really bad. You PMS. know why she did that? I'll tell you. What's what. up on my Instagram headheads? I'm on a roll today because women are fucking stupid. There you, there you go. go. I that's like that why. you have that at two lengths. <laughs> that, that's the extended version. That's right. Uh-huh. Remix. Because uh, um, that's my tribe. So I'm Hungarian, but then we're Russian adjacent. It's a very harsh culture. And we yeah. don't do well with vulnerability. Uh, my parents used to resent it when waiters would call them folks. Like, hey, folks. Like, what is folks? Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. And they see kindness as weakness. There's smiling. a lot of that. Smiling. smiling. Weak. They yes. think Americans yeah. are donkeys because we're constantly like, <laughs> how are That's you? Like, so they funny. really hate it. Yeah. But you like this. Uh, is she like that with you, I'm saying? She, no, she's, she's not like cold. And sweet. And she's silly and sweet and it's okay. fun. Now, were you you were on Paul Gilmartin's uh, mental illness? Yeah, I know. I listened to your episode. This is a while ago, so I'm trying to. You came from a family of like 20 children. 10 children. Yeah, that's really crazy. It's a it lot. is really crazy. Yeah, no, you're number 10. Yeah. God damn, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, 10 kids. It's like growing up in a in a fucking like orphanage yeah. you have to get lost in a house of 10 kids have to. yeah i was lucky because as the youngest you get oh, like right. extra like everyone but number looking. six and no that, i mean five it, yeah right? they're like yeah it's it's like it's a mixed bag in terms yeah. of like who who uh not who succeeded but like who was it's more a, a generational like i'm from a generation of like I went to therapy. I take medication. I'm like, right. I think mental health is like an actual thing. Whereas the older family is like, no, nah, you don't, we don't do that. Yeah. Right. Like we're from like, you gut it out. Yeah. And you fucking you should suffer. Yeah. White always. always suffering. And that's what life that's a, that's Catholicism. Yeah. And B that's like life at large. That's what, that's what it is. Like, yeah. what are you doing? Like, what are you, what are you a fag? Like, that's the thing of like, what yeah. are you fucking taking? Care? Like, what do you like my, I've been on Zoloft or something for like 20 years. Really? And I have a brother that's constantly like, so are you going to keep taking it? <laughs> that thing that's working. That for you? thing that's working for you that like your life's half over. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm going to keep take like, but they still see it as like, I don't know if the word sin is the right word, but it's like in there. It's right. like in yeah. that. Like it's kind of like you're tinkering with God's plan yes, for this you. Wonderful suffering plan. plan. He wanted you to be anxious. And yeah. Depressed An- yes. <laughs> Anxiety, depression, yeah. panic attacks. Well, yeah. Why don't you God's... let God do his thing, bro? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's interesting. Cause I think like you said, a lot of people kind of live with a low grade suffering and that's the, norm. yeah, like a low grade depression. Yeah. And if they're older, they that... think like it's just, that's it what is. it is. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I living. love your new joke about your mom yeah <laughs> like oh, yeah. you're dry because i never because it's a it's not really like the rest of your jokes uh-huh. that i've seen yeah yeah and b i love when people are like these people are fucking maniacs yeah yeah they these parents me are and, yeah. fucking these parents <laughs> are maniacs a lot of the time true it's true um, you just realize yeah. it i mean i it's, it's not and when you have an adult relationship with them right they and the, hate it and when you when you have an adult <laughs> relationship you realize too you you start to you get that clear especially when you have kids you're like Oh, two people, just two random people just fucked and made me. Yeah. yeah and they're not, not special. Yeah. They're not anointed. 
Yeah. They're, it's just like, you see, you know, you saw someone walk by earlier. Yeah. <laughs> like that person could have been the person. Yeah. Like, and yeah. when you have that realization, you're like, this is pretty wild. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> a random lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, like, I don't, I mean, I'm cool with my mom, but yeah. there's, it's still. No, but it's still, you have tension. Yeah. That's legitimate on both your and parts. And her circumstances are fucking wild. Like my mom, you know, immigrated to this country at like 31. I mean, she yeah. probably never in a million years thought that she was going to live here. You know? Yeah. Ever. Like my mm. mom is, my mom's, my dad's one of 13. Oh my fuck. They're, his parents were Irish immigrants. Like my, his, his dad was like, uh, like elevator. Like I don't fucking, just some blue collar. My, my dad was born in 1930. Jesus. Like wow. in the like, the height of the depression and it's a boy like your dad's but, still around no no um and uh so like yeah they it's they're we're like living in outer space from from what their life is like yeah from yes. what they're, and so even so my mom actually kind of said like you gotta give it a rest with this accountability shit she didn't say that exactly but it was sort of like i was kind of taking her to task for shit and she was kind of like Look, dude, I'm fucking 84. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, She's not going to evolve. Gotta, you got to like, you just got to like, are you going to do this? Yeah. Right, right, right. You're going to stay on this just till yeah. I die? Like, what is that your plan? Like, you have to. Which is just, coming up, by the I way. I mean, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Like, trust me. Uh, she, I have a bunch of fucking jokes and she came to my show and it was like, I'm literally fuck the stool. And I'm just like, yeah. my mom's been like, I, I don't know what to. <laughs> oh, for, oh my God. I can't believe you even plugged it. So Neil is, uh. He's got a, new has a new one on Netflix, Comedians of the World, which came out uh, January 1st, I mm -hmm. believe it was. Mm -hmm. And the American comics featured on it are uh, me, Delia, Delia. Swartzen. Swartzen, and Nicole Byer. So, and then there's comics from other countries, but we don't really celebrate I mean, that. I mean, but the Americans. I can't uh, wait to watch it. We haven't watched it yet. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I like, I mean, I, 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 to me, it's, you know, when you have like a good batch. Yeah. To, I think it's a good batch. And Go it was ahead. filmed in Montreal. Yes, Montreal. Thanks for but you spelling it. M -U -N. Also have yes, other specials. Yes. You have your three mics. Yeah, which was a big hit. Yes, a lot of people you. really, yeah. really liked. Three yeah. Mics. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. Big one. That was, there big was one. like uh, that was when I stopped being Dave's buddy. Right. <laughs> it was the right. first time people were like, oh, okay, you do your own thing. Oh, okay. But you had another one before that. I had one for Comedy yeah. Central called Women and Black Dudes. Women and Black Dudes, um, which uh, made it sound like some weird white supremacy thing. It was just that's what the jokes were about. I remember. Oh. It's like being in high school and seeing like um, like watching drama or something from upperclassmen. You announced, I think, on social media, yeah, that your special's coming out. It's called Women and Black Dudes, and the Chris Rock, yeah, Rock posted, said like, was like, I thought you had a chance, like, <laughs> but that's a because he's like, don't title it yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> and I was really? like, I don't look, man, I, I called it that, but for some reason, I feel like I'm reading a text. I was like, <gasps> he, oh, you know? it's he's the meanest funniest motherfucker yeah. in the world like yeah he said the meanest thing anyone's ever said and it's so fucking again this is like you couldn't be a part of it this would hurt your feelings too much normal person right so at the three mics premiere whatever like the broadway theater opening thing or off broadway um uh, 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 um Chappelle in the audience it was uh John Legend and Chrissy Teigen. John was the producer. They, I, they're just my they, friends. I love them. Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 Seth Meyers, Trevor Noah. I mean, like, all right, I'm getting a little tight. Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle. Oh, my Jesus. God. So, like, Queen Fuck. Chrissy uh, posted that uh, she watched my special the other day. Oh, did she? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah she did. did she say anything nice She about? said oh, she was laughing uh, a lot. She Are we going to talk about the Brad Pitt thing? The Brad Pitt thing? Do you know about the Brad Pitt thing? No. Yeah, you do. I heard Adam told you. Adam told you that oh. Brad Pitt likes you. How do you know that? Because I, it wasn't just you, Dick Face. It was me. I, you. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. I'm asking. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the story. How did you hear? Well, you know the story. I don't, I don't know, know the, the rest story. of the story. I don't. All I know is what you know. The, uh, Brad Pitt said that his favorite comics right now are me, Tom, oh, I didn't Jim know you Jeffries, made the list. and Bill Burr. Oh, there I did, you go. I did, see, that's the thing. So when you say the Brad Pitt thing, I'm like. 
Brad Pitt thing, and then he didn't tell me anybody else. Oh, yeah. So he just goes, Brad Pitt said he. Do you feel like fan. less important now because you're one of four? Well, top you, here's people? the thing: you want to know who the four are. Yeah, I and stand by all had, those four. Those four, I'm like, that's good. That's a good. Yeah. It's yeah. a good list. Like yeah. he's got good taste. If he, had, if, if he had said a few other names, I might be like, well, fuck. Brad yeah, Pitt. no, right. I mean, so, trust me, that happened. People go, I love Chappelle Show. <laughs> yeah. And Battle Bots. <laughs> right. Like, all right, that's man. Um, no, that's a good list. Uh, so at the premiere. Uh, me and Dave and Chris get our picture taken in front of the step and repeat. Um, we walk away and the publicist goes, Neil, the uh, photographers want a picture of you by yourself. And Rock looks at me and goes, for the first time in your life. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, uh, it's uh, like, you're so mean, yeah. but also, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. It's that funny. Is funny. It is funny. That's funny. And it's like, also funny considering the company, right? I mean, it's yeah, yeah, it's great. It's all works, but it's very like you, you. That would make a that could make you cry. Yeah, in yeah. The wrong hands. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, but yeah, no, I understand. Like my sisters. <laughs> <I'd be> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. like yeah, that wouldn't they wouldn't enjoy that. Yeah, uh, especially someone you respect. Um, so wait, we didn't. I, I didn't even tell you the rest. We, we obviously did not go through all this correctly, but. Just for you asked me about who is Randy, and I just yeah, I just realized Jesus. that's good. I'm glad you returned that? it because yeah. I was thinking so, about it. So who is Randy? Um, Real Sports has done a lot of features on CTE yeah. and the uh, um, how football really does serious brain damage. Yep. One of the early times they profiled it, they got a group of guys together who were all suffering from it with their spouses, and the interviewer talked to uh, John Mackey, Hall of Fame tight end for the Baltimore Colts. And his wife. And at the time, uh, Mackie, he's got on his cowboy hat, sunglasses, and he is pretty, like, pretty far along. He, you know, he can't be alone and stuff. And, and she's talking to the interviewer like, I am to you. He's sitting right next to her, just kind of like looking around, like not really keyed into the conversation. So he's like, what's day like? He's, she's like, well, he's always like, when are we going to go? Like, we're about to go somewhere. Yeah. She goes, I've had to make up things to placate him so i just tell him that the uh like when he says that i just go well the car's in the shop right now and i tell him that there's a a mechanic a made-up mechanic named randy who is working on it and then it just kind of satisfies him for a while and then the interviewer tries to get in on it and he's like uh john um is is your is randy working on your car right now is, is that what he's doing and and john Mackey goes Who's Randy? That's it. Yeah, great. That's, That's it. it. Totally worth it. And uh, because what happened was, again, uh, with that one, Sickler and I used to just like talk to each other on the phone and be like, who is Randy? And just say it back and forth. Yeah. Threw it in there. Yep. Um, the I Real Sports, one of the greatest shows ever. Yeah. I don't like the handicap stories. Oh, I don't like. I don't off. like. Any I gotta be really honest. I either. like. I, I love the. I love the 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 investigative stuff. I yeah, love, yeah. I love CT because it's investigative. Yeah. I don't like scandals the, are, are scandals good. are great. FIFA drug test when all, they do like they all... they do Iron Man. He carries him during no, the Iron I, I Man. I'm like I one. can't. Mm, I was... I like. I'm sorry. ESPN I don't does those like yeah E60 too? does a shit load. You know, we call that white bummers. Yeah. Yeah. White, white people, people bummers. love being bummed out, which yep. is why they like really serious movies and they Cancer always movies, give awards yep. to fucking yep. bummer yep. shit. Like yep. why do white people love bummer stories? Well, you know, because it's there's novelty to it because we have such nice lives yeah that ah, we need to it's the same reason we like we like, it's like uh, you're peeking into a shitty yeah life. it's you're the like, same reason that. no you're for like, real it's like great. It's, yeah. it's tourism so it's like yeah. they same reason they like hip-hop it's like wait what right. yeah um he did now what the fella said what right. um uh it's gonna make he, her pussy trip he, okay <laughs> boy oh boy uh same reason we do uh extreme sports like Parkour. I've been doing a joke about parkour. What a nightmare Black that is. Black dudes just trying to walk I safely. I can be right. in a hotel. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. From place right, to place. Right, right. White kids are doing flips off building. Like, white right. black guys can't run up walls. Yeah. And the right. cops be like, yeah. right. fantastic. Cool. Yeah. Good You're going to jump, jump one. off of this yeah. parking garage? What? That's great. All right. That's great. Fantastic. <laughs> I've been in hotels, like, in the morning when you're going to check out in, like, 20 minutes and just put on, like, turn on the TV land on ESPN and they'll be like, he just wanted to meet 
J.J. <laughs> Watt, you know? And you're yeah. like, oh, what the fuck? And like five minute piece on a kid that wants to meet his hero and I'll fucking ball on the edge of the bed and then I'll be like, I gotta get the fuck out of here, man. Like, yeah. I gotta get out of this. But I can't watch that shit. Yeah. It's just too much. It's also, there's something... Hold on, we need to stop okay. for a minute, One Blue moment. Band. What's going on? I don't know. Is it that complicated? What? What you just Stupid did there? fucking bitch. God. This shit should be easy! You're dumb. Okay. <laughs> fucking hate myself. Uh, <laughs> you know what you're doing? You, you, to quote Jay-Z, you, t- you made it a hot line. You take a hotline, you make it a hot song. There you go, man. Yeah. Go for you it. You know what I mean? Yeah, if yeah. they, if people come at you, say, you know, you made it a hotline, I made it a hot song. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Damn. Fuck you gonna, you know what, what I mean? Gonna do about it, man? What the fuck are you even talking? What are we even talking? Do you know Jay Z? I worked with him last year on a, uh, uh, for his rec for his album, uh, the four 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 album with the OJ song and all that stuff. I were I made like a documentary mm-hmm. about kind of just black dudes. Yeah. And uh, like Neil's the guy. Yeah, I don't. Uh, they wanted. Uh, I was low on the list, but like, yeah, I'm on the list. So, uh, so he played me the album in his studio, and I don't know if you've ever been uh, to JJ's studio or any hip hop studio. Uh, no, I don't think. No, so, he's no. a J. Um, he any hip hop studio. It is so fucking loud that it's <laughs> like, guys. Do you kind of want to go, guys? Like, you can't... Eardrums, like, guys. Like, I'm not... Come on. That's how loud they play it? They play... Yes. And I've been in... I've been in ones where I had to leave. Like, where I'm just like, oh, I'm not going to do this. I've covered my... Like, I'll just do whatever. And uh, and I made him turn it down. You did? Yeah. Can you turn that down a little bit? Yeah. Wow. It's just too loud. Were, like, you, imbi- were you afraid? No, because it's just like... Cracker ass ears. Yeah, yeah, like I like, couldn't... What do you call you? The Dutchman? The the Dutchman. Dutchman's got (laughs) hearing. The Dutchman came and yeah. Why Dutch? Um, And uh, played the record (laughs) and then I like, uh, and then. So he plays it for you. Played me the record and then it was always very vague. And then basically I ended up like interviewing a bunch of uh black dudes about the themes of the record so it was, but it was like i interviewed him about maturing and yeah growing, maturity yeah. and like and and cheating yeah, and yeah. all that shit so interviewed jay interviewed will smith interviewed rock interviewed uh mahersha ali um i would call that top-notch blacks the yes the the tops the yes. top blacks uh oh, wow. and uh it was it was great. Like, but it's only on title. So yeah, I think there's like a shitty version on YouTube. Did you even consider for a second doing a joke where like the album ends and you're like, can I be honest? This is some bullshit. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. It's great. Um, uh, he did, he played me the, the OJ song and I was like, I can't wait to see you do that on carpool karaoke. <laughs> That's pretty like, funny. cause he just says the N word over and over. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I know him a little bit, but like yeah. it was, that was like a professional thing. Like, that is was there more professional thing. a super famous, talented black superstar like type person who you haven't met? That's really the game. I feel like you know them all. R. Mm-hmm. Kelly? Did you meet R. Kelly? No. Mm-hmm. But I, I, you know what's funny about that R. Kelly documentary is that yeah, all of it. It's hilarious. Like, uh, most of it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Um, is uh, every even the women that he like abused, like I, he locked her in a safe. Crying, so, motherfucker. Yeah. For for four days, they all say he sang like an angel. <laughs> every single really? one of them said they sang. Every single one of them, they, everyone said the same thing. Sang like an angel. One couldn't read well. Right. Crazy. Every single part. They people that didn't need to say I don't couldn't know read well. They would the, keep it in the doc hmm. or not. I haven't watched it. We we have it, but I haven't watched it. Um, but I remember reading the Chicago Sun Times. He's like the big writer that yeah. did the expose a few years ago. And it always stuck with me. They said that he was known to be, to go long periods of time unbathed uh, and unkempt. And really? he would show up with like stained, you know, sweatpants and like just matted hair and stunk. And like, that's how he would go out like that all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's Wild. almost like hmm. uh handicapping yourself like you just get so much right you're so attracted to women that you're like you know what let me yep. see if i'm not gonna I, wipe my ass what <laughs> see what happens. let's see what happens i still yeah. i still get i'll get four numbers yeah, yeah. um yeah. he's building his must i thought of something watching the r kelly documentary which is so he's illiterate 
and he's the victim of sexual molestation at a young age. There you go. Mm-hmm. So in essence, he is precious. God. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Am I wrong? Is he not precious? I mean, the booth liked it. <laughs> He's precious. Uh, yeah. I true. couldn't do that on the Breakfast Club. No. 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 You but know what? he is. It's the same. He's it's a, a similar sick story. Person. Yeah. He's a six, sick yeah. person yeah. who just had a talent that a he could do talent. it to yes. other people. Like yeah. Yeah. he. But he is. Make no mistake. And that's what Erica Badu got in trouble for. Saying for she has empathy for him and Bill Cosby. It's like. She's right. Right. You should have empathy for this person. Not for their he's actions. He's a fucking monster. But for what they... And yeah. he's a sociopath and he hurt hundreds of people. But he... No one invented... Someone at some point invented mol- molesting kids. Yeah. But everyone since then, for the most part, had it done to them and then they did it. Yeah. Like, and it's like... It's, it's fucking sad and sick, but like you feel bad. I feel bad for the person. Up yeah. and, I mean, not like I actually feel bad for R. Kelly, but no. And it's interesting but too, he's precious to me because now um, it's now that it's social media exists and we're discovering the truth about celebrities lives, but there's a lot of pieces of shit that have been really talented people. At I'm the not going to say it's almost all. <laughs> Right, right. But it's fucking pretty close. Yeah. Like, there's a Michael Jackson documentary coming out that's right. gonna like that's gonna hurt hit like that's gonna be at Sundance. Have you seen it? No, no. but it's gonna be at Sundance, and it's gonna be like it'll be. Isn't that one damning of the ones? And and uh, like it'll probably be tantamount to R. Kelly's thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how are we not? Where people are still on the fence about MJ? Like, n- no, they it, weren't. And then, but time passed, and there were no new allegations, and. What you hear, if the adamant if, if, defenses, if the choices, t- take a moral inventory or listen to fucking Thriller, right? I, I'm gonna listen to Thriller every time, <laughs> right? Every off the time. wall too. Off the uh, wall. Fucking off. Maybe That's more. Yeah. Maybe more. Yeah. Cause yeah. May, yeah. Um. Because I, you know, I love disco. Uh. But like. Yeah, so time passes and people go, that's what you remember. You remember the fucking... Right. Showbiz is full of fucking monsters. Scumbags. Yeah. Like, Lots th- there aren't them. very many in comedy anymore. Like, people that we all know is like a real fucking piece real of garbage, garbage that's guy, like... Yeah. The top people are not... Burr's not garbage, Dave, Chris. No. Like, these guys yeah. are not garbage. Like, Jim, Jeffries... Tom Segura, Neil Brennan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, hello, am I yeah, chop liver here? Um, Thank you. I mean, according to Brad Pitt. Um, <laughs> We're doing Brad's list only. <laughs> Brad's list oh, only. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, we looked in the list. <laughs> oh, sweetie. <laughs> oh, uh, please. Can have you a stand party. over here? <laughs> we should have like a Brad We should party. have a party, a Brad Just party. Just us. Um, Guys, it's so rude. So, uh, who else saw it? Jim and who? Bill Burr. Oh, uh, great list. Yeah, well, that great, makes sense. Great list. Um, so, uh, yeah, but Michelle Biz is like... I mean, littered with fucking monsters. Elvis Presley. Elvis uh, Presley. Mary's Priscilla Presley was 15, 15 years old. Jerry, Jerry Lee Lewis, Lewis fucks yes. his cousin who's 13. Come on, yes. Polanski. Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski. Well, that's the thing where people are like, are you uh, worried about the, where, do you feel bad about the R. Kelly thing? It's like, Rick James was a convicted sex offender. Yeah. So, I, I, like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> he had been locked up for... Uh, 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 holding a woman captive and burning her with a crack pipe. Jesus, it's atrocious. Yeah, but that sketch is fucking hilarious. Yeah, like, have you seen the sketch? Yeah, yeah. it's like <laughs> it is a hilarious. It sketch forgives what he about did. a monster, yeah. and we yeah. say at the end, Rick, you are forgiven yeah. for yeah. all of your crimes. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, showbiz month, but I think it's less and less. I, I think so. I think it's less. I think it's less like, like it used like Jesus, like that type shit, like drugging Bill Cosby, drugged crazy 60 women. I know that art that came forward 60. That's That's insane, man. It's a lot. But those women all got together and conspired. Yeah. And they're all, they're laughing their way all the way to the bank. They're making millions. They're victiming their way all the way to the bank. They've they've opened like tons of businesses and like, (laughs) like fucking the long plan. Yeah. Like houses. It's actually a really great entrepreneurial project. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I told the story on Rogan, but I had a, this was, I dated a girl in Oh, four, five, six who like beautiful mixed girl. And, uh, and she, I mentioned Bill Cosby at one point. She's like, oh, Mr. Cosby. What a good guy. And I was like, 
Hmm? You know, when a girl says something where you know she fucked with me, like, what's yeah. that now? Yeah. yeah. What? And, uh, and I was like, what? what? And she's like, oh, yeah, no, I know, I know Mr. Cosby. And I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, like one day I was on the street crying <laughs> and he came up next to me and he like said, what's the matter? And he befriended me and he took me to, uh, we went to a play one time and, um, and then, and I'm like, you know, I was trying to fuck you. Yeah. And this is in like, oh, four oh five. And she's like, no, please. Like, and then one time he, I was supposed to come to Philadelphia and I got sick, but the weird thing, he did tell me how to like style my hair and what <laughs> dress to wear. And I was like, he was trying yeah. to fuck. And she was like, no. Yep. And then all this shit comes out. And I text her, I go, what do you think of your boy? <laughs> and she's like, I think he, his wife was in on it and just all this shit. Like, yeah, then it was like all this shit of like, Oh, so all it took was a bit of like, I don't even like uh, she snapped to it and was like, Oh yeah, he was. Yeah. Why would any guy guys are not nice to women for no reason. Well, Absolutely. Here's the deal though. Under any circumstances. Is that a lot of women don't uh, myself included. You don't learn that until you're older. Like you genuinely think That's here's true. why. And here's why I had the audacity to think I was a human and that yeah you're not and you're right and that men you are not right but that's the thing is i i go into the world assuming that i have the same rights and privileges as a human fucking being yeah and then you just don't think you're like oh yeah. that guy just wants to fuck what i'm just a piece of meat i'm an object and then you learn you're just an object later right. to certain yeah. people not all men yeah but yeah you, you think the you're cool ones fuck, the cool guys. the fucking ones who like to fuck yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking well, about. Get down. That's my. But circle, that fucking sucks because you know? then you grow up and and then you learn that about dudes and now you have to be like ah oh. until you get married and that's the cool part is that it becomes a like a burqa yeah. sexually and now I become a person again once yeah. you're married especially to another comic mm. and like a guy that can kill another man right the other dudes know it and now I get to see who's cool and who's yeah but not. I feel like you'd be cool if I fucked your wife right. I mean, yeah, be pretty no, cool, we're right? into that. Yeah. I'm on the list. Yeah, man, you're <laughs> on the pit list. Bro, oh, you, that's right. You're on you the pit know list. No, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that's true. Uh, that is yeah, true. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. That it's a fucking Chappelle used to do a joke. It's he did this joke when he was like 22 or something. Yeah, maybe he, women can't sense danger until they're like 30. That's pretty true. Funny. And then they're like, maybe I shouldn't get into the van with all of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus, that's yeah. a fucking crazy good. At, yeah. Like observation end up, but, uh, Oof. but yeah, like the, the, this thing of like, guys are not nice for no guys are just not like that. Yeah. Like there's no, if a guy is being nice to you, he wants to have sex with you. I know. It's, it's true. terrible. And actually the funny thing is the flip side mm -hmm. is that. Allie is, Wong always says like, Neil, you have like all these like antique views of women. Like, like I'm like, men and women kind of aren't friends. And she's like, I'm friends with so many guys. I'm like, mm. I don't know, Allie. Like, I'm sure she is, but I don't think I'm, uh, I have like antiquarian views. Well, I think you're, I think you're mostly right. What, what happens though, as a guy is like, once you yourself get married and have children, then you're just like, oh, women are people too. And really? Is that when it happens? I think so. I thought 50 is the age where no, the like, testosterone kind of actually... dwindles and now you become a yeah, person. No, it started to go down. Yeah. And then, yeah, then I, you know, yeah, your I'm... testosterone gets to like manageable levels. You're like still a monster. You're still a monster. <laughs> but, but you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. a monster sometimes. Do you think it's testosterone that makes you monsters? Yes. Yeah. It's, Definitely. you know, that when yeah. men have children, they, their testosterone goes down when they're then... just, when they spend time around children. Cause yeah. The right. body is like, hey, you're going to do something crazy yeah. around these it kids. Goes, you can you feel it. You can feel I it. I believe it. And you become genuinely friendly to women. You I become women, essentially. Yeah. You become a woman. You become then... more like a woman than yeah. a woman becomes like a man. That's yeah. true. Yes. And then what happens to us is we wise up to the system and yes. the matrix and we're like, wait a minute. And then we... You want me to wear Spanx and we heels get like, for what? If we're just around those kids, we stay that way. But if we get away from the kids, then we're like, what am I becoming? And then you see a girl walking <laughs> down the street, you put her in your car, you, you shut the fuck up, uh -huh. and you just do something 
Well, Tom, you, okay. you like to <laughs> okay. stay. You like to remain yep. sexy in case sure. Christina dies, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. oh, we talk about this constantly. I mean, you got to keep it out a Bro, little bit. <laughs> I just had a physical. I'm I'm scoring numbers, man. He's like you're putting you're, up numbers. He's like you're looking great. You're doing great. Well, you dropped we, 63 on these motherfuckers. I'm dropping bombs uh, on these fools, man. We talk about what the second wife will be like. The Dalmatian. Wife. The Dalmatian. The Go yoga on. instructor. She's yep. 23 tops. She's like you're funny. I don't yeah. want to bother you. you Agreeable. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. ask too many questions. Yeah. Doesn't want to see bank account stuff. By the way, gives that's me my blowies. The dream. Yeah. yeah, that's the dream wife. Yeah, yeah. I mean honestly, like <laughs> uh, when women are for like, you. why don't? No, not just for me. <laughs> it's no, it's it's dream. pretty. Like why w- when people go, don't you want someone who challenges you? No. No. Don't you want to go on the treadmill at fucking eight uphill? <laughs> no. Why the fuck would I want that in my life? No, it's true. I want a fucking rubber stamp. That, yep. Yeah. You said yeah. it, mister. The narrative of like, <laughs> I want to be challenged and it's good. Uh-huh. You say it because it's your reality. So oh, you're I like, yeah, you're like, like, I like this. I say like, oh, I can't get out of this. I like articulate women because I have one. It's yeah. too late but now. You already bought the exactly. goods. Exactly. I can't be like, it fucking sucks. Right. I love <laughs> jail. Yeah. No. Jail is the shit. This is so true. And then, oh yeah. And especially now, because you have to give me half your stuff. If we split now. What? What? Oh, you didn't hear? What? You didn't hear about the prenup? <laughs> oh, you didn't hear about that? You didn't hear about that? You didn't even with look my, at With his, la- his <laughs> last night to look- what about your Russian? Is she a Dalmatian? Starting, you got some money too. You're doing all right. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk, yeah. talk about it. Yeah. Are you, so is your Russian a Dalmatian? No, no you said she's, she's smart. She's age appropriate. Yeah. She's, she's age appropriate. appropriate. Yeah. Because I was wow. dating a girl before that was like not age appropriate at all. Yeah. But, uh, nice. you know. What well, that's I gotta, exciting. That one. I got to think. So I have to play defense against her desires. Like, no, this is bad. Like, no, I'm not a cop. I'm not a fucking, I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 a career. Like, I'm not. If a girl likes me, I'm not going to be like, no, you shouldn't. See, you guys talk the big talk, but at the end of the day, mm-hmm. you like having your belly scratched and having love. Yeah, but 23-year-olds can do that. They can, but you could not tolerate a millennial girl being that's like, true. oh my God. That's true, that's true. I can't tol- tolerate that personality. No. Oh my no God. Way. Oh my God, Tom. Do you uh, did you see that? Uh, <laughs> did you see that? Uh, oh, I was at Bloomingdale's and like, I'd be like, yeah, all right. Yeah, that's true. I would be fucking annoyed. Well, that's yeah. the thing that like when I was single, like I couldn't even, I'd be like, oh, I can't talk. I would FaceTime women. If I'd met them on an app, I would literally, Smart. before we met or date, like went on a date, I'm like, I'm going to FaceTime this person because you can't, it's not the same as being in person, but like it's close. Yeah. And you can get a sense of like, oh, I don't want to spend another fucking second yeah. Smart. having to s- listen to you. I remember that taking out, I took out this one box of hair one time where it was like. Is that the most offensive thing you could call her? Do you no, think? I could probably I think go. box of hair is up there. It's up there. I mean, there's no. You think that's lot. offensive? Box of hair is so. That's First of all, it's offense. nonsense, which yeah. is, that's <laughs> part, that's why I was in there, I'm yeah. right there. Yeah. But box, I, I mean, it's just, it's so disrespectful, <laughs> that, that, but yeah. sure. it's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she was, and like, there was the kind of person, she was really pretty, and I go, um, like, what do you want to do now? You know, or like, what do you want to eat or something? And she was like, man, I don't know. What do you want to eat? I was like, okay, let's eat this. And then it was like. And like, so we're, you know, like during like the general conversation, I like, do you like music too? I guess. I was like, yeah. And we're okay. like, they act, they feel like they're being like, it's like a fucking first 48. And she like, had no, but I'm she had, asking you if you like music, yeah, you fucking yeah, but, box but of hair. But was she hot? And you she dumb no, box of hair. No opinions, you dumb fucking yeah but she must have been hot because that's all you guys care about that's why i asked her is out. she hot yeah. no, I, that, this, but this is about getting true. a phone number you yeah. get a phone number you're like it's always based on the floor model all right i want the number right then you you call the number and you set it up and you're like all right and then the exchange is like oh yeah like is- i there no sex is worth this oh yeah it was- like it's not worth like you can't after a certain age you're like i can't the rest of your body the parts of your body that's not dick mm. are like, we're not putting up with this. Well, this is how bad well, this was. that's interesting. This, I was all dick when this happened. This was like, I'm like 22. Yeah. And I still was like, no. 
Yeah. No way. It's too much work. Yeah. Yeah, it's but you were a lot of work. And I'm too lazy. You were always yeah. a lazy, lazy hunter though. I am a 23, lazy hunter. 23, 26. <laughs> yeah. I had to kind of initiate our courtship a little bit. Yeah, I wasn't I was never no. like I just I'm you know, I had my, my one of my roommates was one of those like, you know, all systems go guys who's just like We should hang out. We should do it. Oh yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. And like we would be at a bar and he would like yeah. whoever's next to him, he was like, How are you doing tonight? You're beautiful. I feel. I'm, I'm, I feel happy now that I'm just talking. I'm like, I'm like what that. are you talking? And like, about? if yeah. that went away, he would look across the room. Boom. And then you'd see him with a different girl. And then we'd leave the club. Yeah. And he'd be with another. And he, he was just gonna take what anything. Yeah. Because he had to. Yep. I was like, look, if if it's not like in my eye line and kind of generates itself. I'm now, not putting I mean, a lot of now effort. you haven't been single in the age of me too. Forever. Now it's like, do, I'm literally saying to women like, unless. Ari, do you want to fuck me? <laughs> because oh, right. I'm not playing this like mm, yeah. mystery game. Yeah. Uh, like you put it out there that clearly. Pretty. I won't say, I, I don't think I say fuck, but yeah. like, I'm like, yeah. Are, you know. Do you want to lay in my sheets naked probably? Now, is this on an app? Do you do app dating? Um, this is before that was the back Russian. In, yeah. Did you do like the celebrity? I did, uh, yeah, I did the Raya. Okay. And I did the, uh, the, tinder and what's your lead you know, photo but, the, but the, the big one i mean i would get a lot of income i mostly i don't do any outcome but a lot of incoming on instagram interesting you get yeah. you get hit up a lot yeah really wow. what kind of girl well, what's your you know what's funny when i do the breakfast club what? uh 40 black women in my in my dms really yeah every time you're well, that you're, cool white guy but yeah, you're an like, exotic flavor on that yeah. tell me about it. they're doing yeah. this hey mm-hmm. The we'll black bummer. That. Okay. Yeah. It's the, the black opposite. Bum- <laughs> I'm going to have a black bummer experience. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so yeah, with just girls like straight up hitting on you, which That's is awesome. great. Good yeah. for you. Well, I'm sure you do too, but you just ignore he it. He doesn't right. tell me. He pretends like he doesn't. Yeah. I really, listen, I've told you, I do get hit on like once every few years by by somebody that's respectable <laughs> and then oh the rest yeah. of it's like oh i yeah. get a lot animals of fucking i get some Boxing you get and, pigs yeah, the I, ones then, the girls with the rub 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 shirts i get i get some animals pigs. and then i definitely get a lot of compliments i wouldn't say like asking me out compliments from gay dudes yes you so, do oh that's it i get very little gay foot traffic on oh, instagram i get i get something mm. and it's always a misdirect it'll be like Saw your special, man. I laughed my ass off. Doesn't hurt that you're easy on the eye. What? So <laughs> yeah, you know stuff like that. Yeah, well, it was that's really how, funny, mm, and you're cute. Yeah, that's how girls will just. Mm. It's like Burr's joke about like having Nia hit on him. Mm-hmm. Remember that joke? It's uh-uh. He did a joke about like Nia was making fun of a guy having no game, and Burr was like, "All right, hit on me. No, go, <laughs> fucking hit on me." And she went like. Hi. And he's like, is that your fucking, like, and it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, girls are bad at it. Yeah. On, yeah. Uh, on Instagram. But someone will just be like, you're really super fun and I want to. But see, I'll it. get a lunatic is what I'm saying. Yeah. Because most of the, if they're a fan of mine or something, they'll know my situation. They just don't do it. Yeah. I'll get that one just lunatic who's like, I wouldn't mind if you sat on my face and, j- and you're like, yeah, oh, you're right. like, like, like Jesus what? Christ. Or Jesus. like, you know. Yeah. I bet you know. Yeah, I'll lick your scrum. I know she won't lick your scrum. I'll lick your balls and your scrum and all the stuff. Yeah. I mean, they're cool chicks. Don't get me wrong. These are cool. These are good girls. These are good girls. (laughs) They're good girls. Stop slut shaming them. Also, you should DM them. Why don't you DM them once in a while? Keep it fucking interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh. Why don't you slide up in the DM? Is that that what this is called? Yeah, Yeah. sliding in the DM. (laughs) Stop texting me. Stop texting. Get off this app. Get on another app. Um, <laughs> yeah, we gotta tell you, we gotta actually, we gotta have oh, a okay. break with, but, uh, real quick, this is going to be you here. Um, Oh, that's right. Mommy. Neil Brennan, do you have any, uh, dates coming up? Anything, any shows you want to No, I like? really don't like, I don't, yeah, I'm but not, you, I'm you the, just did this huge tour. I just tour. did that thing. And then, and then now I'm just at the store in the West Side. And now. he has a special, another special, I should say out on Netflix. Now it's comedians of the world. You can also watch three mics on Netflix. Um, of course, if you've never seen Chappelle show, get all those DVDs or just rip still it. Still available, still guys. Available. He still has a piece. I still get a little taste, a little, oh, okay, little fun, yeah. little wet <laughs> my beak, little bit, <laughs> little, there little you go. still there. Okay, it's got to be good. Okay, Fuck! you guys are doing good. You are too blessed to be stressed. Um, mm-hmm. Excellent. 
Um, look, we have to break, uh, but I feel like we could podcast with you for hours and hours yeah. and hours. Can we do another one where you come back and we can like yeah. break down? Are we done? Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty much done. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um, but it's, it's really fun to talk to you, of man. Course. Yes. Thank and, you for coming. Um, You're so funny. It's fun. I love hanging with other guys in the pit click. I God call it. damn you guys. The, the Brad Pitt click. It's yeah, like yeah, guys yeah, yeah. Brad Pitt so likes. So rude. Finds funny. I wish I was on brad pitt's oh, no. but you know who likes me george takei so there oh nice there you go oh no that's good that's yeah, pretty good george Takei. all right well. you're a good girl um <laughs> thanks neil brennan oh yeah thank have fun. you so fun. we'll be back to talking about farts and dicks after this quick break and we are back and guess what just Gene. a couple days ago season three of Sma- gone smashing. Of gone smashing. <laughs> wow. Premiered on HBO Latino, and <laughs> and it will keep airing Sundays at 10 p.m. Even though the star of the show has season two's information on their Twitter page. Wow. But Hilarious. that is something I verified. No, the info is correct. It is. The graphic is still season two. Oh. Oh, the graphic. You're I right. I was just talking shit. I, I resent. There's no way to say this. Does you, HBO not send graphics anymore? I think it's supposed to be my publicist. Oh, okay. Here's how you can sound like a jerk <laughs> my right pub- away. Yes. My publicist. Then you're done. You're done. <laughs> you're done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of my friends are going, he's changed. Yeah. And, it's, and they never thought that until I started saying things like How do you like having a publicist? No. No? I hate all of it. Yeah. Don't you? How the yeah. fuck did it's all terrible. of this? Well, we're stand up. Something so pure. Yeah. I, and, and I'm not shitting on them specifically. I'm just saying yeah. the system. Yeah. It's rigged. I'm a big believer in it just is. like, I love my manager. And if he was here, I would say this. It's, it's sort of an outdated thing. Right. We all know each other. Who booked me on this show? Right. right. Me. Yeah. I emailed Nadav. Yep. I actually texted you and you gave yeah. me Nadav's info. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's just like it's it's not because I'm special. We're in a different world. Right. You can Twitter DM people. Was that a sound effect? That was not a sound effect. That was a real fart. Christina, that was not a real fart. Christina just farted into the fart mic. It's the fart mic. Oh my god. And you were saying something meaningful and of substance. <laughs> And she, that is. It sounds. Which pr- camera do I Krasinski to? That was the best moment of my life. Yeah. Oh my God! I'd like to thank everybody Look who made that part possible. Tears in her eyes. Hilarious. But that is how I feel I'd about like all of it. I'd like to thank Zanku Chicken <laughs> for providing the gas for that fart. It was pretty loud. <laughs> I can tell you're jealous and you're upset. Yeah. Yeah. You this had hummus like too. This is like my mom's house. <laughs> my mom, very liberal farter. Really? Good really? Oh yeah. And your dad? <laughs> I could pick out one of my dad's farts in a lineup. Really? No by way. sound or smell in the dark. Really? Oh. Like there's an acidity, there's a salt and vinegar quality. <laughs> <laughs> there's something. To the, and as to I the get older, fart. every fifteenth fart that I fart will be one of my dad's, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> That's kind of special, though, right? Special, I guess. But you don't want to become your. Do you? No. Do you want no, one of your I, farts to remind you of the? trap the meat puppet that you inherited from those two lunatics no. well, i can tell you exactly what causes that kind of fart <laughs> that's my dad that is my dad it's your dad that's really my dad oh my god <laughs> yeah that is Wait, amazing where are you from canada he's from massachusetts oh massachusetts can you at same, least have morning same. radio etiquette and and <laughs> throw up my wikipedia page what i think and just canada. and then ask me uh, what do you want us to ask you what do you want us to ask you? <laughs> what do you want to talk That's about? What do you want us to ask you? Yeah, what are you, what are your lead in? That's like, amazing. Uh, I, I actually, have you ever done a radio interview and you know what's coming next because they're going in the order? Oh, yeah. Again, yeah. these yes. are fancy people problems, I suppose, but I'm like, you're going to ask about, like my my Wikipedia page has uh, Batman. I did the Batman videos. I don't know if you know that. You don't know where the fuck I'm from, so I'm guessing you, no. know, you don't know that. Does your Wikipedia page <laughs> list no. that you were the E-Trade baby? And then it says that. Yeah. Nobody knows that. So that's when it gives away. If they go Batman, E Trade Baby, I'm like, you're yeah. reading off, which is fine. Which is fine. That's yeah. what I do when it, I have. You know what it shows you about. that they did the minimum. That's what I mean. And it's you and know. actually, yeah. I take it back. It doesn't mean you don't care. It just means like sometimes it's fun to just talk to somebody without knowing. Yeah, where they're from. I yeah. like from to Boston. discover. I'm from Boston. No, yeah. okay. I look Canadian though, don't I? You, you act. Can, you're very friendly. You you're very. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm from Canada. I'm a proud Windsor native, as Tom likes to call it. Yeah. I just thought you were one of my tribe. You're very friendly. Yeah, now it's very different. Yeah. I thought you were trying to exclude me and go, "What are you, no. Canada?" But you no, were going, "No, I'm Canadian." Are you us? Yeah. I'm touched. I thought you were yeah. one of my tribe because you're very friendly. Well, yeah. I fart like 
Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the no. farm mic's oh, here oh, when no, you're no, ready, Pete. Oh, my God. When, you, when I went to college, somebody was like, I know, some older guy. I was like, you kids are out in your dorm lighting farts on fire <laughs> and talking <laughs> shit. And we didn't know, like, the, I don't know if you remember the feeling of being a freshman in college. And yeah. I went to a weird Christian college, so we weren't you like did? drinking or anything. Yeah, I know. It's weird. But we didn't know what we were supposed to be doing. So we took some offhanded comment that some guy, like a fucking Dunkin' <laughs> Donuts said. We were like, I guess that's what we do. We lit farts on fire for the whole it's year. It's so fun. It Have you done? I mean, you did it yourself. And there's like a campfire marshmallowy kind of, there's like a, it doesn't smell terrible. Is what I'm uh, you know, want to know something? <laughs> I've never done it. You've never lit a fart? No. It it's fun. scary. It's it was, fun. I felt like I was a little intimidated by it. And one of the, my good buddies in college would do it. And so I would just watch him and be like, yeah, that's... <laughs> Well, fun to watch. It's a little bit more of a thrill. Yeah. <laughs> you it's do it you yourself. Bet. But it's very tricky because if you do it in denim, you run the risk of kind of lighting your pants on fire. Yeah, Am I you right? definitely, you, we definitely lit our pants on fire. Yeah. Oh, I would see it, you know, kind of, it would raise up towards the balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it glistens the balls. It glistens it the balls. It kisses them. Yeah. It kisses them. But uh, the real risk you run is shitting because you get everybody around and you're like, oh, I, right. got, I got a I great got, one. I got a great one. And you get spread eagle <laughs> yeah. and you light. It's very homoerotic. Yeah. And yeah. then you light. Everyone's like, yeah, light your butthole. Light. Yeah. Well, because I went to a Christian school, everything we did that was rough housing was very homoerotic. And heartbreakingly, a lot of those kids probably were gay and that was like yeah. how they got it out. It's just like the gays. Yeah, ah! it's just like the gays. What, were there um, girls at your school or was it a single There were, sex? but you couldn't go to their side of the door. What? Yeah, I, except for, a th uh, I think it was a three hour window most nights from like six to nine. Six so to you nine. had a wing, you were on the same floor, but they were yeah, wing. separated. What school was this? Did, you haven't it? heard of it. It's called Gordon College, which sounds like my parents hired a it sounds like you made wise it. old yeah. man named Gordon to teach me and for a summer. And how did you end up at Gordon? I was just scared. It was like a play of being scared. I was a church kid. And then I was like, uh, really, almost to this day, still frightened of large universities. Like guys yeah. playing ookie cookie and lacrosse yeah. sticks and like blacked out drunk. That's what I think schools are. They're not. So, but like in high yeah. school, you're like, I, you already know, like, I don't want to be near that. It was either don't go to college and yeah. just like go right into like youth ministry mm -hmm. <laughs> or go to a college where you could. My mom actually was like, you're going to miss out on like a social thing yeah more than the academics you're going to enjoy it and i did and that's where i like discovered uh with more depth that i wanted to do comedy and stuff because it was so safe yeah nobody was allowed to make fun of you oh right you know what i mean so that and was the right environment it was you. wonderful it wasn't just a big fish in a small pond it was like all nice fish you know what i mean do you fucking kind of i mean i sincerely mean this do you are you do i you know you stop? threw the fuck in there for no I know, reason I know. do you fucking do what you you're picking up on my boston do you mouth. really do you ever stop and go holy shit i have an hbo show isn't that amazing it is amazing sometimes i when i smoke pot it helps me get into that place really because unfortunately not, it's not fortunate or unfortunate it just is what it is. Sometimes you're just so busy in the thing yeah. that it's hard to get that outside of yourself perspective. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the gifts, one of our greatest plant allies that we can give us. You smoke it and you don't feel like Pete anymore. It takes you, it off the shelf. Right? Exactly. It yeah. Like or it puts it on the shelf. Right. You take all of yourself and you go like, oh, fuck. And yeah. you get in touch. You know, some people practice gratitude practice. very healthy for you. I like to talk to like 10 year old me. And tell him like yeah. we did it. We became like forget the show. You can just be like we're comedians. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. did it. Yeah. Like we can go to the comedy store tonight, and they'll be like, "Do you want to go on?" Like yeah. that's a big deal. It's true. And then the show obviously has a lot of like uh, warmth and love for stand up, and and that that is also part of my dream as well. But it's hard to get in touch with it. Then then you smoke a little weed or something, and it kind of puts you. Yeah. And you and you, it's funny. Does it's it, always funny. Is it like... Um, it's never like, oh, I did it. Right. Yeah, suck my dick. But it's like it's, talking to people in high school that right. called you the F word or whatever. You're just yeah. like... It's more like hilarious. Right. You realize these things happen... To, they have to happen to people. They're people. Yeah. Like everybody that these things happen to are yeah. some guy. Right, that's and true. And you're like, you keep waiting for someone to realize you're just some guy. We're all just some guy or some girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? How do you have this Thank wisdom you. about you? Yeah. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't uh, assume my pronoun. <laughs> yeah. I wish, I, I wish you would have spoken to a younger version of me. I know. I wish I had known He's that. He's always been like this, though. Smart. Yeah, he has. Thoughtful. He, he has, <laughs> he has, insightful. That fucking guy, Pete, he's got this wisdom that's no. like yeah. beyond his years. That's very sweet. How yeah, are you on. so, as you're, so you're, you're married, you have a kid, you have a grounded yeah. life. I love it. Did you yeah. guys struggle when you had the baby to care about anything the at baby? all? The baby? Oh. Um, oh. oh. 
I <laughs> had, to care about anything? Yeah, well, having you get the baby, sucked in. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's very like, I, you know, first of all, I realize that nobody gives a fuck about your baby. Right. Rob, sure, Rob Riggle, true. when I yeah. had my baby, maybe it was you too, pulled me aside and was just like, just so you know, no one gives a fuck about your baby. Oh so my we'll keep this brief, especially in L.A. Right, this right. is the town of special babies. Yeah, we're yeah. all special we're all babies special driving babies, yeah. our fucking Tesla Corvette yeah. convertibles, going. I'm the king. I'm the king. Yeah. Like you ever go to the fucking like a Golden Globe party or something? We weren't nominated, but I went to the HBO Golden Globe <laughs> party. It's just a room full of special people wondering if we're all special, who will look at us and make us feel special? It's right. like a nightmare. That is a that's. For me, the probably the most anxiety filled it's the idea worst. you can describe. Which what are one? you doing? An going to thing going or? to like a showbiz showbiz party party and feeling complete like I would I already know how I feel even going into like an agency meeting. Yeah. yeah. So oh, yeah. Like, it's not it's not good for me. It's not good yeah. for anybody. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. I'm sure John Hamm comes home from that party and is like, like, Why oh, am I depressed? Yeah. yeah. I know why, Ham. I know why. <laughs> right. It's because like it's a room full of look at me's. I, I think there's look yeah. at me's and there's ICUs. My wife Valerie is now I see you as a very powerful position. It uh -huh. doesn't just mean you're the audience. It means you have the quality of empathy that you can understand and appreciate someone else. Really, the look at me's are the lunatics. Right. But yeah. that's a room full of look at me's and you go home with that sort of weird hollow feeling. <laughs> and that's that, true. And that can, so then it got worse when I had the baby, or better. If it's a good thing, it got better. Yeah. And you start going like I don't, I don't really, while you can remain grateful that you're even kind of in this, this industry and it is very fun. You look at your baby and you're just like, what? Yeah. She's, she's there. She's rocking. Yeah. She doesn't know who she is. She doesn't have any goals. She's just like a, a lump of beingness having, and she's blissing out and you just want to hang out that, with her. That's right. That's right. So and what are you doing? Like, why am I like, I got to go to this party. Maybe, yeah. maybe uh, fucking Joey Tata who played Nat <laughs> yeah. on 90210 yeah. will yes, be there. Joey Tata. And he'll come. Joey will come. Not yeah. Joey. 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 I know. I know. You're will talking come about. up to me. Like I just did Ellen the other day. I went into Samuel L. Jackson's dressing room. Why? Because not because because I'm thinking he might go, hey man, I love your show. Yeah, like well, that's what you're doing, right? I also wanted just to say he's a legend and he's the greatest. But like it's 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 a bit of a. Sickness. I would try to meet Samuel Jackson too. He was right there. Did you meet him? I didn't go out of my way. Yeah, I went in there. How was and you he? know what I did? Nice. He was very sweet. It was him and two other people. Probably a stylist and and uh, maybe a publicist. Ooh, you've changed, Sammy. Mm. Uh, so I went in <laughs> and. My wife was there and my makeup person wanted to meet him as well. So we're all in there. And I just go, uh, I'm so sorry to bother you. Just want to say I'm a huge fan. You're a legend. Would you mind doing a photo with us? And he was like, sure. Do and you stay, do you still have to point out that you're also on the show or no? I didn't, I don't fuck with See, Samuel, I would, Samuel L. Well, I would say you like, you know what I do is I, Hey, uh, you're a huge legend and everything. Just, you know, I, I'm also on this show. I have a funny story about that too. No? I no. What I, what you do is you ask the producer, does he want, does he mind if I come by? Oh, you and did, they yeah. say, one of the other guests on the show wants to say hello. Typically, oh, I you, hope, you hope you hope they do. Hope, okay. But really, he doesn't care. You know what I mean? It's like no, my baby in L.A. Shit. He doesn't care. He just wants to get it done. Although he didn't have that feeling. But then I made the mistake. I took my phone out and I handed it sort of presumptuously to I think his stylist, and she looked at me like I was handing I'm not her. The one. A turd. No, she was yeah. not the one. Yeah, she was not the one. That's and I, a, I like that's a look it. we that's a look that this era only knows. Like that's if you right. were alive in these ten years, that's right. Of like that's right. Like, it's don't a give new, me that fucking. It's phone, a new man. phenomenon. <laughs> yeah. I had it open. It was ready to yeah. go. In the time it took her to go, uh -uh. <laughs> she could have done it. But she and it was like she looked like Doctor Ruth. It was like an old white woman that was just like. Mm. And did she like, do it or she no, wouldn't do it? Like the temperature, like in the it's, sixth sense, yes. when you yeah, feel a ghost, yeah, like, yeah, like, I put my hand into cold air and was just like, oh, not for you and gave it to yeah. somebody else. Yeah. But the other, the story I had about being on the same show was the first late night I did was Jimmy Fallon uh, way back before he had the tonight show, like the first one he did, which I remember my manager being like, you do it when it's a new show. They'll remember you when they're a big show. Now they fucking won't. No. <laughs> What are you crazy? What are no. you? That's not how it works, right? Pete Holmes wants to be on the show. Check the archives. Did he help us? Yeah. No, who cares? No. I'm not saying he should care. I'm saying that's right. a preposterous it logic. Is, of course. So I did it, and I was so thrilled. My first late night, and Green Day, which was one of my favorite, still is one of my favorite bands, but definitely back then was one of my favorite bands. Was the was the group, and I I did my stand up, and then they played, and I was like, I wonder, I wonder if Green Day 
Like I wanted to Sam Jackson them. Right. I wanted to see yeah. if, they, yeah. if they would say anything about yeah. my stand up. And I also just wanted to say I was a fan. That's true. But in that order. And I went back and I talked to Billy Joe and, and I just two fucking sentences talked to the bass player. And then I'm like, I guess they didn't see it. And then Trey Cool, the drummer, comes out and he's the only one that like said anything and he goes, Hey, stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Stick with it. Uh, I'd rather you have said not. See, we no. were just on the same show. Stick with it. Stick it's like with keep it. at it, keep at it, Dude, buddy. Uh, fucking uh, yeah. Colbert's heartbreaker music guy, uh, John. What's his name? Stamos. No, <laughs> his band leader, uh, uh, Colbert's band leader. Yeah. yeah, told me small piano this year. No, last year. He's like, hey, man, keep doing it. I was like, oh, my life. Like, of course. You got that's been doing I, it. What are you talking about? I've been done doing He's it. He's like, don't, yeah, don't stop, man. You got some. I was like, what? That's like when Brian Regan would, he, he sort of famously, occasionally, we all bomb a corporate show from time to time. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's just what you do. Yeah. Like, you get a corporate offer and you're just like, am I willing to feel like John Hamm at the end of the Golden Globe party for this much money? Yeah. And then you're like, okay. Um, I, I, I got to stop saying Ham. I'm having a flare up. Ham, Same. you're the king. Ham's anyway, the man. Ham's the man. I love Ham. Anyway, uh, Brian Regan did a shitty set at a corporate show because it was just terrible. And somebody afterwards came up and was like, "So, what do you do for a living?" They asked him oh what he does. God. And in that moment, if you're Brian Regan, yeah, I bet you're making at least two hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. Right. You want to be like. I just made 250k. It'd be you amazing yeah. if somebody said, like, "Wouldn't you in. want to?" Yeah, here's the I, thing that Regan would, to... would never do, but I, it would be amazing is if that person asked him that, and right then he pulled out the check for that gig. It was like, "That's what." I, if there's I ever a moment that's appropriate, you, because we know, oh God, Jesus, Zanku Chicken. You Zanku know what? Chicken, you know, I like to not, thank the sponsor the, today, Zanku Chicken. It's not the part. farting that bothers me. It's yeah. that we're doing bits, we're telling right. stories. The only time I hear Nadav fucking laugh is when you rip one. And this is the world we live in. You Jew motherfucker, you. It's just so blindsiding. It's hilarious. I know what the audience likes. Hilarious. This is what they need. Are you going to sell that microphone on eBay? We can. Eventually. But it's going to be a six-figure starting bid for sure. In Japan, you'd be able to buy a fart microphone in a vending machine. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Ramen. Use panties. <laughs> That's so fart good. Microphone. I love that. <laughs> Who farted in this? Who farted? Um, <laughs> so wait, you were saying before though, you said that you would almost tell your manager now, like, hey, dude, what, what? Oh yeah, before the first fart. Before the first fart. But it was <laughs> Sorry interesting guys, to me. listen. Why are you? You're blaming me as though I have any control over when the you fart comes. You insisted on the fart, Mike. <laughs> I did, but for good reason. People enjoy it. Nadav loves it. Nadav clearly loves it. I can, I'm sorry, Pete. I can't control when the inspiration you know, I strikes. The I watched the Dr. Apologize. Drew interview, and I seem to recall no farts. He would have been oh, able to right. tell you what's wrong with you. Yes, that's true. <laughs> like well, I know the, what's wrong. The... We had we had hummus uh, for lunch. So gross. And pickled beets. Yeah. yeah. So gross. I'm not a like no judgment, but like no judgment. Not, but you're but gross. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever somebody says no judgment before, they're it's heavy. Judgment. It's heavy. Yeah, it's just it's like heavy. no offense. No offense. Yeah, yeah. Judgment coming. Can your I way. be honest with that's you? That's okay. I'm not the type of person that usually says this. <laughs> like that. Do you not fart in front of your spouse? No, no, no. In fact, no, of course I do. Oh, okay, okay. What are you oh. crazy? Okay, just sorry. Canadian. Canadian. They have children. Canadian. Yeah, of you've seen enough do. brown and <laughs> yeah, green and. Fucking Nadav, man. Get him out of here. Yeah. He's dragging your show down. <laughs> you can't have comedians on with that audience. For farts. Like, Only get a, farts. Get a clown, for, yeah. a street performer clown from Montreal in the booth. Yes. <laughs> and then if I do, I'm like, what? <laughs> we need someone with better humor, a better sense of humor than him. Than Blue Band. No. Get yes. some, get he knows that. what's good. Does he? <laughs> no. I don't remember what I was saying about managers. You but, just said. That, oh, like, I was saying. You're like at this point, it feels antiquated. That you're like, I, I mean, the idea of needing a guy who can plug you into things. It's, it's a. Be- it's actually a beautiful thing. We yeah. can frame it negatively and say managers are irrelevant. I actually really love my manager. I like yeah. working with my manager. Long time you've been together? Yeah, over a decade. So I'm wow. gonna I'm gonna yeah. stay with my manager. I really love my manager. That being said, so taking my manager out of it, it's not. You can, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can chance the rapper this shit. 
Yeah. Like you're at the store, you're at the store. Dalia's at the store. You know what I mean? If you're getting even those early guys that get like the open spots, like yeah. so newer guys still have access to the same people. That's true. Be funny. Don't be a dick. Talk to people that you could get on some shows without someone being like, look, I know like who the fuck, who, who cares? That's it's true. a different world. Yeah. And the, what happens is that's what they sell, right? They sell the access. I mean, essentially. Right. And then the access sort of comes in, in parts like connected to yeah. being really funny. Right. That's why Ray Romano wrote this intro to a book that I love. Uh, the intro. The book was called How to Be a Working Comic. Did you guys read that? No. I probably did. I read all that He stuff. wrote a book called How to Be a Working Comic. No, 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 no. He wrote the, he intro. Wrote the oh, intro. He wrote the intro. Old gas he was listening. <laughs> <laughs> I was paying attention. <laughs> and, oh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to be all right. Jesus. Oh, so wait, so what was it? What are you saying? This is the, the intro? cough mic. I know. He brought his toddler aids in. Ugh. Go ahead. Oh my God. God. He said uh, it's the best anti-intro. It's like the intro that negates the need to read the book. Mm -hmm. He's basically saying in code, like, don't read this book. Just right. be funny. Like, right. And like what, what Burr told me when I was starting out, which was really helpful, was like, don't be a dick and be funny. Those two things together. Those are the two Really things. great combo. That's really, true. really great combo. That's true. If you want to like, you know, what do you, need, what do you need to do these days? Get a couple people to like you and then yeah. they help you. If I, if I had a new comic that I loved, you'd be like, Tom, check this guy out, whether you did or not, but you do it five times, one of them, it might work. That's true. And that's one of the things, I'm not just saying this to promote the show. It's one of the things Scratching is about. We Smashing. Yeah. On Showtime. <laughs> smashing on Showtime. That we get a lot of, sometimes I get shit where people are like, do comics help each other? Like they call bullshit on the idea that comics help each other. And I'm like, if you're a comic and the people around you aren't helpful or at least open people, mm -hmm. just hit, you're hanging out with the wrong ones. Very good. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. Yeah. I understand that that might be your reality. They all want to fucking see me fail. One guy like <laughs> Not a burned good group. my premises. Yeah. One guy heckled me. He was pretending he was drunk in the audience. I was like, bad group. Yeah. You got to fucking, the people around you, that's your, so there's your class. That's like the, yeah. the group that you started with. But then there's these microclimates inside. I'm mixing mm -hmm. metaphors. But you know what I mean? And with me, it was a bunch of sweetie patities. It was me and Kumail and Mulaney. We were supportive and Good kind guys. to it. Good people. And, but not only that, when like, the premise of the show, of Crashing, is based on a real time in your life. <clears throat> and weren't some comics obviously really good to you? Like, yes. To inspire the, like, I mean, the first people that were ahead of you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and you know, that's that that spirit continues. I still see that when when my wife in real life. So Christian college going to be a youth pastor, end up getting married when I was 22. My wife leaves me when I was 28. When people call me a cuck online, I'm like, literally true. <laughs> I am a cuckold. <laughs> like if you, my wife left me, I'm a cuck. Really? That's what a cuck that's is. What it is. That, that's like literally. That's what a cuckold is. Yeah. Back in the old days, you'd ride a big wheel bicycle. You'd, <laughs> you'd have a, a, a yeah. very light styrofoam hat uh, and you'd go, yeah. she did leaves you hear? You. Mikey's a cuckold. She leaves you hat. <laughs> now it's like a, you know, a mean thing. You're 28 at the time? I was 28. And it, she's 20. the only person I'd ever had sex with. The only person Aww. I'd ever dated. Yeah. And I married her. Very standard. Because I wasn't going to have sex with somebody and not marry them. Yeah. We did have sex before marriage. But then we stopped. Ooh. That's the most Christian thing God. I could tell you. Oh, you stopped like, and then stopped. until you waited until you got married. And then we were like, let's yeah. pick it up again when we get Did married. Did that feel okay to you? Did that feel right? You know. Or do you still feel guilty though? I didn't feel that bad about it. I, I felt like that was kind of the best of both worlds. There yeah. were a lot of people that were like dry humping is huge in the Christian community. I well bet. into your 20s. I bet. Moist humping. Uh, okay. That's where you dry hump naked as long as the... Wait, you dry hump naked. naked. So it's, a, it's moist. Wow. Yeah, it's and moist. But you don't put it anything in anywhere. As long as the hot dog doesn't get enveloped by the bun entirely, you're still a virgin. <laughs> what? And then there were the Christians that would have what do you call anal that? sex. Uh, moist hump. <laughs> moist. <laughs> I, I call it that. I don't know so anybody else. you just else. rub the outside of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. We were all... Just don't slip it in. There's never been a group hornier than Christians. And oh, I, I would argue that Christians God. have some of the best sex... <laughs> of any group is because we think we're going to hell for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's romantic. That's intense. Right. It's, like, it's like a romance novel where it's like, I will risk the flames it's of Hades for, for this titty And when fuck. you finally <laughs> get away exciting. with it, oh my God. When you feel like it's over and you got away with it, yeah. the rush, the adrenaline. No, I would wow. I would wager that we're having some pretty good sex. Yeah, I would Especially agree the, with that, that early guilty sex. <laughs> oh yeah. my yeah. God. <laughs> So then I married her and then she left me and then that's where crashing sort of picks up. Right. Is that like, I, and I really did kind of fall into stand up. I was doing stand up. This is in real life. Yeah. I was doing stand up, but you got way more serious about it 
after I, I needed the community. I needed the friends. And Mulaney and Kroll uh, were like really sweet, dear people to me, TJ. Really, really Kumail. And you're, but you're like new then when this is happening. We exaggerated how new I am for crashing to make it better. Uh-huh. I was a little bit more established little by the time okay. she had left me. I had been on TV and stuff. You had. But that's not like a great. What, what did happen was I wasn't really making a ton of money. And then she and I split. Right, because we did NACA. Did you guys do NACA? No, but no, I, I remember. Like, like I remember five trying years. to, you know. I yeah. was submitting too. I used yeah. to submit and not get in and all that stuff. People so used to talk about it like if you go, your whole life. Will yeah, change, it's know? crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Funny how in showbiz sometimes you look back on things that would have been the biggest break of your life, and you're like, that sounds like torture. Yeah, horrible. And they're like, you can do 28 <laughs> schools in Iowa <laughs> tomorrow and yeah. we'll string them together so you're on the yeah. road for six months Yeah, oh. and you'll come back with 5,800,000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, now I would be like, that's that's a death sentence. I can't well, live in a Holiday Inn Express. No, now. that and you don't do any... You need to be any, making relevant shit. What's yeah, up? and don't do any of your material that you normally do. Like, you can't be dirty. That's right. You can't do anything Luckily, I would Political, sexual. I, I didn't have anything dirty, political, or sexual. Oh, so right. I was You're perfect. Not. Were you? I was was your household the super Christian then? Is, like growing up? I took a, I took it harder than my parents did. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's my, unique. My father to this day ends phone calls with me by saying, "Keep in touch with yourself, and uh, don't let your meat loaf." He loves saying those two phrases, which wow. are both like jerk off. Be sure yeah. to yeah. make sure you're having lots of sex or with something. yourself. But it always asked me if I had sunk the Bismarck yet, which is a submarine in World War II, which means have sex. Uh-huh. So they were oh. surprisingly normal. Yeah, but sure. when I went to church, like grownups in, in khakis with keys and wallets yeah. told me that you'd go to hell. And I was like, guys, you got to shut the fuck up and listen to Dan over here. Like, I just believed grownups. I was like, hey, he just said he knows the secrets of the universe. Why your, would he lie? And you your know? parents were like, no, it's not that serious. Well, th- I was... I got more of that at church. You know what I mean? You didn't talk about it. (laughs) And they went. You know what I mean? It's like we all went, but I listened. Yeah, but that's interesting. Like grownups know how to go to church and be like, yeah, Yeah. you know, you say that when you're there. But kids are like, no, these grownups and the nice sweet grown-ups you know yes. what i mean right. my household was pretty tumultuous not like horrible but your shit is your shit my parents didn't like each other and they're fighting a lot and stuff so then you go to church and like the nicest grown-ups you know like these new like father figures and mother figures are like wearing nice suits and giving you cookies and then they're just like hey you know uh don't you want to go to heaven and you're like yeah so like i i the you know if it's a hook the hook was put in me way deeper my brother was older so he was just like, he was already having sex and doing drugs and stuff. And he was just oh, like, oh, really? Oof, this fucking sex. So like, it just like took to me. Was he like, Pete, what the fuck is wrong with you? I w- he kind of regrets that actually. Because oh. on Crashing, like my character talks about real things like worrying that Jesus was going to come back. Because, you know, a Christian belief is that Jesus is coming back at some point, the second coming. And I used to worry that Jesus would return while I was masturbating, which obviously is funny. But it's not really funny. If you think about it, it's not really funny. Mm -hmm. Like you're masturbating. So you have this like irrepressible urge. And it's totally normal. Not only are you kind of like guilty about it, but you're also worried that Jesus might come out on a golden sheep, like the clouds part. And he's just like, "I'm, I'm here to take you home. What are you? What are you doing? You yeah. know, like, and you and go like, to hell. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I think that's really funny because I've made my peace with that. Yeah. But my brother will watch Crashing and he'll call me and he'll be like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, feel badly. Like, he feels like yeah. I was abused and he was just like, I didn't know my little brother was in the bedroom next door, like thinking he was scared going to hell. that he no. scares her baits and yeah. goes to hell. But I actually Rup, think it's. I, rup, <laughs> rup. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I actually think it's really funny now yeah. I, i've had enough distance to be like to be masturbating and looking at the clouds so like just give me five minutes yeah <laughs> king of kings Aww. yeah i've never been and he always did jesus a lot you know <laughs> well it's a scary idea yeah. you know it, de- it depends on how he's and when, se- when sex and just doesn't go well with it like a you know pretty christian upbringing like you know, if you, i had pretty catholic parents and yeah you know you start to definitely feel like this is a bad thing Sexual thoughts, sexual yeah. feelings, my father sexual was, acts. My mom and my dad were Catholic, and they gave me a little bit of that Catholic guilt. Yeah. I think that's why, I, I'm, I'm not to say I'm grateful for it, but like, it almost makes us funnier. That's one of the things that we deal with yeah. on, on Crashing as well, is like, Artie, obviously, Artie is like, he's got a lot of demons, and he's so funny. Yeah, he's so funny. And like, we had a line, we ended up cutting it, but he was like, he was like, now you're my wife left me funny. 
Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Richard Pryor was I was raised in a brothel in Peoria, yeah, funny. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's not to say that we crave or ask for suffering, but it is interesting that stand up is one of the fortunate professions going back to that gratitude yeah. that you can alchemize it a little bit. Mm -hmm. We take that weird thing. I'm, I'm jerking off and I'm worried that Jesus, like to the point of tears, like I'm worried that Jesus is going to catch me jerking up. Yeah. Then you use it to make an HBO show. That's fucking beautiful. It's pretty awesome. That's yeah. redemption. Yes. It's a redeeming moment. And that's also like the highest mm. form of that suffering, tur turning it into a piece of that's art. Exactly that's what my right. therapist yeah. says. You sublimate all the suffering into, you, we could be doing drugs or, you know, gambling or prostituting, but instead we tell fart jokes or yeah. fart into a microphone You're right. and You're make right. millions yeah. of people happy. You could, you could, and a lot of us do, and my heart breaks, is you can fold into yourself. Yeah. We're all in this together, and yeah. that's one of the reasons the show is called Crashing, not to make this too after school especially. I'm just saying the idea of crashing is if you're trying to be a comedian or doing anything, that's, yeah. that's different or interesting or in your heart to do. It's a dream. Yeah. If it sucks, Marina Franklin says this to my character in the first season. She goes, if it sucks, that's how you know you're doing it right. That's why we tell the right. story about NACA trying to book colleges. That's why we tell right. the story about the doing suffering. warm up or, or barking, handing out flyers. Yeah. Because I want every comedian out there to watch it and go, oh, good. Because when I met, like, I would be barking and fucking Dimitri Martin would come by and be like, I barked for the Boston too. And you're just like, it might as well have been cocaine. Yeah. He yeah. might as well have given me cocaine. That's what it did. Because I was just like, my feet weren't touching the ground for the rest of the day. When Jim Gaffigan told me, I started the Boston, and that place still a shithole? And you're like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's kind of good. You want to start where no one's going to see you anyway. And yeah. you're just like, oh, fuck yeah. You just know? that little moment. Yeah. Just a little moment of, of grace. Yeah. And, that, yeah. and that sort of stuff would happen all the time. And that's kind of one of the things. Obviously, we want the show to be super funny and interesting. But there yeah. is something in there that's hopeful that, and it doesn't have to be a comedian. I, I think comedian is a great catch all for like a, a dream because it just means you want who you are to yeah. be accepted. Yeah. Architects also want their thoughts to be yeah, yeah. accepted, but we have the added benefit that we can be really funny. That's true. By the way, speaking of uh, the show and, and uh, poor Artie, everybody <laughs> always thinking about him and wondering is do you know yeah. anything about him is he okay i don't right know now? i mean i saw the photos of his, of his nose and i would yeah. say this if he was here you know we're obviously we're show brothers and yeah. i love the guy so, but i was watching it last night and i was like man we thought his nose was bad on the on the show uh -huh. and then it unfortunately it got worse but is he in rehab right now or in jail or i something? think he got out of rehab yeah and he, apparently he's not he's not on heroin that's that's what that's i've good. heard is that i think he's passing his PP test. I'm not really the authority. No, no, no. I just had a quick like thought. No, it, I, I don't yeah. mind talking about it. Yeah. I just want mm -hmm. to be clear. Anyone listening, this is not like from the source. Right, right, right. Uh, it's not. We don't. When I do talk to Artie, we don't talk. It's very hard to talk yeah. about that stuff. We you can you talk about it without talking about it. You're like Artie, please. Uh, we love you. Please take yeah. care of yourself. And He's he beloved. He's so beloved by. It's crazy. Whole community, really. I and fans, yeah. I can't. Whenever we tweet a preview or something uh, of crashing, like a 15 second thing, and he's in it. He's in the 15 second preview. Yeah. All my Twitter is just clogged with these loyal fans that are just like, where's Adi? More Adi. Yeah. 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 More fucking Adi. Yeah. The show sucks except for Adi. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, Thanks. They love oh, they saying love that. Yeah. They love him. And, and, and it's hard not to love him, but he's so, so, so funny. He riffs so many of the great things he said. I think one of the reasons the show got picked up was because Artie riffed this whole monologue in the scene where he's just talking about struggling with addiction and kind of like what we were talking about, like mad TV and getting there, but feeling empty and all that sort of Golden Globe feeling yep. and going to, to drugs and really struggling. I, oh, I mean, yeah. it's it's so when I had I had Dr. Drew, you guys had Dr. Drew on a, a couple times. Mm -hmm. I, I told him. I've never been more sure in my life than addiction. That addiction is a disease. You know what I mean? It's, it's not, yeah. I know, I, I know you know that, but then you're like, Oh, nobody wants to stop more than Artie. Yeah. He's got it. Yeah. He wants it, yeah, but it's not here. Right. It, it's yeah. something going on. It's going on inside of him. Yeah. Which sucks. Um, how well versed because you, you, you know, you took, took to the Christian upbringing and then you, you went to a Christian college. How well versed are you? in you know the bible and christianity and are you I, w I you know that's interesting compared to some not not great compared to most pretty great. pretty great so <laughs> i wanted to get your take on these um christian jokes 
You know, it just tell me. Heart. This is breaking my heart. <laughs> I just want to know. Can whether, I? I, wi- I will. You, yes. Well, you laugh because some. You know, how inside know, like, are these references? How inside? Like whether would this be funny to college oh, age people? I can help out. Yeah. <laughs> Season three of Crashing yeah. is about my character joining the Christian comedy tour, which oh is something God. that oh, I've done. Oh. You did? Christian comedy show. Stop it. And yeah, yeah, it's an interesting mark. I one really? time got in trouble for saying sob. Which isn't a swear; it's an acronym representing for a swear. A swear. Yeah. I got represented for a uh, represented. I got reprimanded, reprimanded yeah. for saying penis. Yeah, and I wasn't saying like suck it. I was just uh, just like saying that you know someone's penis. Yeah, uh-huh. and then I got off stage. This was at uh, Juniors in Erie, Pennsylvania, mm. wow. and the woman who had bought the club was like, "I only like clean comedy." So when you get booked, they're like, "Can you do a clean set?" And I looked at it like, "A, I need the work." Sure. And kind of a challenge. So I just literally made the 45 to 60 minutes work like that. Yeah. And she was like, you said penis up there. I was like, are you seriously yeah. busting my chops for saying Even penis? before mm-hmm. I watch this, it, it, it just sort of, <laughs> it just sort of breaks my heart that there is Christian music, that there is Christian comedy that we, that because as somebody that used to be in that world, it just hurts me that we're like, we're not in it like we're not feeling what you guys are feeling you know what i mean yeah. oh you like, mean to segregate kind of the christian like, world from the other uh, this world. guy i don't know this guy he has the same complex yeah emotions, of course but like there's a burden to my people and i still consider them my people it's like you're not allowed to express your doubt you're not allowed to express your anger oh, you're not allowed to express your ugliness saying. yes yeah. you know what i'm saying you got to always greed, put on that face your jealousy that's what i mean and yeah. that is not as as i interpret it and I don't think that's really much up for debate. That's not the message of Christ. The authenticity and realness and truth and light is like the fucking point. So yeah. when I see us going like, well, a lot of times Christian, and this is before, it's maybe it's better before I do this. Yeah. We're trying to represent holiness. Mm-hmm. Like I think if you are holy, like if you connect into the infinite consciousness that erupted into the Big Bang and made everything. If you can get into that feeling of oneness, chances are you probably are a pretty equanimous, gentle, nice, patient, not very horny, you know, person, right. not having 12 Michelob Ultras kind of guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we're not watching yeah. hardcore, we're not reading Barely Legal. You know what I mean? But that comes, that comes right. after the inner transformation. Sure. Right. My people, and I used to do this, go, Oh, I see the fruit of the inner transformation. So I'll pretend that's it. that I have it. That's Interesting. it. Because that's, that's all that matters is I just want to be in the group so you I don't swear. That's that what way. you bump it's up phony, against. Yeah. You yeah. bump up against what you, when you're not in that group and you meet that person, you bump up against what you perceive as this, the phoniness. That's right. What, what you, you go like, you're putting on something here. And like, I want to be. And that you don't express any doubt. And that you have all the answers and it feels like it's... It's cart before the horse. Yeah. Man. yeah and right. and I, I sympathize. I'm not saying yeah, oh, yeah, Christians yeah. are a bunch of holy, uh, phony holy people. I'm saying when I was in that church, I felt it and saw the need to do it because there wasn't land. There wasn't freedom. There wasn't room for your doubt. They might say like, your doubts are welcome. No, they're fucking not. They're not. And neither is like my alcoholism or my drug addiction or my porn addiction. It's not. We all like, you know, when youth pastors would take back in the day before the internet would go for a conference that take over a whole, ho- uh, like a holiday in the porn, like ordering what back when you had to order porn <laughs> would go through would, like, the roof. times 10, <laughs> of course, because they were like this very, I think, juicy, exciting, electric, alive idea that Jesus was representing got turned into don't jerk off. And you, you know mm. what right. happens when you do that? Porn rates go through the yep. roof when you finally have a weekend away from Helen, your frigid wife. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. It sucks that we've lost the narrative. I didn't come here to preach. But anyway. No, this so is when, all good stuff. When we say there's Christian comedy, it breaks my heart because I think Bill Burr is doing comedy that is true and yeah. is therefore Christ-ish. You know what I'm I saying? I see what you're saying, yes. It's, it's, it's on the side of this is what it's fucking like to be a human. It heals us. It gives us solidarity and makes us feel less alone. That's so much better than going up and being like, you know, Bathsheba was on the roof. <laughs> and uh, do you think King David took a little peekaboo? Like, who are you helping? Okay, you yeah. just did the first Well, page. you just, yeah. I'm sure I did. I don't know, actually. Well, tell us I if tell these are good Let's see what some of these are. And by the way, my heart is open to this man. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> What's up, Strong Church? Chris here. You know, they always say that preacher jokes are the worst, so we thought we'd put that to the test. Okay. This is the preacher joke challenge. Here we go. How do we know that cars are in the New Testament? <laughs> because Jesus was a car painter. Car painter. That is one of the, can you pause it, please? Yeah, yeah. That's one of the worst jokes I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Tell is, us why. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like forcing it's terrible. Yeah. When I, I went to Disneyland and they when you were waiting in line for like the Monsters Inc. ride, they were like, write a joke and and they'll put it up on the screen. And I was like, uh, the joke that I wanted to be on the screen, and I'm like, I'm a professional comedian, I can do this. Yeah. The joke that I wrote was, What do uh what is Mickey Mouse what happens when Mickey Mouse cries or what is mickey mouse cry mouseketeers oh that's good it's not good and i, I appreciate it. that i also I liked, liked it, it but it's like you're just trying this is that is 10 times better than this shit yeah this is wordplay painter a car painter it's like there was that somebody did it <laughs> i like the way you said that just just so like you said it like you were literally upset there so was a nickelback yeah. parody song somebody tried to go weird al on look at this photograph uh -huh. and they went look at this photograph it doesn't sound like photograph mm -hmm. i'm out and car painter is not what we say no fucking get out of here yeah. get out of here Let's go to the next one. I appreciate one. your rage at this, though. Uh, me too. Why did Noah have to punish and discipline the chickens on the ark? Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Pause it. Why did Noah have to punish and discipline? The I chickens. feel like discipline is a clue. All right. Mm. The chickens on the ark. Because mm -hmm. they were clucking around. Mm. <laughs> I don't think you can do that. <laughs> yeah. Because that sounds like fucking I know. You're right. So you it might, can't be that. Um... Not, not the chickens. I mean, uh, it's going to be a chicken play. something about, yeah. It's, the, it's definitely they chicken. Were a bunch of egg heads. Or, yeah. bunch of, uh, bunch of something with eggs, right? They were... To get to the other side. No, discipline. They were, right. they were too excited there. to be on the... <laughs> <laughs> eggs. Because they were using fowl. Uh, oh, uh, they got us. Uh, they got us. Uh, they got us. But Can look we, at him laughing. Here's the best part. Yeah, this, this nerd guy. is like... It's, foul language. <laughs> it's yeah. not terrible. That one's at least it's not, not terrible, terrible but that laugh right here is too. so big. But I do, yes, that's a big laugh. The laugh, laugh was too big, and the guy's delivery was yeah. not very good. It Can was very we, deadpan. But this, what's going on here, just one more little dip into, sure, the, into the Pete preaching pool, is, is like, what are we saying about a faith for grown, intellectual, interesting people when the jokes that we can appreciate are baby jokes? Right. You know what I mean? Like, we don't understand. Right. Have you read the Bible? Have you read the book of Job? Right. Have you seen the complexity right. and the sex and the violence and the doubt and the shame and the fear in that book? And that people were actually drawn to Jesus. Do you know Jesus drew a crowd? It's like fucking hanging out with Jim Carrey. Like, right. if he went, people came and listened to him. It's not because he was saying they had foul fucking language. <laughs> Do you understand? You think yeah. you can draw an impromptu crowd back in the day when like 15 feet over someone's like just killing a goat for fun? <laughs> like, look at that, I'm killing this goat. Like you had medieval shit to compete with. People wanted to listen to Jesus and it's become like, how many lollipops can you lick before a Jew goes to hell? Like, how the fuck did we wait, lose this? Wait a minute. Wait, do you guys That was even a better joke than the car that painter. That totally was. One, uh... Everything's a better joke than the car painter. Uh, do you want um, to guess the, the joke answer to how do you make holy water? How do you make holy water? But first of all, let's look at how disinterested. With a hole punch. With a what? With a hole punch. A hole, hole punch. punch. Something about the punch. Oh, yeah. right. But look how disinterested the kid is listening on the left there. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. That was He's me. so bored. Yeah. Just yeah. like, God that's damn the, That's church. right before you left the church. How do you yeah. make holy water? How do you make holy uh, water? How do you make holy water? I don't know. Oh, he's milking it. Thanks. Get ready for water and boil the devil. Oh. That is not a joke. It's Get regular oh, water and boil oh, the devil out of it. Oh, 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 oh. Is that oh. an orgasm? No, it's a guy who's excited about a highway. Wow. <laughs> wow. Seriously. There's wow. a, the Trans-Canada Highway. The Trans-Canada Highway. I just did a show. Shane Moss has the show with scientists where he was like, uh, when you hear a real orgasm or a real laugh, yeah. When you speed them up or slow them down, they sound like animals. Like if you take yeah. them out, it sounds like animals. And fake laughs and fake orgasms, when you slow them down, sound fake. They still sound fake. Oh, so your, your brain is actually 
doing a similar type of analysis. So it's when primal, someone's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like usually too slow. Actually, one of the things we learned is if you're going to fake a laugh, speed it up. <laughs> oh, shit. It makes it seem more animal. No way. It's, but if you take a real laugh and slow it down or speed it up, it sounds like a chimpanzee. Oh. But a, a, a fake oh. laugh slowed down sounds like, <laughs> right. <laughs> when slowed down, a real laugh sounds like, <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Same thing with an orgasm. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Wow. So that's why your brain can tell. It, it has a built in thing that obviously, whether or not you can trust somebody and whether or not they're being forthcoming with you is important to yeah. the survival yeah. of our species. So reading laughs and reading orgasms. Is actually like something you can do. You it's can like, do that. and it's probably it's we, not just a guess. We have an innate ability to you do. You know, it. Yeah, that's it's what unconscious, I mean. Yeah. isn't it? An it unconscious that's what I mean. thing. Yeah. It's unconscious. You know, what's but even true. it's subconscious. Subconscious. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes. Subconscious. Um, I would say your subconscious is unconscious. So, but wait a minute. Let's <laughs> okay. see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How do you make fun of <laughs> um, you are uh, so funny, man. Look how bored both of these kids are. This is so funny. Like, why do the thing if you're not remotely interested? Well, you know what I'm saying? I do know what you're but saying. Do you, do you realize how fucking lame this joke is? No, let's read like, it. Break it down. So the joke is, how do you make holy water? Get regular water and boil <laughs> the devil out of it. Right. Like using basically, that's like an old an southern old lady yeah. who's like, "Well, you just got to bowl the devil out of it." Yeah, beat the tar out of it. Yeah, you know? out of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sure. It's yeah. it was a mistake that someone goes, "Wait, that's a joke." Did well, this, you just yeah. boil the devil? Did out this of it. kid? Because I didn't want. Did he laugh? Did the kid on the left laugh, or was he like? Well, you? let's see it again. Can we see the reaction of the? the that's what I wanted to, the I bored wanted to see. If he, let's see if he has enough wherewithal to be genuinely bored. Get ready for water and boil the devil out. Oh, nope. They, they jump cut. Uh, yeah. He's like, go fuck yourself with that joke. Yeah. He's also he's he's Jay <laughs> Leno, he's Jay Leno yeah. winning him. He's he's only thinking about how about, to say his. That's right. He's, he's not listening. Uh, Jay Leno. Uh, he Jay Leno. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He Jay he's Leno. He's like, like oh, all right, and coming up here. Yeah, he's he's thinking about his thing. Um, <laughs> God, this is the most boring joke so off bad. ever. Let's go then. Is What's there the next one? one, Native? What do you call Dracula with pause, hay pause. fever? What do you call Dracula with hay fever? This is definitely going to be a vampire. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's I can't These even. These are too count. bad. That is so a, bad. A pollen that count. That is so bad. That's bad. What Who do you wrote call? these? A uh, computer from the 1980s? Terrible. A pollen Terrible. count. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Truly a nightmare. Yeah. A nightmare. So for those who didn't hear it, it's what do you call Dracula with hay fever? The pollen count. Get it? I I just want to kill myself. I Me mean, yeah. too. That's what I'm saying. Is like I think this this I think do it. Oh man, here we go. He loves it. He loves it. That's what I think about that he joke. Lo- and he just <laughs> gave you a double thumb. Like it registered. How it. can the Jews, whose book is seventy percent these people's book? Yeah. Like these people's book is seventy percent a Jewish book. <laughs> yeah. True. How can the Jews be so funny, and these fucking. As Kurt Metzger said, these boiled hams. Yeah. They're so white. They look yeah. like... Bo- That's a Kurt Metzger joke. Yeah, no. These fucking bo- white they bread, are. wonder bread in a snowstorm. We are but it, a cultureless, humorless crew. But like you said, it's because they boil all the fun out of you because it, you can't have any sort yeah. of... Averse yeah. ideas or or right you got you got to be but within here, the narrow confines of I hear you behavior I, that's true you're trying you're playing a very limited game there's a lot of yeah. uh, it's like operation you got to get in yes, there the things. yes but the truth is is these girls or the guys sluts, before oh. they're sluts yeah. everybody in these videos is a slut no <laughs> I'm saying they have their real selves you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. they have sleepovers and they tell a joke about a tampon looking like a stick of dynamite yeah. or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Right. And they actually yeah. have an authentic experience. And the fact that that authentic experience is separate from their time in church is, again, Sad. But do you think, though, because have you ever met or hung out with somebody who genuinely is like, they're so sheltered that they have this like <laughs> innocence way? Or you're like, are you fucking serious? Where they, they laugh at shit like that? Like they have yeah. such that... You know what I mean? No, like, I know people like that. I have an I, aunt I, who's like 75 and still like that. Where like she reads um, Reader's Digest right. books. Right. Uh, they have a joke section and it's jokes like this. And she'll and sometimes the, laugh till tears. And, like, and the enjoyment is, is, um, is twofold. It's like the joke itself and also the relief 
yeah. that you weren't offended. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're sort of laughing in delight that she you finally found a joke for you. And, yeah. She's reaching for it. No, I'm just making sure this is off. Oh, thank well, God. If it's up, it's off, right? <laughs> How many fucking farts? Is it up is off, up is on? I understand. Down is, is on. I think down's probably off. Say right? it again. Down is off. Oh, it's one of those weird mics where down is off. <laughs> I just had it on, so I just want to make sure it's not picking. Up. I do want to say it's not. It couldn't really be. You can't really have a church where people are telling tampon jokes. I understand. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean. I'm not yeah. an idiot. But even the sheltered person, that's also going like, we'll create the appearance of holiness by withholding them from everything. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? When sad. really the way the way out is through. You know what I mean? True, true holiness. I think it comes from going through all of, of that experience and yeah. having compassion. This is very Buddhist, but having compassion and love for all of humanity and all of that experience, instead of just going, I'm going to sequester myself. That's a very 20th century Christian yes. idea where it's like, we're just going to, we got no TV. We've got no, and I understand limiting that stuff, but it's like, yeah, when they point. fully isolate themselves, it's now look how hard this nerd laughed at that fucking. Yeah. Thing. She hasn't heard much. <laughs> She reminds me of you need help. Help. Laugh just Why is she I laughing that hard? I don't know. If you need help building an ark, I know a guy. That's not a setup. Help building an that's ark. That's a I know a guy. Oh, we missed the setup on that one. There is no setup. No, that's just the beginning. If you need help building an ark, no. I know a guy. He did it right. That's a punchline. I know a guy. I, I know, but I'm saying, like, as far as the video goes, that's the beginning of it, right? That's the whole thing. Yeah. It's also, this is a print joke. Yeah. They, they, uh, you don't know that that doesn't work read aloud? I'm going to say this at the pulpit. <laughs> you fucking idiot. You're here to tell me the mysteries of the universe and you don't know this, this joke isn't going to work? By far it is your like, I'm living. being irate. Yeah. One time I, I was in a hotel and I was flipping by, uh, I was in the Midwest or something, and there were televangelists. There was a televangelist and he had a fucking hairpiece. Yeah. I was like, if you can't be honest about that. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You're up there talking about truth. <laughs> and I got a fucking wig on. It's sliding down. Yeah. And Jesus tells us to be honest <laughs> with our neighbors. You fucking idiot. What's Bullshit. angering me is this guy's sunglasses on his oh, fucking yeah. dumb yeah. head. Don't yeah. you hate when people do that? Or even worse, on the back of the neck? I want to oh, punch that's this that fucker guy out. Fieri oh, thing, yeah. my God, God damn it. Everyone's that. doing that, by the way. Um, Everyone? Go to the airport. You look really? like there are these hairy faced people facing you in line. <sighs> so weird. This kid knows how to get to the mall. This kid, this kid <laughs> orders knows. a cheesecake factory without opening the mail. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Chicken and biscuits. <laughs> and I'm going to pre-order my Oreo cheesecake. <laughs> and I want you to put it in a cup and blend it. <laughs> you want us to blend it? Put it in a cup. They do it every week. And blend it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell them Devin's here. <laughs> yeah. Devin. That kid's totally a Devin. With his free t-shirt. That's a totally free What else you got? Let a me hear free it. Is there another one? Oh. Is that it? Which Bible character had no earthly parents besides Adam and Eve? Um, Which Bible character had no earthly parents? I feel like you could, ne you could probably get this one, Pete. Adam and Eve? Well, Jesus had Mary, but no dad. Right. Oh, but I'm looking at it like a Jeopardy question. This, no. this is just going to be too, a waste of it's our too fucking dumb. time. Yeah, just let it go. Let it go. Mm. Let it go. Wait. <laughs> Joshua, son of Nun. <laughs> She came oh, and get it out. Wow. She's she even was so. Get it? She really thought that was funny. That's so funny. And I so went to. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Can I so do So funny. Because I, I went to like Catholic she... school and I went to Christian school and I, I don't know Joshua, I don't know son, Joshua of son of Nine. I've never either. heard of that. No. That's another thing that's missing. Yeah. Will this joke play when spoken aloud? Right. No consideration. Yeah. Right. Is this a known biblical a reference? reference? Right. Yeah. When I said Bathsheba, these are your I areas. I got that one. Maybe yeah. Balaam's talking ass. Do you know that story? Balaam, mm -hmm. no. Balaam had a donkey, but in the Old Testament, they call him asses. So God spoke to Balaam through his ass. Hilarious. Now, there's that's also, a good Bible joke. There's also my favorite is Hosea 3, 8, which is go show love to your wife, just as the Lord your God shows love to the Israelites. Though they turn their back on him and love the sacred raisin cakes, right? <laughs> we thought that was so funny because what the fuck is a sacred raisin cake? Do you know what it is? No. It's a bee hole. It's a euphemism for anal sex. What? Wait, it I was is. joking. Seriously? No, you were right. That's, that's your a, raisin cake? That's your sacred raisin cake. Bro. In the Bible it says that? <laughs> Hosea 3.8, I believe. Wow. No, that's, positive. that's in your part. That's in your part. <laughs> you fucking Jew motherfucker, you. <laughs> oh, that sounds like hardcore fun. That sounds like hardcore fun. And the, uh, the Israelites love the sacred raisin. Is that cakes. right? I did and not know they, that. No, I don't know if they do. Uh oh. But I mean, Your raisin cake. Hosea's painting with a pretty broad brush. 
even if a third of them love the sacred raisin cake. Did everybody was that so that was something that people would be like, you know what a raisin cake is, right? Like they would whisper it to That's each other. That's funny though. That's genuinely even, funny. It's no, funny. Totally, yeah. like, wow, even in the Bible, they're like, cake. we can't put Asshole. I'm writing the Bible yeah. here. I yeah. can't say they love eating ass. Yeah. <laughs> and what are they doing the raisin cake? Giving a little perimeter tickle? Yeah, exactly. Are they getting all are they moving in with luggage? All the they're way. They're moving in, in with moving luggage. In. You a big anal guy? Never done it. No. Me neither. No. Me no, not, I'm not interested. I don't. I, it's not because I think it's gross or weird or anything. It's just I do. I like think it's gross and weird. Hilarious. That's why I don't want to do it. So funny. Honestly. Well, it's different for you because you'd be receiving. Uh, unless you. Yes. Be, yeah, I guess you could strap strap on. You certainly that. can. O M G. O M. I remember. Somebody at the green room of the comedy store. Uh, it was Harlan Williams. He was, I was there with Val and he was like, you got to try it. It's fantastic. He's so funny. He's so funny. That's so funny. Okay, I'll tell you two quick Harlan Williams. Uh, he, uh, he's so great. I'm, at, can I say this? I yeah. just thought of the joke answer. Is like, I already have a hard enough time believing that she likes vaginal sex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's just like a, a joke, obviously. But like, I need to know they like it. I, yeah. I'm a performer. So if there's something in there that oh, I'm like, you're talking about me. I was no, like, no, 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 oh, I like no, that. no, 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 no. My oh. wife, it, it's just a joke. Oh, oh, oh but I'm okay, just saying on. like anything that kind of hinges on the idea that it's like, can you believe she's letting me do it in oh, the butt? Yeah. That doesn't get me off. No, I'm there for her. Yeah. And I'm not saying this is to be Captain Good Guy. I'm a stand up. It's a dysfunction. I want them to please it. So if it's like, I wedged it in, then she was like, slower, slower. I'm not like, <laughs> if anybody was like, hold on, I'm like, uh, I, I, not only is this over, I've lost my erection right, and right, I want to yeah. read a book right now. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, you don't yeah. like this hurting people and stuff. That's what I'm saying. Mm, that's anything, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> anything that's like degrade. I've had girlfriends, I had a girlfriend that was like, uh, we went and bought a leash. Neither of us had a dog. Oh. We went and got a leash and she, it was her idea. Uh, do I have to t look at my fucking yeah. Yeah. Iowa city face? I do not want <laughs> do to whip Iowa my city girlfriend face. with a leash. Yeah. And she got this real thin one that like hurt and I hit her with it once and like it left a red mark and I was like, you're like, I'm fucking sorry. no way. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. No, some people I'm are not like, into it either. yeah. And I'm not judging those people. I'm just like, that is not me. No, no. it no. takes all of my effort. To have good old fashioned meat and potatoes yeah. in the veg. Yeah. See, I, I like I like head in the toilet. I like all that stuff. That you know? is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, not with me, but no, someone no, no, else no. does that. Back in the day, um, head in the toilet. I remember one time God. I was sleeping with a girl. Oh, don't and, so and we, no, we, we I'm married to you. Remember uh, that? This is a long time ago. So we'd got we'd gone out a few times, and this is I thought that like because I actually really am lovey dovey and you know like relationships and. I'd gone out with you and assume because I'm sleeping with her that we're, we're, we're kind of going towards a relationship, you know, in yeah, my mind. I understand. Because I'm 23 or something. So we... Uh, I had been married for a year at that, at that point. Oh, God. <laughs> so we go out a few That's times. crazy. And then she's at my place. And I think we... I forget if we had... Maybe we had just... We just had had sex. We were about to. And she's like, <laughs> you know... um, this other guy that I'm having sex with? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, like he really, you know, bosses me around and like, you know, like puts toys in me and like really like is much more aggressive. I like it. She's like, dating the um, cat in the hat. I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> I was like, totally. Aww. I was like, uh, see what I can do. I That's because your marriage material. Yeah, jeans. See? Oh, yeah. oh my God. Now, Great title alert. Oh, yeah. Tom yeah. Segura, God. marriage material, marriage material. But yeah, I yeah. tell you what, I got her that day. Oh wait, it's I double put, I double, I dumped the entire oh, trash on her it. from the kitchen, like with banana stop peels it. and stuff. You did not, and like yeah. old food. Yes, you, you got a you bag did. of dog I food. Did. And you put and her I head squatted in over it. her face. You yeah. did. I made her eat the scrum from. Behind. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, is that what you want? Like that. But then I cried. <laughs> but then I cried. Yeah. So you're still a sensitive, decent yeah. guy. Then. I'm a good guy. You didn't like it. I don't, what can I tell? You? I'm a good guy. You didn't like it. No, I, I couldn't do that shit, man. I couldn't do it. I really couldn't do it. I don't um, know. I never could either. No. And it's again. I know it's very. It's popular to be sweet now, which I'm. Which I'm all about. Yeah. But it's like any time, even with just regular sex, if somebody was like, wait. I'd just be like, this is over. Dude, for me, here's the thing. Here's the one that, that was over for me, That's too. normal, though. I had, That's good. I had zero of the, um, I don't know what you call it, but the 
that part where <laughs> when she's not interested, where you go like, I'll just keep trying. That's zero. Oh, effect. that's tacky. So I, I always, meaning well, like I only That's slept what Puerto with Rican guys do. <laughs> that I only had sex with. I don't endorse uh, that comment. <laughs> she, well, here's the thing. She can, can say that. She can say that because she slept with a number of them. So. They all know. pulled that move, Puerto Rican guys. What is the move that you're. Just, just let me do the, let's just put the tip. Just let me, just let me. And just then you're the like, well, I don't know. I don't know if I should. And then they wear you down. <laughs> And then, and then you just kind of do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what's what Who happens. Is the you know, when you're Puerto Rican, you're just Puerto Rican. Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> wow. Here's the if thing. I was in the Midwest right now, I would be like, man, I'm a long way from L.A. <laughs> but I'm in L.A. <laughs> you guys are making What me. I was trying to say was this. Yeah. To me, any amount of, like, hesitation or, like, not wanting to do something, to me, would always completely... Turn me off oh, from yeah. any of course, sexual of experience. I'll so, like, if someone was like weirder with you, I don't know. I'd be like, we no. did a, a sketch called "Batman Can't Stop Thinking About Sex," and there was a line that Batman says, which is so from my psyche. Obviously, we're riffing a lot, and he goes, "Sometimes the sexiest thing a woman can do is forgive." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, find it, Nadav. Find it. Find the audio. It's towards the end. But that, to me, this is real vulnerability. Yeah. Like, there's emotional uh, people. Everyone, people are going to call me a cuck. What? But I am. What's up, you fucking cuck? What's up, cuck? Yeah. I'm a fucking cuck. Yeah. Hey, cuck. So what? Suddenly, I'm Mark Wahlberg. Oh. Hey, you're a fucking cuck. <laughs> I saw you over there. You got no abs. You're a fucking cuck. You're a fucking cuck. So anyway. You got no abs. You got no abs, bro. When do you get up? <laughs> I never sleep. So anyway, I, uh, I, this is par for the course for me going like, I don't, I don't know if I can. And then the woman being like, it's fine. And then me being like, now I can. Yeah. Like that is such a turn on for me because vulnerability and like emotional safety is for you is yeah. important. Yeah. It goes both ways. Like, uh, like a safe environment where it's like, Hey, I don't care. I, I got like, everybody loves this feeling. I got nowhere to be. Yeah. Like I'm I'm just happy to be with you. That yeah. that you don't have to be I feel like traditionally ladies it's like that's lady shit. Fuck you. No, yeah. I'm, I I got balls. Yeah, I got No, but maybe I've, I I uh, Puerto Ricans aside, I have been with sweet men <laughs> who have Christ. wanted consensual nice experiences and those are always better. <laughs> oh my of course. God. Clearly. I'm right? not talking to you. Yeah. Oh, as sorry. long as you say as long as it's baked in Puerto Ricans. The Puerto Rican stuff. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> you know. two black dicks. Hello. <laughs> I'm available. That's Christina. I love the Puerto Rican. I love Puerto Rican men. I What's know wrong with it's that? a never ending What's wrong with story that? at our house. Like every I like fucking them. time I Pitbull's like on TV, she's like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> licks her lips. I love it. Yeah, she loves it. I love them. Mm. Sometimes the sexiest thing a woman can do <laughs> is forgive. Because I look at the screen and Nadav's definitely not looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have internet. We don't have internet. Yeah, you can't search. What happened? You want to know, you want to know you the You have a thing? fucking full listen, three-dimensional movie listen set. Listen to how crazy this is, though. The first thing we did when we got this space now four months ago was sign up for internet <laughs> and paid for it every month. A, a sizable fee because it's a mm. business, pl- like Fuck. office park. Yeah. And in four months, they haven't been able to give us internet yet four months yeah. we meanwhile we've soundproofed a room we've built yeah. two sets yeah. is it soundproof i feel like if i get too loud yeah. it's kind of echoey well they're not well, done they're not, well they're not done. i don't know if you heard but we had a sponsor who mcdonald's we don't anymore so they left us. they fired us after last week's show sorry but you were hawking <laughs> mcdonald's oh well, it was fantastic they, they gave us over Tell me. Two mi- over $2 million. They did not. They did. Yeah. And all we had to do was paint the set and make it look like an old McDonald's. We, we, we painted it back after they fired us. Hold on. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Last week it was yellow and red. Yeah. If you want to look at the internet. You, was it based on a bit? No. Were you like, I just love old McDonald's. Well, here's what happened. When we were moving to the space, we started talking about it. Podcast had some traction. Our agents were like trying to make something happen. Like make some money off of the fact that we were upgrading the studio. I just got have some to corporate. Go home. I know. <laughs> I have to go home. Keep yeah. going. I couldn't be more interested. Uh, I'm literally... many many French fries. Um. So I am, we. Got I am it. so interested. I turned down lower offers because I thought it was just ridiculous. 
and somehow they they came up to 2.3 million dollars that we could basically spend to run this operation for a few years and then last week we're doing the show that just makes me think your overhead is way too high well get rid of the dog i know it's get expensive. rid of <laughs> well show them terry so here's what happened yeah. we do this show last week we put um uncle terry on basically and uh, we do a segment with this guy and mcdonald's flips out that we basically did this so I'll i show. can't wait do you uh, As anything that you have on the hard disk we can watch I know. Basically. It has to be on the. It has to be on the hard drive. On the hard drive. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and do a spotlight search for it. Yeah, yeah. search. Good luck for this guy. This but is. This is what got. This is what lost us. Lost our. And let me know if you think this guy is a Christian. <laughs> Hi there, guys. It's Pete again, and I'm here to do a little video. Again. I wanted to use. I call this him Terry. greeny toy that I bought. This new one, and I thought I'd try that in. And then I also wanted to try this double-ended um, fuck sleeve that has these like massive bullets in them. I haven't used it, of course. And then I went to look, and they didn't send any batteries. So bad, 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 bad. Um, I'm not going to be able to use the vibrate yeah. anymore, but the butt toy vibrates. So I'm sure that's going to get me off. Um, and it's got it's got this cool. Uh, built in concrete. So cool. Do you and like then that? I got this cool, I, a friend of mine <laughs> cool. had one, and he fucks it with his boyfriend, and it's a double ended dude. So I really want to try this um, because I like fucking stuff. But first, I'm going to try and get this in my butt, and then um, turn it on, and it's even got this. This is cool the little, opposite of worrying um, that Jesus control. is coming back and while you're messing okay. This guy wants views. <laughs> this guy doesn't worry about Jesus. There's at a part of me that, like, is yeah. sort of, I admire his freedom. Right? Right? That's what I was saying. I did, now, I did not save with Nikki Glazer, and they gave us, like, a, like a fleshlight thing. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, I'm going to try this. And as soon as I came inside of it, I was like, Okay, this I'm gonna bury this. <laughs> like I had like a dog instinct. Is it great though? I've never. I, is it great? It was, but it wasn't worth the, the emotional the shame. cost. The shame. Yeah. I e, like that was the only way I could get there. Was, shame it was a enter. gift. It was a gift. I have to use the gift. Yeah. yeah. And then you're just in your bedroom alone, going. Oh, it's the saddest, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. This guy is like, yeah, I like fucking stuff. Yeah. 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 That's should, what we were saying. He should be on the American flag. He's like, uh, <laughs> we liken him to like. Uh, you know, he's like a, doing a cooking show where he's like, and next you're going to take the right. chicken. Like, it's so this casual. This is definitely going to get me off. Yeah. This vibrates. Big no, no to you. I don't report <laughs> an error to Microsoft if I was looking at porn and this guy makes a video going, he didn't right. include batteries. <laughs> I got to put this in my ass. And he's kind of judgment free. He's like, I have a friend. He, he fucks it with his yeah. boyfriend. Like kind of beautiful. No he's judgment. also in like strangely good shape. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like, what's and going he's, on? Tan. he's tan. It's got a nice uh, texture to it. Okay. I think it'll be easy to go in. Is this on a porn site? Or a... Or a, or a this is on NBC nice News. I can't frame, even listen. Is it on YouTube cool. or is it on a porn <laughs> site? But it does have kind of a good size head on it. So it may take me a minute. <laughs> ah! He looked at me like he was butt, mad. Since my last uh, butt toy video. Uh, so this this isn't just a you this isn't a vlog. He's a porn guy. He's uh, making porn. We don't I, know. I, I we don't, don't know. know. Like you cropped it. Like well, normally, I didn't crop it, but yeah, it's I mean, been I, cropped. It's Nadal been cropped. had that lovely it. job. Like this is so you can watch it and masturbate. I think. I think it's not just instructional. I mean, look at the look at those dead eyes right there. Those are really. He looks like he's reading a, but, Christ, a pastor joke. <laughs> I know a guy. That's the uh, face he makes. Right. A car painter. <laughs> Yeah, he's he a car painter. A car painter. He's having more fun than those kids. Oh my god! Making those. Tell me what. I've said this before. With so right, play. by the way, right here we uh. found out McDonald's was super pissed already. <laughs> like they were not into this at this point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> was it worth the two point? No. Was it three point? Two point three. Two point three. Yeah. Mm. I think it might have been worth. We'll it. let we'll let you decide. The clip's not over yet. If you're new to it, you gotta go slow. Don't try and rush it. Don't try and go too fast. Uh-huh. Because then it'll hurt. You won't want to try Is that his again. dick? The tip of his <laughs> dick is <laughs> that in? Um, so he's once, rock hard. Once you get used to it, you learn how to breathe and relax yourself. Butt play can be a lot of fun. <laughs>
He's actually, it's kind of compassionate. He is, yes. He's doing it for help. Yes. He's like, look, I get it. Yeah. Maybe you're new to it. I know I should just be laughing, but I'm like, it's kind of lovely. No, yeah, no. <laughs> I disagree wholeheartedly. I'm with you, though, yeah, Pete. Yeah. I'm with you in that I feel disagree, like disagree. this guy is, agree to disagree. he is shame free. And That's feel, what I mean. And, and it's, nope, I like it. Should it should be celebrated. Can I tell you something? Not only is he shame free, he, he needs, wants to help others. No, he, no, you guys are wrong. This guy is a, a total fucking weird beard and he needs to learn shame and boundaries there's no he needs to there's have no some boundaries. shame shame is a good thing <laughs> in small doses pretty comfortable in there oh, I don't oh, feel it. look at those oh, okay. lines. <laughs> i thought he was wearing underwear okay. it's nice it's got a nice feel to it so let me try and turn it on the remote doesn't seem to work at least when i first tried it with turning it on it just it, it cycles through the steps so Oh. That's just a constant. Oh, fuck. I, I hate oh, his face. Higher. I hate his face. Oh, that's like I a throbbing. His face. Oh, fuck. Oh, <laughs> God. I hate this guy's fucking face. All I can see is how much of the video is left. And it makes me feel despair. Oh, that's so gross. Oh. I know. Don't you feel gross inside? <laughs> and you've seen it before. Yeah. He loves this. This is his he favorite video. It. I hate this video. He loves it so much. <laughs> favorite I by hate far. It. I Look hate at it. where it uh, took you. You're yeah. your happiest place. I am. See how sick he is? He has no compassion. I love what? it. No, my husband's got mental problems. <laughs> Why? This is so I like cool gross. guys. This guy's not I like cool, cool guys. <laughs> I like cool guys. I'm going to try out the sleeve now. Oh, my God. And like I said, I'm really kind of disappointed that this won't be vibrating, too, but I think oh, this thing's going off in my man. foot. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, I didn't think he was a gay man. Really? And this has some really weird You know why? why? Because he was like ass play. Not to assume that all gay men do ass play, but yeah. he seemed like a straight guy being like, look, it's not that weird. Oh, right, right. If you want to play with your butt. That's why I kind of thought it was uh, nice. But he's got the gay pride necklace. Well, yeah. and the fuck sleeve that he likes to use with his friend. It's kind of neat. It's like, Did he say, I thought he said, yeah. I have a friend that uses it. I think he shares it with his friend. Uh, well, no, yeah. I think he, I think he's right. But there's also another part in this where he definitely talks about it'd be cool to fuck this with somebody else sometime. it'd be cool yeah it's kind of neat that's what he said <laughs> i mean yeah it's kind of like when you see somebody at mcdonald's this yeah. guy this guy actually has a lot in common with well, McDonald's. here's what i have to do this is with. the person at mcdonald's is like i want a number one and number two and a number five yeah, yeah. that's what this guy that's is he's greedy that's why mcdonald's was like we can't be with so this yeah. is a conflict of interest you can either yeah. promote this guy or us that's yeah. true because the culinary version of this guy's shamelessness it's yes. is mcdonald's the, the yeah. irony is that i have what i have to deal with is that this is now by far the, the hardest i've ever laughed from a video I and know. He's responsible for us losing two million dollars in sponsorship money. Yeah. Two point three. Yeah. Also, I how still many... the story would be sorry. No, no, go ahead. The story would be way more if we were at your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was almost gonna say like a normal podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. the fact that you say we could have run this operation for a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> takes all of the pathos and relatability out of that story. Yeah. No one cares. <laughs> That it's you true. lost two point three million dollars. I know, I know. Because you were wasting it on rent in this. <laughs> yeah, I know. And overhead from these employees that yeah. you, I mean, you need them. Yes. But you do. don't need them in this space. We don't the, need easy parking and no, like I know. a lot. Right. I know. If you were like, and we could be sending our kids to college, <laughs> then the story we care again. That's true. That's so true. Wait, we didn't even sure. think about our well, children. Who told yeah. you to do this? Because it <laughs> wasn't do, your idea. To do what? <laughs> this. This? No. I mean, it looks great. I mean, look, we have you a just new like sponsor. Shit. I, I really Morton's wanted is to, the new sponsor. Yeah, Morton's is doing it now. So that's, that's why it looks Morton's like a steakhouse. Paid, paid for this now. So they paid. They see? paid to paint off the McDonald's stuff. Okay, so you saw. I didn't even know this was an option. Yeah, we'll make our studio look like a Morton's. Yeah, yeah, and then you'll give us money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have uh, they have uh, Brussels sprouts with uh, a bacon. bacon, and then they have asparagus. With a, a, a and they don't care that this guy is the lead in to you talking well, they're giving about us their no. meat heavy menu. <laughs> <laughs> they give us way less money. Just though. so you but know, the lump, the lump crab cake is, lump, is a great option. Lump crab yeah. cake. Yeah. Yeah. Their scallops are to die for. Yeah. The appetizer. Yep. yep. But whose idea was that? I, I, no, ju no judgment. Really? No Real judgment. judgment. I'm there. curious. You guys were like, I want to do it like Rogan. 
just an office, man. We wanted to move. Uh, you didn't want to do it. In we didn't want to do that, it that out of the, our home. That's the, the origin of this period is get out of the house. Because we and had then a home studio. When you want to get out of the house, what am I, your business manager? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying there are other options other than having your own. Are you going to have other podcasts that use this space and uh, kick, give you a kick? There's going to be other podcasts <laughs> yeah. done over there. and That are some, under your umbrella? Basically, yeah. yeah. That give you a kick? There's a little taste. There's a taste. There's like one of those. Yeah. But now, I mean, they get the majority of it. I mean, you should get some of it because you're letting them record. But that's the whole, that's the whole, that's the whole swap of it. You know, (laughs) like you get, you know, you have a, you have a production team. You, yeah, you could have, well, yeah, but I don't want to do it out of my house or like do it. You could have rented a space, like an already existing space. Somebody else's podcast rent time in a, in a podcast space. Yeah. But those are gross or just rent an office. This is an office. This is, this is somewhere you could park an airplane. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like if I if well, I was looking for a place to park twelve cars, yeah, I would call you guys. There's three cars in the back of this thing. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is there's so much room. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but I here's you know the funny McDonald's. thing of how I think. I'm thinking about renting the place next door too. Tell me everything because I find this interesting. You seem like, and I mean this with love, yeah. peace and love, like a schlubby guy. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean when you say Tom Segura. Schlubby guy, That's, I, like I hear me. It a lot. Like, look at this. I got fucking baby puke on this. Somebody told me I look Schlubby. like I, I run yeah. a bowling alley. You look like you run a bowling alley. Meanwhile, you have a podcast, mm-hmm. and you were like, "We need a studio and a Lamborghini." You want he a already, Lamborghini? No, he put the down payment on the Lamborghini See, with this the McDonald's is why, money. Let me tell you something. Not only do not, does no one care about you losing 2.3, now we're a little bit glad. Yeah, well, see, why'd you have to tell everybody about the Lamborghini? <laughs> well, we're not going to get it now because the money's gone. We're not going to get it. Yeah. What do you mean? You I was just trying to secure one. I was just trying to secure one. So You there's... could drive a Lamborghini? Oh, he loves it. He rented one just for fun. You drove around just being like, yep. Uh, it's yeah. that guy who looks like a meatball sub got struck by lightning <laughs> and became a comedian. Yes. And you were like, I'm going to drive Bruce Wayne's car. Uh, I really like. A meatball. You're this, that's why you love this guy. Uh, you're this guy going, get in the Lambo, <laughs> shove the thing up your ass, eat a Whopper. You don't give a fuck. This is your spirit animal. Yes, I think you, you're right. You got I think it. You're onto something. I think you got it. And I, by the way, go you're for right. it. Go with I, God. It's just yeah. so interesting that a guy that you look like you'd go say, Sandler, you know what I mean? <laughs> I just want to wear sweatpants and fucking I do. sweatshirts but here's all the thing. Day. The most fun thing is to wear sweatpants and a, a shirt with a stain on it. And get in a Lambo. And get in a Lambo or something. I okay. couldn't get in a Lambo. First of all, I'm six foot six, but also. You are not that tall. I did. That's one of the big lies out That's there. That's so funny. Big lies out It's one of the big lies out there. That, that is I'll so tell Is it on your right Wikipedia now, page? I love Pete Holmes this. is five, ten and a half. That is <laughs> just for the record. So one of the big lies. One of the there. big lies. That is the funniest is that Pete take. Is tall. Uh, All right, I'll be honest about. I'll be yeah. honest, but I hate Lamborghinis. What do you mean? I, I'm really not a fan. I don't understand. Aren't they the best? No, I just I feel like it's a clown <laughs> car. I could never. But could, no clowns could fit. In a Lamborghini. I just don't like them. I think it's a, I think it's a clownish thing to drive. So but why I do did you like, try to buy one? I just thought it would be like a That's funny. A two, how much is a Lamborghini? Uh, you can get. I mean, you can get in one <laughs> for probably like two and a quarter. Like two? you know, but. But like you know, if you want to get like a, a a nicer model, you're spending like four hundred. Four hundred. I would spend that on a Ferrari though. Tom, I'm oh so happy God. to learn this about you. I just didn't know. <laughs> what was your dad like? He's yeah. got like six Ferraris. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. He loves cars, but he never got anything crazy. I wonder where you got it. You know what I mean? Like I, that, oh, I got I my mean, money back. So I got my money brand. back. What do you mean? I, I, I threw them a hundred grand to hold this one car and then they gave it back to me. Cause I was like, I'm not going to get it. So, but Hey, if there's one thing I know about the Lamborghini people, they're decent salt of the earth. <laughs> if you give them a hundred G's yeah. just to hold a car. Yeah. Yeah. They'll give it back. <laughs> yeah. They'll lend you some tools. <laughs> they'll give you some milk. Wait, yeah, what do you think yeah. about cars though? You don't like cars? I don't care about that. Stuff, really? Yeah. What do you spend wish, your money on? I wish I had that. Travel. Like, like I, and I don't mean traveling. In fact, I hate when people are like, if I didn't have to work, I'd travel. It's like, no, do even. some more thinking, Julie. Yeah. Yeah. You are a, a bore. Because women are yeah. dumb. I That's would, what you 
dressed. You gotta <laughs> give it color to make it a person, and I see all <laughs> equal. So I just went with Julie. Yeah, I know. But I hate when people are like, "I try." I don't mean that. I mean, I'm six foot six. So if I go to a gig now, you fly first class. That's that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. but not to you guys. I mean, you're, no, you're we're giving a hundred grand to money. hold a car. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. It's easy money. But you guys like spending money. That's fun. No, mm, we really he don't. He likes spending money. I don't Flashy. spend that. I don't spend crazy money. I really don't. No. You, have you not bought anything that you're like, wow, that's. I bought. <laughs> I have a sauna, but oh, that was three thousand nice. dollars or something. You can buy a sauna. People can save up and buy a. Sauna. You didn't buy any jewelry or anything. Jewelry. I mean, I bought this. Jewelry's Cuban, a great investment. I got this Cuban linked oh. diamond studded you're, chain. I swear it was thirty five <laughs> grand, and I've worn it once, and I got it two years ago. I gotta say, man. For somebody who looks like he cooks grilled cheeses <laughs> on part of the engine of the Winnebago he's driving across country. I can't believe you're spending that. First of all, I only you're doing hip hop my whole life. You're doing it and you're talking about it. Yeah. I kind of love it. Thank you. 35 If I spent $35,000 on a piece of jewelry, jewelry, just jewelry. a made up thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, gold is precious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rubies yep. are divine. Yeah. And you were like, okay. Yeah. And you're, I, you, anyone, not just your listeners, 35 grand would change their life. And you're like, yeah. I keep it in a drawer. He does it all the time. Yeah. Sneakers, 10 grand on sneakers. Easy peasy. Yeah. So you're With money. our McDonald's money. You're but now money. you got to give it all back. Yeah. I, did. I mean, we had to give all the McDonald's money back. That's serious money, man. Yeah. But then you went to Morton's. Yeah, Morton's. Morton's got the baked potato. They got, <laughs> they got the free refills and the iced tea. The, the double stuffed. Yeah, they give that, you a uh, big boy knife and the butter knife. <laughs> porterhouse. The, the twice can, stuffed baked potato. Porterhouse. You you can share for one hundred and five dollars <laughs> <laughs> for two people. No, I Pretty just. Good. I like their French onion soup. I'm too. worried that you're a behind the music in the making. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> God damn it, you're gonna scare my wife. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm Hold worried. On. I don't think it's gonna happen. Hey, will you please show him the rest of Pete? We didn't even get to see the rest of it. No, thanks. You know? No, thank you. Uncle Terry? Will yeah, you... give me a sec. I'll load it up. <laughs> give him 25 yeah. minutes to find it on the, the hard drive. Find it on the hard drive. <laughs> it's our new system. And by the way, we don't want internet, in case you're wondering. I like that. No, yeah. we choose to do the show this way. Now, let me ask you this. How many things does Terry have going at once here? Is it, there's the vibrating butt plug. Mm -hmm. I thought his name was Pete. It oh, is sorry. Pete. We, we him nicknamed Terry. him Terry. He just looks like a Terry. There's something else in his hand right now. He and there's like a blip. The sleeve. My name's Blip. I'm going to try out the sleeve now. Uh, and like I said, I'm really kind of disappointed that this won't be vibrating too. But I think with this thing going off in my butt, <laughs> it's going to be okay. And this has some really weird knobbies on the inside there. Oops. Dripping lube all over the place. What are you doing? Since it's not listening. Open in one end. Dripping lube. Whoa. Wow. It's pretty tight. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you love oh, it. Because yeah. it's earnest. Yeah, I do. Wow, that's tight. Yeah. Imagine. Damn it. Being so oh, okay with yourself. Fuck it. Oh, fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Ah! Oh! Oh! God damn it! <laughs> damn it! So I think that's what you call a ruined orgasm because this cat. I didn't want to come and it felt really good and that thing buzzing my butt just sent me off and I wasn't expecting it. So. so he he came too quickly yeah. for the toy. On his review thing, yeah, on his toy. And the toy is like, There's it happens a cool to a guy. lot of you. Oh, my bad. That was supposed to be louder. Um, <clears throat> Look, he loves biking. He's got <laughs> printer paper. He's got a cat. We He's an outdoorsman for sure. I mean, he's got the body. I'm kind of feel like, I feel like Pete's the first guy that made me feel this ridiculous. About you know what? what? I mean, about everything. What, do you you know what, what are you talking about? Like, like, I, like, he's like, what the fuck is up with this space? What's up with your jewelry? What's I up know. with your cars? Who are you? And I'm like, wait, what's going on? Well, the, I, I get, I never thought of myself as a cheap person, but there isn't a part of you that's like, <laughs> I hope this is interesting to the listeners. It is. You have a very popular podcast. Mm -hmm. <sighs> why, yeah. not, why not? Why not? Why not keep some of that? Right. <laughs> wait, what? Don't you realize we're playing pro ball? Yeah. Like our careers are in our salaries are inflated. Mike Birbiglia told me this. He was like, don't forget. You start making a TV show. You start doing this, this or whatever. 
Don't forget your salary is inflated yeah. because your career has a, has a time limit on it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So obviously you could do this for 10 years. Radio is a little bit different from other things. Yeah. But I just have this thing where I'm like, yeah, we're in the magical fruity kingdom and that's, and that's wonderful. Have some fruity pebbles, eat yeah. some grapes off the tree. It's great. But I'm like, yeah, at a certain point, people are going to be like, maybe we'll have moved on and, yeah. and we'll be glad that we didn't. What is this? H&R Block? I don't know what's going on here. But you don't have that. You're like, there's no tomorrow. <laughs> You're Krusty the Clown lighting a cigar with the action comics. I don't think one. I am, though. That's the thing. I don't think I am. I mean, with what? The, with regard to what? With what the is space? the rent of this place? It's not a lot. How much? It's not a lot. How much is it? <laughs> I'm not telling you. <laughs> I don't know what you think is a lot. <laughs> it's a relative word. It's more than five? No. It's less than five. Way less. Okay. That's good. Yeah. It's a really nice space. Yeah, it's way less. Now I don't feel bad about you at all. Yeah. I actually, when I saw this space, I was like, this is like, we're no. looking at thousands and thousands. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, now, great. Nadav is not cheap. <laughs> For that kind of service? Yeah. I sure hope I didn't make you feel ridiculous. Oh, totally. But she does too. Yeah. You just basically it's voiced ridiculous. her looks. Yeah. yeah. You know That's what I mean? hilarious. Yeah. Like Maybe you I just voiced picking up on that. Her yeah. going like this to me. But the jewelry, which you can't really resell. Yeah. Are you going to buy more jewelry? I, I just ordered a custom piece. What's going on here? <laughs> I think that what happened is... Does Nadav have a cousin or something? <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, he does. Nadav actually, has a cousin. Actually, he does. Well, let me get, he knows a diamond guy? He really does. I bet he does. You want to know what's something crazy? Should we say it or no? We shouldn't say it. I love whenever you wonder if you no. should say it. No. You should probably say it. The, the, the diamond thing. No. Okay. Yeah. He put me in touch with someone. Hilarious. Yeah. Now we're all just oh, like, who is no. it? Or what is so it? So I got this thing. I'll just tell you. So oh, I got this thing. Oh, God. <laughs> this so is a fun I show. make sure that my children have college funds yeah. set up. And yeah. that, yeah. Because once I, I'm kid, making sure. Once they're out of college. Wait, how fucking fun. conservative are you with <laughs> yeah. money? I, that's just not my trip that's not like what's not your trip like just like having cash throwing down cash. what do you you don't spend anything <laughs> cash. i got a house that's yeah. a fucking big purchase no it is pay off the house have the house yeah i bought my wife a car for christmas that was pretty big hey okay that's huge yeah how much was it she needed a car how much was it uh it was you know okay it was uh hbo money how dare you was it over <laughs> was it over 50 it was around that all right, that's a nice car. It's a nice car. Way nicer than mine. Mine's 30. Got my wife. Nicer car. That's nice. Keep that in mind. I know. He doesn't. Uh, and I parked nice it car. at Moshe Cash's place, kept it there, secret, Christmas. Oh. And then I felt very Christmassy. And then I, I knew I had to get up in the middle of the night to park in the driveway, put the bow on it, like a 90s Lexus commercial. All Those are awesome. Oh, sweet. So what I did was, this is some real genius shit. Yeah. I couldn't set an alarm. It would wake her up too. So I just drank a fuck ton of water. <laughs> really? And oh, that was I that is actually really smart of you. I got up to wow. pee. I've never felt more Christmassy in my life. You weren't tired at all, right? I wasn't tired. I was wired. so excited. Yeah, that's awesome. Our kid is too young to do this sort of Christmassy yeah. stuff. And she also, I kept telling her that I was. She knew what car she wanted. So I'm not some like weirdo that's like I'll order for the lady like yeah, her yeah. car. So she knew what it was, but I kept telling her I couldn't get it. So at 3 a.m., got an Uber to Moshe's house. Oh, my house. gosh. It was the best Uber. I was like, you're helping me be Santa Claus right Aww. now. It was like, I was like his third fare ever. Got the car, drove it there. It was one of the best things ever. That, that's that's, so that's, sweet. that's That's some good money spending. That is, that is that's good. Sweet. And that, not to say yours is bad. It does, these things give you joy. They make you feel yeah. happy. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So, I don't think I'm like doing anything really outrageous. I mean, the jewelry is kind of crazy. I admit that. Especially I just I don't, don't really buy into jewelry. Yeah. You don't think it's just like stupid? It's fantasy stuff though. Who's you know, fantasy? I, it's my fantasy because I, I grew up so, so immersed and consumed by hip hop culture right. and music that I really wanted to be one of those guys. And so when I finally made enough money to buy something, I just bought the stuff that I saw them wear. I know it's ridiculous, you know? Yeah. I don't. Th I, I don't even think it's ridiculous. That's that. That's what I'm using the word trip. I'm like, that's your trip. That's yeah, your yeah, yeah. Psychology. It's kind of ridiculous. You're like though. I'm going to do that. I don't think it is. I mean, it's a chain with my name on it, and it's in diamonds, three different colors, and it's got a thing of my beard around it, all diamonds. And it's, would you wear it? That's the thing. That's the, what I'm struggling with. Because I bought the drive jacket too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. We were yeah. all like, I'll get it, and yeah. then got the black one. I've never yeah. wore it. 
gave yeah. it away. It's in a Goodwill somewhere. Really? Of course. Yeah, that's the thing, right? How much stuff do you need, Tom? Jeez. But how much? What else? What, I mean, what? But the how idea, ridiculous? Is that? I'm not that crazy, right? I mean, am I really that crazy with stuff? I just jewelry so? specifically where they're just like we're gonna call these metals more you're right than it's others. a big mistake it's i will i will tell you what when it starts to get and, and this is just a psychological thing when you look in the closet and you realize you're buying the same stuff over and over mm-hmm. and you're not enjoying but here's, what you got but the, that's the stuff that you kind of go like Ugh. yeah but i'm saying that's not problematic right like it's not like if you're like Man, you keep buying this. No, I'm saying it's, it's the like, psychology of it. Of what are you en- already the, enjoying? The hedonic yeah. treadmill. Yeah, there you go. Well, you know what hedonism is. Obviously, it's sent, yeah. enjoying the senses, and the hedonic treadmill is the idea that you you'll just want the next thing and the next thing and the yeah. next thing and the next thing. And it's not to say that you can't enjoy it, but there is an addictive quality to any sort of. I mean, in a certain sense, this guy is chasing. The next amazing orgasm. Yeah, he yes. is. In the same way. And I want him to get it. That we're sort of chasing that feeling that you get sometimes. You know what it is? It's, it's similar to drugs. Like for me, I don't smoke a lot of pot, barely ever. Yeah. But every time I do, I'm like, this isn't it. And I recently stopped drinking for, recent, for similar reasons. Was you were always looking for that one. Mm-hmm. You were chasing that one time that you were in fucking Montreal. And you didn't plan it, but it started to rain. And you and your friend ducked in some cafe you realize you didn't have anything to do all day until like noon the next day. So you're like, fuck it, let's get martinis. And, and, and the feeling of novelty and spontaneity yeah. gets blended and the feeling of travel gets mixed into the martinis. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But our stupid ape brains go, martinis mean that feeling. But the next time you have them, you realize that it was a, a cacophony. It was a yeah. mosaic of feelings that we're chasing and that's how i feel about weed i smoke weed and i'm like it makes me happy it makes me silly or even coffee makes my my mood elevate does it or was your mood just there and you were too tired to even notice and that kind of woke you up a little bit like nothing is you just made so much sense to me that guess what i'm doing right now what i'm canceling the order on that uh piece of jewelry right now wow thanks because <laughs> i feel like it's just silly now. and my kid can go to private school one more year well and, what's what's yeah. more interesting is, is what actually does give fulfillment anybody can come and say we're addicted to our phones or we're on the hedonic treadmill or we're all right. chasing the next high but unfortunately like it's it's sometimes harder to get a handle on what the, i'm sure your family makes you really happy yeah yeah not my family of origin but my yeah. children yes. clearly yeah same hashtag sure. same yeah. talking with people like I, i'm very happy right now because yeah, i'm fun. seeing yes. you guys i'm talking with you guys sure that's what i think is really interesting about podcasting is that like we've gone so far into the future that we've just circled back where yeah. like what did people in like the fucking 1600s do they just sat around yes talking shit isn't that and that's interesting what we're doing we record it and i understand people share it and they're listening and they're a part of it in their way but like we're doing the same thing our ancestors did. And the same things, the same basic things make us happy. It's like being with other people is a big one. I'm getting this from the movie Happy, by the way. Yeah. It's a great documentary. Uh, being with other people is a huge one. Communal things. Eating with other people. Yeah. Hugely important. I, I can make fun of McDonald's, but actually that is one of the services they offer, especially lower income people. McDonald's gives people sometimes a place to like gather. Jesus well, Christ. And it just could have been so great. Keep yeah. going. Morton's. Yeah. Morton's is also a place you can there do you that. go there you go but also fuck McDonald's because they're poisoning those people thank and, you and addicting yeah. them to those foods with chemicals yeah, but you're still welcome back if we can figure it out <laughs> I love that the other thing and I think you guys are both gonna like this that's key to happiness is flow is something that takes you outside of time yes so they actually interviewed people that are like fry cooks mm-hmm. like on a, on a line in a busy Manhattan restaurant very happy people because they'd have like five, not all of them obviously, but they'd have like four hours, three hours of a rush uh, during the day where they're getting outside of our minds. You talk to standups. One of the first things we say we like about standup is that time disappears Yeah, yeah. and you disappear, you disappear and the audience disappears and it becomes a show. Yes. And it's this timeless space. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. It's not as shallow as being like, they heard me and they left and I'm King Big Dick. Yeah, yeah, which is it's so, not. they always reduce it to that in documentaries of comedians. I agree. They're chasing the high of the laugh. It's like, it's a little bit more complicated Absolutely. Than that. Some of them are, and you can tell yeah, who, yeah, who yeah. those people yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. And then there are others that are like, wow, I was really just locked in a moment. Right and now. part yeah. of something, you feel like you're connected more. Absolutely. Yes. And you do feel like, 
I don't know. I think like after a great show, especially you're like, that was for you. You're like, that was an experience. That's right. Yeah. You know, and a timeless one. Yeah. And an, it's weird because it is so ego driven, but you sort of lose the sense of Pete. It becomes like we're here mm -hmm. doing the same thing together. So one of the reasons why it's not as effective on TV. Right. No, it's, it's really the same. it's about the live show. It's like Avatar. Remember yeah. in Avatar where they're holding yep. hands over <clears> the tree. We crave that sort of stuff. It's fine. We can either resist that or just be like, look, we're stuck in these embarrassing meat puppets and there's certain things that make us feel good. The thing that I'm talking about with jewelry and stuff is like when when our behavior is being uh, given to us by someone else's story of success, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. a, a narrative was sold to us, whether it is alcohol or food or jewelry or a new car. I know I just bought a new car and there is some joy to be found in those things. But like we need to be sure, making sure that we're we're writing that our story, you know what I mean? Not just going like, well, this is what they told us it was. Cause guess what? As someone who's had all my dreams come true, I'll tell you, you get there and you're still fucking there. Yeah. And you got to find it. You got to find it with your friends. You got to find it with your family. What do you do to, to make yourself, you know, find it more? It's you, what we're talking about. Just by, just by deeply connecting yeah. with other people in a yeah. sincere way. Yeah. And that's why we were joking about publicists and stuff. It, it does kind of bother me to think that you're paying somebody to love you. This yeah. is, this is, this is a, um, who wrote, oh, I'm fucking blanking on his name and the name of the book. Who wrote Infinite Jest? No. <laughs> Somebody listening is going nuts right now. Anyway, I'll, it'll come to me. He was talking about once we get to the p a place where we can have three-dimensional internet virtual reality pornography, it'll basically be Wally. -E. Remember Wally? -E? I didn't see yeah. that movie. We're just going to be blobs oh, with oh, screens, yeah. sure. getting all of your senses met. Every, every oh. itch that you have will be scratched. So you want to fuck Tyra Banks? You can do it. We have the equipment now. You'll do it. It'll, it'll, it'll fool you. And we're your, basically there, right? You, we're pretty much there. Yeah. But here's the rub. It's the same with McDonald's. It's the same with pornography. And it's the same with the jewelry that you bought. You're having these things met by people who don't love you. That's, that's what's fucked up. Right. So we're paying for something that not only should be free but only actually occurs when it's free. You know what I'm saying? If your wife makes you a sandwich or you make your kid a sandwich, there really is something going on there. There's intention yeah. and there's a drive behind it that's pure. And what we're losing touch with as human beings is, yeah, I can have, I'm wealthy enough, I'm very fortunate to have Grubhub bring me every fucking meal. If I want Thai for lunch and I want fucking Morton's for dinner, mm -hmm. I'll have them bring it to me and I can do this infinitely. You know, or I could make some boring ass pasta dish. I don't know how to cook a lot of things, which is what I made my wife last night. That is the better choice. Yeah. I'm doing it. You know this. We know this. Right. It's, a, it's the same mm. part of you that's like, you're feeling depressed. Go for a hike. Go for a walk. Even if you, I know you don't want to, you need to realize that you're negotiating with an ape and you have to rise above it. And also too in this, I mean, the hedonic thing. You're also chasing the next high, right? It's also the fear of the space in between yeah. of feeling like, have you read the subtle art of not giving a fuck? Yeah. And he talks about that, like, Hey, life is kind of suffering some, you know what I mean? It is kind of <laughs> going through this stuff. And we're so afraid of that quiet moment in between the next fun thing. What That's am right. I going to eat? What am I going to do? Like we're constantly looking for that next fix. Well, obviously it's exhausting. That book is a little bit about, Buddhism. It's basically it a, is, a yeah. Buddhist book. And for me, enlightenment, uh, if you want to talk about that, this on your mom's house, we could. I might have a fart that want. I can bring in. We this. can get it. Enlighten up, baby. But th this is actually, it's not too philosophical, not too heady, and certainly not really. No, it's great. There's something that, that I practice, which is you're trying to be. Enlightenment to me means happy for no reason. And there, in my experience, you can, every story is a guy sitting on a box, every spiritual story is a guy sitting on a box. And he's begging for change. And finally, one guy goes, hey, what's, hey, what's in the box? He goes, you know, I never looked in the box. He's like, you should look in the box. Guy walks away. Beggar looks in the box. It's filled with gold, right? That's every story. You go on a journey looking for a diamond only to realize it was sewn into the lining of your jacket the whole time. This is every movie. Right. This yeah. is the human yeah. story. Yeah. So why do, we, why do we love that story? And why does that story keep being told? It's because, and I'm starting, I'm 39 years old. I'm finally starting, it's finally starting to sink in that there is something to enjoy just in the moment, just in the phenomenon of being conscious. And you can call that conscious a piece of God or whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what symbol system you use. But when you go, just this, just right now, is a fucking trip. 
And even the suffering is fucking wild. Yeah, and, it's and a miracle. Even, you shouldn't even be here. But And there's a way to intellectualize that that's exhausting, where I go like, wow, coffee's a fucking miracle. That's exhausting. That's head stuff. It's about being in a heart place where you're just not thinking, where you're letting it shut off, and mm-hmm. you're just going like, like I was in the shower. Here's a simple one. I was in the shower this morning. You go, this could be your last shower. We don't know. I could fucking die. And that sounds morbid, but there's something when you go, this could be my last shower, you feel the water on your skin and and you you smell the soap and there's something and you see the sun coming through the window and the speck of dust that's caught in it and how it looks like our universe. And that's not thinking that looks like our universe. Mm -hmm. That's feeling it. That's true happiness. It's not to say better or worse. It's just to me. Happy for no reason yeah. is a better way to put it. Yeah, and putting a in. vibrating butt plug in. That's it. And your fuck sleeve. Yeah. And having your cat watch that, you come. And we can baby. laugh at that. We, <laughs> can all, we can also laugh at that because it's fucking crazy. Let's not deny what we're also doing here. Yeah, I'm also, sure. I'm horny and I'm yeah. watching fucking weird MILF porn and yeah. shit just like yeah. everybody. We're yeah, all yeah. in the slog. Yeah. But what the subtle art of not giving a fuck is kind of talking about is the idea of non attachment. Even right. this fucking conundrum. You know, you think you have free will, skip breakfast, lunch, and dinner for two days and then have a lot of coffee. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, it's embarrassing that we're stuck in these, but we can have compassion, and this is True. a good idea, for yourself. You can have compassion for the part of you that even recognizes the part of you that wants to buy jewelry. It's yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's also a lightness that we can go about these things. You go, it's, it's, it's also like, it's, it's, it's when you go, I really, truly <clears throat> are, you accept that there's versions of yourself yeah. that aren't like, uh, perfect and a one, and then when you accept it, is when you actually feel cool and enlightened and that's right and happy about it. I had this thing like uh, a week or two ago, just felt. <clears throat> I think it's kind of like the moment you're describing, where I just felt extreme gratitude for my life, just like my whole life. I remember this day, and um, I've been waiting for this moment. You know, it. it I, I think I talk about it. No, I just <laughs> I, you know I just feel like uh, I just felt extremely like thankful for my life, for my wife for my children, for just the life that I get to live, that I get to do this for a living. My Jesus piece. (laughs) Yeah, my Jesus piece, all of it. (laughs) And I just was overwhelmed. Honestly, by thinking of the, like feeling the gratitude and just thinking of it, all I did was tell my spouse about it. I felt extremely like just happy, just so overjoyed. Yeah, gratitude is a huge one. Yeah. I, a lot of like times it's, it's our alcoholics and our addicts that know the benefit of a gratitude list. Yeah. But that is absolutely one of the keys to happiness physical activity human contact flow and gratitude and it does and you know what it doesn't even have to be fancy stuff yeah i go on a hike there's three there's three phases of the hike one is a gratitude list so let's Mm -hmm. say it's a 15 minute walk yeah the first five minutes you just think about what you're grateful for and and you basically it doesn't have to be fancy you can be like i'm grateful for my hands yes it can be some bullshit yeah sure i'm grateful for having a car that valerie has a car I'm grateful that that I have a place to sleep. I'm grateful for food. Then if you run out of stuff, think about the people that you're grateful for. Believe me, this is way more than five minutes worth. The second five, I'm trying to think. It's been a while since I did this because honestly, it's the first one that matters. The the first, the next five is you think about how you want your day to go. You usually do this in the morning and it makes a huge difference. I can't remember. Oh, yeah. I believe that. Oh, the first five is affirmations. Yeah, yeah. If you let the mind take you, your whole day is fucked. That's what I'm you saying. Yeah, take your mind. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But sure. that is real happiness. <clears throat> what you're saying, and, and this, is a, this is a mystical idea, is the idea of not identifying with the mind. Yeah. That is... Because it's if, a motherfucker. If you wanted to boil down all of spirituality into something that's actually practical, that doesn't require you to believe anything, mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck if you believe in God. Who gives a fuck? What are we talking about? You're wasting my time. Let's talk about something real. It's not identifying with your brain. It's identifying with the part of you that's listening to your brain. My last special, Dirty Clean, I did a bit about this where I had people sing a song in their head. I'm Mm -hmm. like, who's hearing that? That's kind of a nudge towards, you could call it soul consciousness or just basic awareness. Mm -hmm. Just the idea that who you are is really the thing that's hearing the thoughts. And the more, I used to like, as a Christian, I would want peace to exist in my mind. I'd want it to exist in my ego. And then I realized through meditation, all these different practices, you, you want to identify with the part that's impartial, unborn, and just watching that sort of stuff. That's where peace was hiding. It wasn't hiding in thoughts like, please give me peace. Please help me calm down. No. It, was, it was witnessing who's noticing the lack of peace. It's fucking basic. And when you got into right, that, that's yeah. it. And anyone can get there. You don't have to meditate. 
you can slip into that space at any moment that you want. When you're having too many thoughts, you go, who's noticing the thoughts? That's, that's the summation of thousands of years yes. of weird mystical writings that Gandalf that's can true. pour over. You are so insightful. <laughs> no. No, I'm serious. Bright, articulate. I mean, this guy, he's it's really something. It's very surprising. I didn't think. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. I know. You're so oh, great. You're nice. delightful. Come you on. are. Are you wrapping up? We are. We, we are. We are. We do. Um, we've uh, <laughs> we spent a lot of time I'm so, here. can I say this on yeah. the air? Yeah. I had Crashing coming out and my special come out. Really, we're here to promote Crashing. Yeah. That is something I'm grateful for, that I could reach out. You have this wonderful, popular show. I know I give you a hard time for renting a space. No, no, it's all good. Love, this, love the show. Love that you have, a, that this is working for you guys. And the fact that Nadav and everybody bent over to make this happen, that means a lot. And that's what Crashing is about. But when we have that in our community, then we're hanging out with the right people. That's right. You know there what I mean? Go. It's not the other people that are going, he fucking stole my essence. Yeah. Get the, <laughs> get the fuck yes, out of here. Oh, agreed, agreed. Sundays, haters, haters. Sundays 10. on HBO, 10 p.m. Don't look at the graphic on Pete's Twitter page. It is <laughs> Sundays, 10 get that p.m. That publicist to update that. Uh, I'm grad. I'm gr- I'm I'm thankful. I I want to give so gratitude for all of you to everybody <laughs> but McDonald's. And, <laughs> Um, Dude, go to Burger King. Uh, True. That's, we're gonna try. Believe Wendy's. Even. We might be wearing little king hats next week. Yeah. But king hats, crowns. Paul Some F. Tompkins king joke. Hats. That's a, that's his joke. Oh, is it? Yeah. That he worked in a hat store. Paul F. Tompkins said he worked in a hat store. Someone was like, "Let me get that. Let me get that king hat." He's like, "You know what it's called? <laughs> <laughs> the crown. It's crap." <laughs> no, there's no such king thing. hat royale. King hat. I heard it though. I got I know, it. I was right? like, it's, "It's a king hat." Um, to the king, it's the king. Hand. It's the king. Hand. This is uh, Home Here Now form. by Grass Kingsums. And um, again, thank you very much. What's Thanks, a king sum? A three-way I don't, I don't with, know what that kings. is. Probably. I really don't know what that is. But um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun, man. Thank you for coming. Thanks for thank having you. me. It means a lot. Try not, try not, man, not, man, not, man, not.